worst ever anybody's ever done. Not even just me, but anyone. Oh, hold on, my phone. There we go. Anyone in clock tower speed running. So it's a bit of a a bit of a milestone. And I had my cute little picture with the uh, all the clock tower games. You guys did not see it. You guys don't take a quick look at it. I'll post the tweet. Just because I'm a fucking dork, and I like sharing my uh. I like sharing my... I turn the dick measuring and me owning Clock Tower games. Because there's always dick measuring that comes with that. Anyway, let's begin with the official thing. Let's hope to God... Let's hope to God I get good RNG for my first run. No resets allowed. So, uh, no, even Clock Tower SNES, you're not allowed to reset. This isn't all cutscenes. Or not all cutscenes. This is all games marathon. There's no point in resetting for good RNG when I can just keep playing, you know? And we're doing also... Before I preface this, when we get that weird glitch again, then I... Well, I, I don't have to reset. I could still be fine if I know what happens. I will see what happens in that regard. Because I should be able to ignore... I could probably save it. The whole reason... Any has it going. The whole reason why I reset it on that area is because I don't have the West Wing key. But I can probably figure something out. In that case, sure, we'll reset it. If it's impossible to get the West Wing key in the area it's supposed to be. If not, we'll be fine. Anyway, before we begin, I want to talk about all canon endings. So, all the Clock Tower games, barring three, and actually, three and Homecoming, or three and Remother do not have multiple endings. All the other ones do. So, I'm doing all the canon endings. The reason I'm doing all canon endings, because these are then generally the better endings of the game. Um, it's not the best ending, because if it was the best endings, this would be S ending, but it's not S ending, it's C ending for this one. Uh, that's my canon, so I'm going off my interpretation of that. I don't think, I think it's the longest of the canon endings. Um, well, no, second longest. B is the shortest, C is slightly longer, and A is the long, um, A is the longest of the three. But B is the shortest one. A is longer, and then, or C is longer, A is the longest. Canonically, I'm doing all the events that would also happen. So this is going to kill the uh, momentum of the speedrun a little bit. I might die, because the game's kind of buggy, but... I'll continue after that point. We're going for all the major speedrunning events. So everything that happens canonically must happen. Alright. Anyway, with that being said, ready to go? Let's... Three. Yeah, Demonic, just in time. Three, two, one, go. Alright, now we have eight out of logo. So we just began. No resets, unless I get impossible standards or something. Anyway, we're really doing good. We're doing C ending for this. C ending's my canon for a good reason. And let's see, do I get the good RNG? Let's see. Chris, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Metal, hope you're doing well. Let's check this out. Watch. We are going to be going here. And do not die. Hey, we got the key. All right, we have good RNG so far. Very good RNG so far for this run. Do we go for the world record, though, is the question. Do I want to go for world record strats? Because that is the real question. I'm still going to be doing glitches, because they're better, but... Like, do we go for the world record strat or no, guys? I don't know. Which one do we want to go for? It's a tough call. World record or no world record? World record? So we're going to go up top? I can try. I Technically, I'm, this is for a C ending world record, because I'm doing C ending. But I already have C ending world record. Why would I do more? Ah, fuck it. We'll do it. We're going live. Balls of the wall? We're going balls of the wall. And then Bobby messed up the Bobby skip. Why would you do this, Bobby? Not at the end of the world. Again, no resetting. All right, so now I can't physically get world record. So maybe we don't go for it. I love that glitch, by the way, where Bobby will just kind of, like, get knocked down for no reason. You can't go balls to the wall because Bobby already messed it up. It's going to be a long day. It'll be a very long day. But I am excited. I am very excited for what's to come. We're going on the lower path because I didn't get the proper, uh... I didn't get the proper, uh, Bobby area. So I can't even get it if I wanted to at this point. Go for world record game swaps? I will. Also, I named all the game swaps after the fucking counterparts because it makes sense. Alright. Oh my god, first fucking try. I, call I knew it. I knew I should not have gone up top. Look at this. First try, baby. First room. 
Already off to a great start. If I get Demon Idol, it's going to be a great day. If I get Staff, oh, it's going to be a bad day. Let's go. Oh, god damn it, it's not. Eh, I'll fix it in a moment. Oh, yeah, Tentacle Books. What's the EST doing all of them? This is about 30 minutes. Give me a quick moment. Uh, let me do... This. My blackouts. That should be better, I think. The game sound should be better now, but I'm not entirely sure. How about now? Uh, there. Do you hear it now? I, it's only going to affect this game, but... I mean... Tad more? How's that? Sweet, it's Memorial Day, so I can stream it earlier than normal. Go. I don't act... Oh, wait, that was the right room. God damn it. So now I'm thrown off because I'm worried about the game sound. Alright, there we go. I don't know if it's better or worse. I mean, worst case scenario, it's all it's SNES, which is one of the shorter games. And the other games should have sound. It just, for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe it's not going in all the way. Ah, uh, we have a staff game, so this already sucks. I hear it on the TV. Still needs to be louder. You're probably hearing it on the TV then, so I can't really do much on that regard. You're probably hearing it off the TV. I can't really fix that one. Because it's not, like, watch. I can deactivate, reactivate, but that's not going to do anything. Because it's all the TV. You heard the noise from... It's probably from the TV. Wait, I don't need to go this way. I already have the thing I need. Well, I'll have to play without hearing that. I can't really reset it. I can't take time to troubleshoot it because it's only going to affect this one version of the game. Which, there's not a lot of audio in the game in the first place, so yeah, it's not that bad. I don't know why- why's my hair wave? Why does it do that? I don't know why SNES in particular has this issue, but it usually happens. Um, maybe it's because I have, um, an, uh, another SNES plugged in. That might be the case. Anyway, I'm finding out the truth from daddy -O because I don't want to do the Mary one. I'd rather just learn from daddy -O. There we go. It's faster to learn from daddy -O. So we're learning from him. But the staff's gonna suck, so I think this is still faster. I'm gonna get world record anyway, it's a staff game. Staff games are always bad, and this is the reason why. I'm doing no resets, because I'm not gonna reset Clock Tower all day. Now, the game I'm most worried about is actually PS uh, Clock Tower PS1. I don't remember shit about it. Ghost Tower, I remember. Clock Tower 3, I'm way more confident on now. Haunting Ground's probably gonna be the second easiest. Um, Remothered should be easy, and... Clocks are three mother are pretty generous in their checkpoints. Nightcray is generous, but there is potential to soft lock it. Haunting Ground is probably the most cruel of the entire series, while the other ones aren't too bad. Like, Ghost Heads could be cruel, but it's not normally too cruel because you can make do without the whole thing that worries. I do have to wonder what's in my capture card, though, if it's not capturing sound. Because if it does the same thing in a Haunting Ground, I will need to try, or Clock Tower 3, I will need to troubleshoot that. Alright, there we go. Oh no, I didn't get tech skip. Oh no, run's already dead, guys. It's a scuffed run. It's a scuffed run right now, look at this. But yeah, normally on Mondays I don't stream because, uh, well I stream later because I have to work, but today's Memorial Day in the US, so I have today off work. Meaning, in theory, I'm getting a paid holiday to play Clock Tower. So I'm getting paid to play Clock Tower for my job. And that's truly what America was founded on. Clock Tower. I guess that'd be Japan, but... Actually, they do... The games do take place in America. Well, Ghost Head does. And as does... I... Actually, I think it's just Ghost Head and maybe Nightcry? I don't actually know. Dude, that's... That's awesome, Demonic. That is very awesome. Anyway, there's a little glitch we do there. Always cool, the little hole skip. Even though, if, even though I have the staff game, it's not too bad. Bank holiday. Ooh. Not bad at all. Eating SpaghettiOs. I had leftover Chinese for breakfast. And... Sora. 
It depends on if you're doing uh, the U.S. edition or the, or, uh, the Japanese copy. If it's Ghost Head, I, I guess Ghost Head, but Chalk Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within takes place in California. But it's Phoenix Wright's California. It's not actually California. It's Phoenix Wright's weird version of California. And... Oh, I didn't get this either. There we go. So, really enough, all the Clock Tower games do actually have locations that they take place in. Want some hamburgers? It just... <laughs> the noodles are sushi. Uh, and the location for each game is... This game takes place around Norway. This is a Norwegian game, believe it or not. Um, the Clock Tower... Um, Jennifer Simpson, or, yeah, Jennifer Simpson, she is in Norway. This entire Borrow's Mansion is in Norway. Uh, the sequel, um, well, the only reason you know why it's Norway is because the sequel takes place in Norway, and it also takes place in England. However, most of the game is in Norway, while the last chapter where they have to go to the other mansion is in England. So, you have Norway, Norway slash England. Uh, Clock Tower Ghost Head is either Japan or California, depending on, uh, which you played. Like, if you play Ghost Head, it's Japan. If you play The Struggle Within, it's California. There we go. Oh, I can run. But it really does sort of vary depending on which interpretation you put it on. I want to say Clock Tower 3... Like, Clock Tower 3 is definitely England. Like, the, the accent gives it away. The, the accent's definitely an English accent. Uh, Haunting Ground is weird. I'm pretty sure while the main character is English... Um, the game itself takes place in Italy. Uh, and then, going more into it, Night Cry, I don't act. I think that one's U.S. I don't know where in the U.S., but I think that's a U.S. game. And then, Remother takes place in Italy. And it's pretty funny to see how all the games have their origins and location. Because all the games do take place in different spots, which I enjoy. I think it's a pretty cool fact. But obviously, it's going to depend on what you think for it. Takes place in Australia? No, it doesn't take place in Australia. Actually, it might. It could is the problem, because it's on a cruise, so they don't really have a known location. It's more just, okay, they have the spot, but it's not an actual, like, they don't have a dead spot since it's on a boat. I think certain characters in the game are actually Australian, but I don't think they're, I don't think they'll, they docked out of Australia is the thing. Yeah, that's why um, it takes, well, it's weird, because Fiona herself is not, like, it is Italian, but her accent's really English. So it's a weird area of like, oh, are they English? Are they Italian? I'm pretty so I'm pretty sure the game is in Italy. Her family is also probably from Italy, but it's kind of like Belly has like, she's like probably like third generation Italian or something. Cyber haircut? Why would you say that? I have long, long hair. I'm gonna shave it all off at some point. Wear a beanie? I might need to wear a beanie. Do I have a beanie next to me? I don't. Oh, I do. I have a black one. I have a few beanies next to me. Hold on. Should I wear a beanie on stream? Should you got those long, luscious locks? It just kind of goes like this. I have a weird fucking bowl cut. And just naturally forms. Yes. Oh, I didn't get the good room. I got the bad room. Alright, let me see if I should find a beanie. I'll see how I look in a beanie. I'll have to be during the stairs. Give me a moment. Let me hop to the stairs. I'm going to wear a beanie for the most of the run. We'll see if it fits me as style-wise. Here. I could have sworn I had. I have a penguin hat. Does that count? I do have a beanie, actually. There we go. And just a black beanie. A straight black beanie. I'll wear it during the next series of cutscenes. Hipster me, we'll see. I have a penguin hat. I can show that. I have a lot of hats. I also have a bear hat. No, Wildfire. I'm just going to play without it because the other games will have it, and it's not worth troubleshooting in the middle of it all. When I know for a fact I'll work on the next one. Hey, Rickard, how's it going? It is! I've never opened it. <laughs> oh, I messed up. Let's see. Yeah, I've never actually used this beanie. Fine, I'll put on the penguin hat. Where's the panda hat? I don't know. Such a waste? Yeah, it is a bit of a waste. I'm not sure why. Hold on, like, how, how do I look in a beanie? It's a weird beanie. I have, like, speakers in it. Alright, there we go. Also, cutscene for all of us. How do I look at a beanie? How does a beanie even work? Dude, this is totally fucking hipster trash. What the hell? 
This is such hipster trash. I love it. Hat stream? Just wear different hat stream cutscenes. We didn't have to kill Laura there, but I figured why not. Yeah, start wearing a beanie on stream, see? Your lifestyle? Oh, what, wearing hats? I don't have a pan- I don't remember having a panda hat. I have a penguin hat. Right? It's a little tough to get on the front. I start wearing- I have more beanies around. I only found the black one first. Let's see, I have cat ears, I have goggles, I have... Uh, let me get the penguin hat. Oh, there's the other bean. Oh, no, it's a sock. I tried. Maybe I should start wearing exclusively beanies, but it's summer. Why would I wear beanies in the middle of summer? Alright. I made the long running, and here's the penguin hats. That's a lot of pushing buttons while moving, by the way. I'm not going to put on a sock. How's it going, T-Rex? There, that one work. It's a penguin hat. Is it really a pervert look? Okay, we got what we need now. Oh my god, I didn't actually get what I needed. I'm stupid. I'm actually, actually dumb. Because I forgot to go to the ceremony, or I forgot to go to the ceremonial library. Nice. Very nice. Beanie? Beanie's better than, you don't like the penguin hat? Wow, put on back on the beanie. You want to cover up the luscious locks? Logan Paul? Alright, we're taking it off. I know we're a beanie for most of it, I suppose. I have to wait for like certain cutscenes anyway, so it's nice. Okay, and so I'll start wearing beanies. I'll be high school 2.0 again. I wear beanies in high school because they're fun to wear. Lately, I have a lot of beanies actually. I have like five. There we go. It really does. It really does. Okay, we need this area for the library. The reason why I need the ceremonial library is because I got shafted and I had to get the um. The bookshelf, I had to get the staff. And staff game absolutely blows in comparison to the other one. Uh, luckily, though, I didn't have to kill Anne. Or, pff, I didn't have to kill Lot. So I can kill Lot in a moment. The easier way. Ooh, I do want another item, though. Hmm. I do want another. I should grab the rope. Alright, let's grab the ham because it'll be faster to grab the ham. Uh, don't I have the most authority? When did that make sense? <laughs> when did my authority kind of dictate the others? <laughs> what if you get keep why do I keep getting new tech skips? Wait a minute. It's about maybe a 25 minute run at the most. We're almost done with it. Like it's getting close to being done. I've already done almost everything. I suppose wildfire, I suppose. And the first game won't have sound just because it's bugging out for some strange reason. I have to worry. I have to like, kind of fix it my own time because I can't really test it on stream because it's not. I don't like doing that. And that's why it's like, oh, why is there no sound? Because the game's like 20 minutes. And I'm not going to worry too much for a 20-minute run when the rest of the games will have sound. I don't quite know why this one doesn't. It's showing it has sound. It just, I apparently it doesn't. The minor sound you do hear is coming from the TV itself. All the plugs are plugged in. I don't know what it is. It might be because I added SNES, uh, the SNES recently. Go. Yeah. Oh yeah, then Confucius will say seniority among mods because Sora is also a mod. All right, we got the staff pro uh, prompt. And this is why staff game sucks. You have to do all that additional routing. Although I do think it's faster just to do the dad truth than the other truth. I suppose. I didn't know me wearing a beanie was going to be shitpost fuel. I wonder if I make color beanies. I have cooler ones than just straight black. I don't know where they are. I have cooler beanies around here. I don't know where they went. I don't have time to look for them either because they're all the way over there in the pile of clothes. The big pile. I have a magic hat. I don't know, Elf. I'm pretty sure anything I do. What the fuck's in my camera? Thank you, camera, for not for bugging out. Alright, there we go. Alright, there we go. We'll give the dog the ham, but not really, because I'm doing tech skip on the dog. Sweep. 
And then... Sweet. Apparently it is. See, it's not used to me wearing a hat. Kitty Wolf understands. I obviously need to take off the hat. We gave Lot the ham and now she's dead. Lot died, guys. Lot is dead. And again, for the canon ending, we're doing C ending. I want to do C ending because it's going to be the best one. Damn. My school allowed hats, actually. I don't think I allowed baseball caps. I think they were called beanies. I wore beanies in high school. Again, I look like I wore beanies in high school. I can start rocking. You know, it actually does look a bit better, doesn't it? A little bit. I start wearing beanies. And then the big mop of hair. Like, look how high up the shit goes. It was up high. Right? And then you can also do a little curl. Too low. Let's see. We're almost on the clock tower SNES, by the way. Story wise, I want to add in a few things on how the games chain together. The only games that matter story wise are actually um, Clock Tower SNES and Clock Tower PS1. I can hear it, but you can't. And that is a giant baby wildfire. That's a giant baby covered in orphan meat. He's actually eight years old. Ah, my hair. And then you ignite him on fire. The thing is, other copies of the game will actually do this, but he gets out of the orphan meat trail. Hey, you, how's it going? Good to see you. It's a fun one. I'm on my Super Famicom, and it's looking good. Yeah, we had, you know we had to do it to him, Steven. You, you know we had to do it to him. Obviously, this should be said, but I'm not going to be streaming 8 to 12, just because I'm streaming right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> that'd be insane if I tried streaming from 8 uh, now, and then 8 to 12 as well. I told you, it's a child covered in orphan meat. He's so fucking fat, it's all it's all orphan meat. Yeah, um Cannibalistic Family wants to kill Jennifer Connolly, but Jennifer Connolly puts a stop to their shit. Um there we go. That's about the story. Oh god, no. That'd be that'd be too much. I'm only doing the marathon, because that should be more than enough. Also, we're almost done with Clock Tower SNES. All right, here we go. You have, uh, Techie, it is near the end, because this is all in chronological order. So it's the second last game, so probably in about six hours, at least. Yeah, it's, oh, this is chronological order. Clock Tower, how's it going, man? I love how you just shoved down Mary. There we go. Alright, now keep running. And then she's saying, Bobby, kill her. She killed Dan. Bobby. There I am. And ignore her. Also, C ending is my cannon, so we're doing C ending. Obviously, your can if you want the fastest cannon, it's B ending. But if you pick B ending, you're a loser. Watch, look how cool C ending is. You go to the top of the clock tower. It's awesome. By the way, Techie, how you doing, my man? Good to see you. And then, we'll watch the ending, too. I know it'll be a good idea to watch the endings, but I'm ending the split when I actually have it. Alright, so 21-23. Not bad for Clock Tower, SNES. Not bad at all. That's a canon ending. He is. Hey, thanks so much for the follow. It's much appreciated. How you doing, by the way, Techie? It's been a hot minute. How you been? Silent percent? No, that'd be brutal. Right? It's cool, but I am disappointed the sound isn't fully on. Luckily, I know the sound will be on for the next game. You just translate? Translate what? And there you go. That's Clock Tower SNES, and I'll set up the next game while this is playing out the ending. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Later. 
Oh, I need to log into Steam. If I don't do that, I'll be able to play Nightcry later. Yeah, Bob, the first one's the shortest one, unfortunately. But now we're going to Clock Tower 2. But here's the ending. Jennifer watches amongst the top of the Clock Tower, and she has survived the night. She has survived the murders. Now, you must understand, what's going to happen afterward? What happens after she survives the murders? Guys, how will we know what happens afterward? If only there are a sequel to this game, or many sequels to this game. Right? It'd be funny. Uh, she just survives. It's just the one night. Nothing else happens. Nothing else happens in the series. Anyway, there is a second game. Believe it or not, there's a second game. I mean, you, she wanted to turn them into orphan meat. I mean, you're inherently a bitch for wanting to eat orphans. So, yeah, kind of. Yep, all the games have a clock tower, by the way. <laughs> to some degree. <laughs> or scissors. Clearly, clearly we've already finished. Uh, let me just hop over to the next game. Uh, where's my... There it is. Hey, thanks for the follow. It was much appreciated. I think the Clock Tower follower is also relevant for today. I Because Mary works in an orphanage, and that's where you get easy children. Also, yeah, who wouldn't miss them? They don't exactly have families. They're either taken from them or actually literally murdered by Mary. <laughs> Okay, now where the fuck is my, uh... <laughs> what the fuck can I open here? Alright, give me what? Clock tar's hands like scissors? That would be cool, but no. How's my pa? Yeah, she adopts the orphans, and then Bobby kills the orphans. It is Juo. It is. It's SNES all the way to Remothered in Clock Tower releases. You know what that sound means. Do I not have it? What the, where is it? Do I not have this? I thought I did. What do I normally use for Ghost Head? Not this. I might not be using this one. Give me a moment. I might be using a different one because uh, it should automatically open up on my OBS. Um... That should be right. Oh, yeah. This is right. Yeah. All right. Ah, there we go. I'm emulating the next two, though, because I don't fucking... I lost my copy. No, it's not Clock Tower game, Juo. My lore knowledge? I have to emulate this one. Is there a way just to capture the inside of the emulator, actually? I don't actually know. Let's see. Um... Yeah, we're good. There we go. Perfect. This is a world record of GameStop? Yeah, it is. It is. Sweet. And now, into the next one. Hope my controller works. Thank you, it does work. Alright. And now begins the next ones. Audio is working, right? Audio is indeed working. Is sound not working? Sound should be working. If it's not working, I'm fucking, like... Thank you. Jesus Christ, Sora. Don't scare the shit at me like that. Alright, yeah, it's just my capture card. Okay, thank you, Zoku. Thank you. Sora, don't scare the shit at me like that. Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, let me pull my inst I should pull my instructions for this, actually. As I have instructions, I do need them for Clock Tower PS1. As I don't remember everything exactly, but I do want to use these. It's just taking time out of my speedrun. If someone wants to beat my Clock Tower all and uh, entire series marathon, be my guest. It's probably not going to be the hardest thing to beat in the world. Like, you're more than allowed to beat my Clock Tower full series marathon. I, I respect it. 
I respect beating that. Right? It does suck. Alright, thank you. Oh, there you go. Okay, and I think it's just new games, so let's... We're getting Jennifer 100% A ending. Sweet. I can turn it up if we need to. It just... It doesn't have to be that loud. I'm louder than the game? Well, yeah. I'll turn it up a bit. There. That should be better. Ooh. It's wavy. This is the entire game. You can't skip these, by the way. Game up. Better? That should be better, I think. Ah. <sighs> My assistant. This is also the first one I actually played. I do enjoy the game, but it's fucking long. <laughs> Can you hear Barton's sweet, sweet voice now? Okay. Oh, hold on. I grabbed the window. There we go. Better. Now I could read. Ah! Um. Bench? Yeah, there we go. Bench would be better. You guys can hear it perfectly now, right? I think it should be better. You guys can hear it better, and I actually do need no audio, because the game audio management between, like... Si yeah, we do play as Jennifer, because you can play as Helen, but I think, canonically, Jennifer is the one who matters. You cannot skip any cutscenes in this game, by the way. You have to watch all of them. And this is the direct sequel to the first one. Alright. Realistically, either one can happen, but I care more about Jennifer's story than Helen's, so we're not doing both. Run, Barden! Speedrun tech in this game, by the way, is you need to hope to God you can run when you need to. It's really funky movement and a lot of dialogue. If you're wondering, Pa actually has world record in, in this. I'm not gonna flub up and talking to the person. I don't even know the Helen route, so if I do the Helen route, I'm gonna be fucked. I am not gonna do the Helen route. I'm not dumb. Alright. Let me in! Let me finish the dialogue! There's so much dialogue! This is the most painful clock tower. This is the worst speedrun of the entire series. If you're wondering why, it's because it's just this. And it doesn't go faster. Ah, oh, there we go. The entire game is like this, though. Alright. Let's keep going. Teddy, how's it going? Good to see you, man. You like lore? That's fine. Scissor Man's Rubber Mask, a kind sold in cheap novelty shops and seems to be fairly popular. By the way, after the murders, everyone just started putting on fucking Scissor Man masks and running around. No, stop investigating the mask. There you go. Oh yeah, absolutely. I like how this guy's just standing here, by the way, like just perfectly still, not actually existing. You can see the development of random AIs as we get to Nightcry. That game has some actually decent AIs who are... Well, human. A version of human, I should say. Oh, wait, do I need to talk to him twice? Yeah, twice. Talk to him twice. There we go. It's about the Clock Tower Moidus. Moidus. Crush Dance, how you doing? Right? Everyone just running around fucking... I came on, this is like a literal serial killer thing. Like... There were clock tower murders, and Jennifer is a victim of said murders. Like, people are running around with fucking scissor man masks after this in the police station. It's so fucking awful. Alright, here's Harris. By the way, this this creepy fuck's like 35. So, 
You always want the game to get reared because it's about to get weird. Well, one, Harris here is actually the sole indicator of how you decide who you play as. If you talk to Harris once, you play as Helen. Talk to him twice, you play as Jennifer. Because Harris is obsessed with Jennifer and wants to... Uh, what's the word? He wants to do things to Jennifer. Now, if you're wondering why that's wrong, Jennifer's 15. In the last game, she was 14. In this game, she's 15. Like... He's... Pretty much, Renneth, but she's 15 years old. You can't, you can't do that to 15 year olds, man. It's illegal. This game takes place in Norway, by the way. I'm pretty sure the age of consent in Norway is not 15. How's it going, Splinter? All right, now we have the the longest area of the game. Right, but this game takes place in Norway in all editions. I'm wearing beanies now. Well, I snort, right? I have food. This guy's gonna take pictures every now and again, by the way. No, this is Clock Tower 2. Oh, I forgot to change the title! Fuck it, I'll eat the time loss. Let me just change the title of the stream. Oh, wait, no, I'll keep playing. Because it's all fucking dialogue. Oh my god. Great timing. Hold on. Alright, change the title. We're good. It's legal? Hey, Dandy. How's it going? Welcome to the stream officially. Hope you're having a great day. Clearly. Beanie is... You don't like the beanie me? Why, Metal? People like... See, it's mixed. I have that X on some parts. I don't mind eating the time lost. Well, he's holding a tiny, tiny camera. This is the cameraman, and this is Nolan. Nolan's 24 is into a 15-year-old. It's March. It's slightly better than being a 35-year-old, but it's still pretty fucking creepy. Remember, the major message of Clock Tower is don't hit on 15-year-olds. I like my hair, though. I, I could wear a beanie, but I like my hair. I guess it fits today. Oh god, I have to keep talking to him? Oh god, that's terrible. I have a scissor fetish. Who is this credible source? Bobby is canonically dead. But Bobby is absolutely dead. Bobby didn't probably even die from the fall. He probably died from fucking seven tumors hitting him all at once. But there is still a scissor man involved, but it's not Bobby. Bobby is now dead. At this point in the game, Bobby is officially dead. Mary is dead, and as is Mr. Barros. Mr. Barros died in a fucking hole. It's great. Yeah. No, he didn't land on his scissors, but there is a scissor man still around. We don't know that yet. I have to get back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the Clock Tower Moidas. Now, if you guys don't know the game, he's supposed to be a young boy, about 10 years old. Take a wild guess who that young boy might be. Don't spoil it for chat, but... Worry about me, young boy. Take, let me know if you think, yeah, you have a wild guess who it might be. There's no reason to go to... Oh, goddamn, really? No, that's fine. I hate to waste time. Barton, why would you have that option to go to the third floor if you hate to waste time? Okay, now we gotta leave. And we head back. He's running! Look at this madman! Run, Barton! Run! Thank you. Fly to him so he's never... Clearly, clearly. Alright, now we gotta talk to this guy. After investigating the statue. I st the whole idea is that this also, this is the best part. The demon idol's actually canon, so the staff is entirely fucking useless. The staff both sucks as a speedrun. It's not, it's not even canon. The staff isn't canon. Jennifer. I think Jennifer's the canon uh, part. I think Helen's a cool perspective of it, but I like the Jennifer story, so I'm going on Jennifer. I think Jennifer's story also makes a bit more just sense to me, but it depends on how you see it. Either way, the whole thing right now is this incredibly important part. Um, I think Messi is twice. Hold on. 
Come on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Staff is not canon. Correct. The staff is nothing, obviously. Like, unless it's Twitch staff currently watching my VOD. Then Twitch staff, I, you're very loved. I'm excited, by the way. Dude, I'll be the first partnered Clock Tower streamer. You know how hype that is? Because Clock Tower is clearly my main game. Like, it's the thing I like doing. It's fun. Uh, yes. There you go. You have to make sure you select yes there, because if you don't, you go the wrong way, and I don't know, I, I don't remember how to beat that one. Yeah, I remember the Rick scenario, which is faster, I don't remember the, uh, the other scenario, which is much, much slower. Scene of the Moidas. There we go. You have to remember this in the early game, by the way, because if you don't get the Demon Idol, you lose the entire game. Alright, come on, dialogue end, I want to get to the damn game. There's a game involved in this. It's been 10 minutes of dialogue, by the way. Oh my god, Barton's actually running. Finally. The Madman. No, yeah, you have to talk to Harris. You can't get in the elevator unless you talk to him. Hey, look at this strapping young lad. I, I want to comment really quick. One, look at his fucking shorts. These are the shortest shorts I've ever seen in my life. Two, I'm pretty sure they're just a fucking rectangle. Like, have any has anyone ever seen shorts this short? Like, these are some of the shortest shorts you've ever seen. Cosplay his shorts next. Get the tiny, tiny Edward shorts. You've seen worse? I don't know. I don't know, Splinter. I have seen Mario 911. I, these are some, like... He did, like it, it's not even leg. It looks like it's all part of the same suit. It looks like he's not even wearing pants. Don't cosplay Edward? Why not? Cosplay his shorts. Clearly. Hey, skeptical reptile. How's it going? I agree, he doesn't have knees either, it's just straight. <laughs> Alright, there's one. No. Okay, time for Jennifer's date. Helen isn't home yet, we did the right way, yay, we're on Jennifer. Look at this Jennifer, by the way. Oh god, Jennifer, how you have fallen. Jennifer, what happened in one year that turned you from a beautiful SNES game to a terrifying PS1 polygon? Hey, Tiny Dragon, how's it going? Alright, now we can keep going. We have to talk to a lot of people. Yeah, Jennifer's going on a date. Because Jennifer's a young woman who's in love. Hope you're having a good day, Ronald. Hope you're all having great days. Go... Come on, Helen. This is your adoptive mom, by the way. Either way, it's terrifying. Look at this face. Again, my cardinal rule of dating a chick, the only hard limit I think I have at my moment in time, well, I have, actually I have a few, but I think the main hard limit is if I date a chick, she can't look like a PS1 polygon. I'm sorry. If I date anybody, like that should be your cardinal rule. They cannot look like a PS1 polygon. I think that's a fair rule. I think that's a very fair rule. Ah, oh, gotcha. There we go. I don't know, Bob. I don't know, man. They, You know how to do it to him, Sora. Anyway, here's Kay and Edward. Is this boy Edward? By the way, the game gets beyond fucked up. Um, Do you guys care about spoilers of the game, or do you want to hear the story now? I'll leave it to you. This is Kay and Edward. The Granite Orphanage is where Jennifer was actually an orphan. See? He is Edward. This is Edward. Look at that face bot. Best part, I think Edward's shorts get progressively shorter per chapter. Like, from one scene, his shorts got even shorter. There is a clock in this game. I don't think you even see the clock, because the clock's actually in another scenario you don't need to go to. It's an optional scenario. Ooh, my neck. But if you guys want to know a fun fact about Kay and Edward. Uh, K is a pedophile. Like a dead ass pedophile. Uh, two year olds, you never in SNS. Ah, yes. K is an actual pedophile. I'm not kidding about that, by the way. Canonically, K is a pedophile, and Edward is manipulating her. No, here's the thing. Edward's manipulating her. You would think it would be the other way around. Also, where'd I go now? Uh, international Bell Club. Okay, house, housing. Okay. 
Yeah, Edward, the little boy, is manipulating her. To do, uh, to do his bidding. The game gets incredibly fucked up. People do not realize how fucked this game is. It's incredibly fucked as a game. And anyway, here's Nolan just inside our house. He's the reporter. I do love this song. It's really good. So I'm gonna shut up for a second. And this song is really sweet. Doom, doom, boom. Having dinner. Remember, this man is 24 years old. Come on. Are you asking me for an interview or for a date? Uh, well, uh. Uh. That's it. Both. 300 IQ move. Yes, both an interview and a date. All right then, Teehee, let's go. I'm telling you, man, that's the moves you gotta have. Next time you try asking a chick out on a date, say, both an interview and a date. It's both an interview and a date. Right? It's not just an interview. It's also a date. Well, canonically, according to, I think the devs said, the relationship doesn't last. So that's a good thing at the very least. But yeah, that's a bad relationship. Butter dogs. What about butter dogs, Sora? There we go. Ah, yes. It happens, though. It happens. I've been doing good my water. I finished one cup and have my second cup. And now, guys, guess who comes back? Your voice is fine though. Kind of Some kind of weirdo, yeah. You know, weirdos running around with fucking scissors. Yeah, it falls through. Okay, let's go inside, dude. It's a fucking slapper, dude. You got that sour, please? Get in the box, Sharon. Get in the box. There we go. Alright, too bad the song's immediately over. By the way, the most stupid thing in this game, if you do not do this, you lose instantly. You need this oil can. It is the most important item in the game, and you get it on the first level. Like, if you don't get this, you lose the entire game, and it's really fucking dumb, and I love it. What was his name again? Oh, his name was the, uh... Yeah, Cut Man. His name was the uh, Shears Dude. Go... Go to the right elevator. There we go. Jennifer, can you run? Thank you. No, we need the oil can for later, though. Leave room. There we go. Get the table. There's a key on the table. By the way, this guy is here. You don't want to talk to him or else um, the scissor man will spawn. And you don't want the scissor man spawning. This game is also fucking 300 IQ, and I love it. Like, it's actually pretty brilliant on how you can get the Scissor Man to spawn. Really enough, as well, the game's really short until the final level. The final level's very long. Alright, come on. Up the stairs. Hardest part of the run, running upstairs. It's very awkward. This is literally all you need, by the way. You know how quick the first level just went? Jennifer's date took longer than this level. I just want to make that known. From way up here, is it safe? I don't think you have to wonder, is it safe to go down an emergency ladder, Jennifer? You know, the scissor man around? Look at that tiny rope ladder, that's great. I make that noise every time I take a step of my stairs. So, uh, she finally stopped. It was every step, just, uh, uh, just wheezing up and down the stairs. It's perfect. 
Sweet. Deadly Pants, how's it going? Alright, that was scenario one. We did it. The game is not extremely long, in all honesty. What in the fuck is going on? I haven't even solved the last case yet, and now, another mass murderer. One guy died. How is it mass? And again, you're saying that the murderer is a monster? But it's true. By the way, keep in mind, this is, it takes place a year after Clock Tower SNES. And, like, everyone knows Jennifer is the only survivor, the only survivor of the marathon. Apparently, I, I saw a mass murder, only one guy died. <laughs> we only saw, I mean, I guess more than one guy died if you go explore, but only one guy died. The best part is, by, with Goss, he says, that's Assistant Inspector Goss. Not Inspector Goss, but Assistant Inspector. He'll correct you on it. How dare you tell me I better, I'm better? i better than I really am. That's Assistant Inspector Goss to you. I'm going to ESA? Nah, it's in Europe, and I can't take the days off to go to Europe. I really wish I could go to ESA. I would apply if I could go, but until, unless I get Twitch full-time, I can't go to ESA. I can do ESA online, but that's about it. I would love to go to ESA again, or do ESA runs again. Uh, research building, there we go. How you doing, by the way, Snake? Good to see you. S, S rank is not canon, though, so you cannot do that. Assistant to the inspector. Ah, perfect. Hey, Helen. Good to hear. Gods is amazing, but I love him because of that reason. He called, like, that's assistant inspector gods to you. He's not even, hey, that's Inspector Gots. No, Assistant Inspector Gots. The scene of the Clock Tower Moida. By the way, this next part of the game is very important. If you choose incorrectly, you lose the entire run. Or, I mean, you won't get Cannon Ending or A Ending. I'm going for A Ending, which is, I'm also getting the best ending, meaning that no one major dies. I mean, plebs die, but nobody major will die. But yeah, Snake, if you're going to ESA, though, I definitely recommend it. It seems like a fun event, a lot of cool people. A lot of cool games, too. I would go if I could, but I just... I can't go from California to Sweden in, like, a weekend's notice. And it would cost way too much money. And then, as well, I'd have to take days off work. I, I probably have to leave Friday. Like, I'd have to be there for one day, maybe. Yeah, Picardo, I have today off. He's like an assistant, but stronger. All right, come on, Helen. She wants to collect Scissor Man shit. Also, Helen's pretty like the relationship with Helen's also kind of messed up because Helen's like your adopted mom, and as well, Helen and Barton also had a sexual relationship. There's a lot that goes into this game that gets really fucked. I think Barton was actually abusive or some shit. I can't quite remember, but Barton's like an obsessed madman, which is crazy. Clearly, you should get both. Uh, was it here? No, it was, there we go. You have to go to certain spots as well to find the dialogue. And just an ape, but stronger. Uh, get a burger, but then put a taco, like, put, put a burger and a taco. So we actually get to play as Nolan, believe it or not. And we get the best cutscene in the entire game. Guys, I'm going to give you a hint. Take a wild guess what happens in the next split. Who wants to take a wild guess what will happen in the next split? I'll, I'll give you a strong hint. Uh, someone might die. Someone may die here. Also, we get the coolest death in the entire game. It is by far my favorite death, and I'm going to roast the hell out of it. No. It's named Old Man Dies. Crush Dance. Ah, no. I could, it could be a mysterious one. It could be mysterious. I don't think that happens. Alright, come on, Nolan. Come on, hurry up, Nolan. He keeps talking. This is most of the game, by the way. I wish I had turbo, dude. I missed the whole turbo debate. So I want turbo. Look at this. Ghost Head's marginally better because you can just skip all these cutscenes. Right, come on. Yes. Okay, we asked Nolan because Nolan is going to the house. 
depending on what you pick, you would get a special level. There's four levels in total in the game. Three of them you have to do. Uh, one of them is going to be the... Um... There we go. One of them is Jennifer, or two of them are Jennifer levels or Helen levels, and then two of them are going to be optional levels that you go to depending on how you played. Meaning, if you chose to go to the house, you come here. If you chose Helen and go to the library, you go to the library. Anyway, watch. It's great. I love this fucking cutscene. I demand turbo, Pa. We demand turbo. This is Rick, by the way. Enjoy Rick. Rick has a long life ahead of him. I guarantee you nothing will come crashing down for Rick. Rick is an old man. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Looks like he has a long... <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> this is the entire speed run. <laughs> I'm doing it to the rhythm now. We're not doing the cutscenes, though, as a reptile. I mean, I can always show them off another time because I want to do more of that game, but... I showed us some off the other day. I can't do them today, though, because I have a lot of game to get through. You have to watch these cutscenes, unfortunately. Come on. We're watching the final cutscene, at the very least. Yep, Rick just got introduced. Apparently, he was the butler of the Barrow's Mansion. All along. He was always this butler, just around. Look at Nolan's face, by the way. Look, Jesus Christ. Look at Rick's face, my god. He looks like a PS1. Also, Rick is the 300 IQ man. Ready, guys? It's time for Rick. It is time for Rick to get dicked. Take a wild bet on how he dies. <laughs> I was given the chandelier as a farewell present when I retired. So it used to hang in the Barrow's mansion. Yes. What it's been the entire time just Except for... <laughs> Oh poor Rick I have a chandelier <laughs> He just fucking dies to it How you doing young Smokey good to see you And that's the longest death scene in the world Alright, now the scissor man's coming too. Cause the scissor man dropped the chandelier. Alright, come on. Up the stairs. He knew. He knew it would come down Garfield. He always knew it would go that way. He's the one who installed it. Also, you want to see how you destroy the Scissor Man? Because it's going to be fucking hilarious. Here's how you break the Scissor Man. Are we going to hide under the bed? No, better. <laughs> Take a blanket! <laughs> then he just has a fucking seizure and dies. And that's how you beat the Scissor Man. Also, he's no longer in that room. He's just gone now. He's straight up fucking gone. There seems to be something inside. Oh, cr grab the fucking thing then, you dumbass. Thank you. I, I want tactical blankets. It's the next line in home defense. Alright, I got the statue. We're good to go. Also, this game actually will randomly spawn Scissor Man if you take too long. So, do not take too long. R random Scissor Man spawns are pretty deadly, actually. Also, there's a cool cutscene that can't happen over here, but I'm not going to do it because, I mean, it would cause me to die. But it's funny. Alright, let's get going. Guy with blanket. The ultimate power. The ultimate power. Even better, Garfield. Even better. It's not. It's gonna get much worse. Or much better. It will get much, much better. Trust me. Cause Rick can die in two different ways. 
In Helen's scenario, Rick also dies. There you go. And back. There we go. Give me soap. This could be used to blind someone. Like the scissor man. Powder soap. Powder soap is a good weapon. It's a good item to have. Powder soap is the most powerful thing you can own. It's powerful. Back to the living room. Room on the right by couches. I'm interested about it. It's really easy. Tactical soap. Right, Reneth? He ha he got a blanket out. Nolan's a man of many, many weapons, which we'll see coming up. He is a deadly man. Okay, and now even better. Check out this sick boss fight, guys. Clock Tower PS1 has awesome boss fights like this. Go. Oh no! Magical chair and magical painting! How long can Nolan dodge? And the magical soda! Bang! He seems so exhausted by that. It's like... <sighs> How long can he slowly duck? It's an amazing game. And now the best part... The best part about all this... Oh, back. Rich dog. It looks mad with bared saliva dripping. Rick's dog will actually kill Rick if you take Helen's route. There's another boss fight, though. Hiya! <laughs> he just throws fucking soap in a dog. That is dead ass the fucking strategy. Because <laughs> the dog will kill you. The dog will kill you if you run into him. So you need to throw soap in the dog's eyes to blind the dog. Also, Jennifer gets a really cool jacket, which I love this design. I want this jacket. Sparta, don't worry, we're doing the entire series. Anyway, we're going newspaper. There you go. No, oh my, it kills Rick if in the other scenario. If you take Helen's route, it kills Rick. What do you mean? We don't abuse Huey. We save Huey. And obviously, there's a reason why Nolan and Jennifer's relationship doesn't work out. Outside of, you know, Jennifer being 15 and Nolan being 24. Originally, I thought Nolan was the older one. But no, Nolan's 24. Hey, thanks so much for the follow. It was much appreciated. Also, the greatest part about all of this. <laughs> so, you and Helen originally are going to the Clock Tower Mansion <laughs> to stop the, um, stop the murder. But every single fucking person you talk to wants to join. Everyone wants to join for some fucking reason. Hey, road trip to England, yeah! The Barrows Family Castle, let's all take a road trip, guys. All of them want to... No, it's not even a date. Everyone in the fucking game, all the main cast, decides to go. Like, anyone who we've talked to decides to join us. All of them. Like, every single character we talk to goes to England right now. I do, there's no reason why they should all go to England. Brazilian Ghost, that's in two games. So after Ghost Head, Clock Tower 3. We're doing all the games in order. Two. Even the Jander? Well, not Rick, I'll tell you that much. Okay, and then Police Station... I wonder if the inspector's in. You need to talk to Gots, you need to talk to Helen. I suppose, Kitty Wolf, but it's like, hey, you know the Scissor Man's gonna be here and he'll probably kill all of us? Who wants to join? They don't even ask, everyone just volunteers. Like, hey, Jennifer, heard Scissor Man's back, watch. The media's gonna jump all over it again. This is indeed an interesting case. I would love to see the Scissor Man. Hmm, big hmm. Inspector Gots, I am going to England. It's Assistant Inspector. Are you going there to study? No, not really. There's a castle in England. Called the Barrow's Castle. Not, you know, not the other Barrow's Castle. If I go there, maybe I'll be able to learn 
something about Scissor Man. The Barrows Castle. So that's where the Barrows used to live before they immigrated to Norway. I think so. That sounds rather interesting. Hey, Lele. I will accompany you as well. Hold on a sec, Professor. What about the case? You too, Jennifer. You are an important witness in the case. You can't just try peas off like that. Then come with us. Huh? There must be some reason as to why the Moidoa disguises himself as... Scissor Man. We might learn why by investigating the Barros history. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> All right, Professor. Sorry, Prof. I'll go. What am I going to say to my boss? No need to worry. You will be a hero if this case is solved. As long as I ain't made a goat. Literally everyone in the fucking game is joining us for this. Uh, hotel, was it up here? No, that's Rick's house. Uh, hotel, there we go. Everybody in the game finds an excuse to join you. It's not even, they all have to take a plane. Because it's from Norway to England. You, They have to take a plane. Hey, Rick, uh, that's hi. Nice. Not bad at all. That sounds pretty legit. And you don't have to be a speedrunner or to speedrun. And then Kay and Edward comes. By the way, Edward's shorts have gotten even shorter since the last time we saw him. Uh, Rick? Sorry, Rick's uh, out of commission. Rick's a tad bit out of commission, I'm sorry. I don't think Rick will be joining us today. Mr. I asked you, I'm going to England, I'll go too, so let's get the situation. Pretty much. Like, everyone who go, everyone you've ever talked to goes. Edward, I'll go with you, Jennifer. What? Edward, don't be ridiculous. You're ten. What if we don't do something? You'll probably kill us too. Also, if you're wondering who Edward is, he's also apparently a survivor of the Clock Tower murders. He did. Well, Rick would go to England, but he physically cannot. And then we're going to the research building. There we go. And the last section of people. Jennifer. Beth and Harris. Fucking Beth and Harris. Look at them. They're also deciding to go with us. I don't know why. You ha like Jennifer's surprised, like, why the fuck are you joining us? This is a good chance to see a castle. It sounds like fun. They literally just want to see a fucking castle. Never mind the whole... I oh, wait. Um, I need to go back up. Um, one more room. I think it was housing. There's no time... Why would you take me there, then? No shit, Jennifer. Go back. Oh, uh, let's go. I think it's back to the um, newspaper. There we go. I'll come with you, sure. Not bad, though, Ricker. Not bad at all. There you go. Now that we gathered everybody, we can go. We don't know anything for sure yet. Ten people going to England. See, Nolan has the right idea. Some, like, why the fuck are we going? And first thing in the morning, you know how much that costs? Helen got a rental car. The true power. They're taking 10 people to fucking England. The Oslo airport. All of them fly to England. This shows us on the map, by the way. And then it shows they're driving in the little dot map. <sighs> I think they're actually taking a clown car, yeah. I think they have a camper, actually, but still, they rented a camper for this. There we go. And then it's outside. Yes, yeah, sorry, I've been announcing this all week. What do you mean? It's been announced since, like, last, last week. Yeah. 
right? Oh, this game's a fucking fever dream. It's great. Ghost Head's somehow better than this. Like, even more of a fever dream than this. Oh, wait, it's just split here. There we go. Scissor Man. But yeah, man. This game is the, uh, this is the worst speeder in the entire series, by the way. Look who it is, it's Harris. You know the 35-year-old guy who wants to smash a 15-year-old? It's Harris. Bobby's not in this game. He told me that it, it, it can't be you. Give, by the way, the way I was reading it's actually accurate. He'll give you to me. And kill people. He told me to dress up like Scissor Man and kill people. And then he just straight up fucking dies. Because there's two Scissor Men. There's two Scissor Men. Thanks for the follow. It was much appreciated. Okay. There's like two rooms you can go to. There are two. Count with me. Two Scissor Men. This game is a Scissor Man extravaganza. Hey, Andy. Thank you for the good luck. It's much appreciated. There are two Scissor Men. And we take them out with coats. Hiya! See, Jennifer's used to that. Okay, uh, there we go. And we're getting a few things here, because it's necessary. There's a lot we have to do. This is 100% all people live, which is necessary. Exactly. It's perfect. Moron on Hydra today, by the way. Hope you're okay. Something in the pocket. I think we just robbed the Scissor Man, by the way. Okay, there's a lot you must do. Why are there two Scissor Man? Because it's all a part... The game will actually do the story. I can't skip any cutscenes, so we'll actually have the story of the game. You just gotta wait for it. go only foreign books up here why Jennifer um there we go okay better a note is stuck between the two books there we go perfect clearly yeah, there's the decoy Harris that's obviously correct the decoy Harris Okay, and now we get to... I should have made more splits for this, but I never had it. It's called Clock Tower 2 because there's actually two Clock Towers. <laughs> there's actually two scissors. Okay. A chapel. By the way, what RNG am I going to get? Let's see. We're getting moon? Or am I getting the sun? Um, that looks... Fuck it, I'm going to look at it because I don't trust myself. Um, look at the panel outside the room. Um, that looks like the star. Yeah, that's the star. Okay. Star is uh, it's actually RNG. But we'll see. There's actually only one star. Spaz, I hope you're doing well. All right. Thank God, Gots is alive. If you if you're wondering how you know Gots is dead, oh, I need to get the candle. Gots is dead if he's jutting out of this fucking thing. It's hilarious. Gots will straight up be dead if he's just like... Because everyone in the game can die. You can get uh, everyone killed off. You're still alive. Yes. Inspector Gots. Thank heaven. You're gonna hear him say it. It's assistant inspector. <laughs> inspector Gots. I love him. Alright, there we go. It's assistant inspector. Anyway. <laughs> and that's all he says! It's assistant and it's assist assist assistant inspector gots. Like he doesn't drop it every time someone calls him inspector. Assistant assistant inspector. Okay, a staircase. Alright, back up. 
He's an assistant to the inspector. Alright, let's keep going. He loves the he loves being an assistant, what can he say? Okay, now we get to continue forward. Now we're in the actual castle. So Jennifer has a weird route where she doesn't go into the entrance of the castle. Helen will go to the straight entrance while Jennifer actually puts you in immediate death. Like Jennifer's scenario is much harder than Helen's. Uh, Helen's is a tad bit easier. Okay. And there we go. Not bad. And we're gathering a lot of items that are all necessary. You also have to be rather careful because you can potentially um, have the scissor man join you. And you must know how to get rid of him. Oh, I, I loved it, dude. It was so great. I love all my clock tower shit. I want more clock tower shit. I need it. I think that mouse ran in here. Ah. Ah. Yes, Jennifer. There's there's a mouse hole here. That that would be correct. No, don't go to... Why would you go to the bed, Jennifer? Why? A key. Alright, we have the library key. Now we get out of here. Uh, I would not rank it that high. I think it's medium. I think it's mid-tier, but definitely not the best that the series has to offer. Okay, and the uh, downstairs bottom left door is this one. Run, Jennifer. Thank you. You want her to make sure she runs at all points because... There we go. It's faster. And it's not easy to get her to run. Okay. And exit right side. A lot of the doors are very specific. Uh, routing for this game, actually, I just used notes. It's a bit easier for me to remember. Okay. And, uh, hold on. Uh, exit right side. First door, new hallway. There we go. Sound evil. Thank you for the post. She is not, Renneth, because she is now 15. You must understand that only happens if you are 15. I forgot there's dead ass a fucking hand in here. I'm stupid. Forgot about the hand. Then she just fucking stabs it. Thank you. There we go. That's what I was supposed to do because I'm stupid. <laughs> There's a book by the bed. Okay, now we're better. Now we're doing better. We got the book. We need this book for later. It's important. That's time lost, by the way, because I forgot where to go. Okay, this room. I'm trying to remember. And I'm gonna say really quick, fuck you, Johnny boy. It's you, Jennifer. Fuck Shiroi too. Professor See, Professor Barden's alive. Shiroi and Azon forever give me shit because I killed off Professor Barden back in the day. I did not actually do it. And our casual playthrough of this. They're great, Silent Evil. This is an extremely important experience for What, just sitting in the middle of a fucking castle? At the site of the murders. A very, very intriguing... Is he just, like, jerking off in the, like, garden? What's he doing? There we go. Oh, Professor yes, everyone lives. I found something I would like you to look at. Also, it's not that much longer to get everyone to live, so it's not that bad. I don't think this game actually has a direct cannon, but this is my, I think, best ending as well, but it's not cannon. Other games have cannon, but obviously it varies. Words to open, open the, the door. door. Okay. The only thing that has somewhat of a cannon is obviously Remothered, uh, Clock Tower 3. Night I guess good ending counts for most of it, and the ones that are only one good ending. What does it mean? Oh god, that fucking phrase. I don't know. It means to open a 
door, just as it says. Remember that dialogue, by the way. But it doesn't say which door. A door. Ni a shush. Okay, and is it going? Nice and keep running, Jennifer. There we go. The castle gets kind of confusing, which is why I have notes. <laughs> but I never remember the full layout of this castle. It's a fucking bitch to remember. Okay, there we go. Sir Man spawning is also a pain in the ass, which is a good thing hasn't happened yet. There's ways to remove him, but you do need to be careful. Okay, and. Floorboards are loose. Oh, right here. Dried up goods. And here's the secret button. In the middle of the fuck. Why wouldn't you push it, Jennifer? Why? Thank you. Get in there. Get in there, Jennifer. Good job. And now, if I did this correctly, I should have a person behind this. I think the whole way of doing this actually is to go, like, back here. Back up. There we go. <gasps> Someone's spooky. <gasps> it's Beth. Beth. Oh, Jennifer, it's you. She's just hiding in the back. Are you hurt? No, I'm not. There's also the best way of doing it, like, because you get all the keys you need. Remember, she was the one who really wanted to be in the castle. I had to do this twice, by the way. We just investigate her. We can't get upstairs anymore. Why would we want to go upstairs? Good question. Because we might be able to find a way out of here. Good job, Jennifer. That's you know, I like how her hair is clipping through her dress, by the way. There probably isn't a way out. Yeah. It looks like a comb. I have very long comb. I found it a little while ago. I know Beth found this key. But it'll probably open something in this mansion. That's smart. That's smart. It, it might actually open up something in the mansion. It's hard to say what, but it may open up something. Okay, and up we go. What the hell was that turn, Jennifer? That was a terrible turn. All right, now we gotta do more. All right, for some, I was like, "Wait, am I, am I getting into a fight? Why did the game like lag there? That was very strange lag. I was hoping I would not die or something." Can Got the oil can now? We're doing good, and now I can continue forward. Keep moving, Jennifer. Really, there is a instant safe hallway that's like you can cheese the entire game. If I get Scissor Man, I'll show you, but it's hilarious if I get it. I most likely won't need to deal with it, but if I do, it's not the end of the world. Okay, and... Let's keep going. Good job, Jennifer. I'm proud of you. Nice. Well, can. And uh, do I explore in here again? I think I have to move the coffin. Right? <laughs> the scissor man! A mummified scissor- Three scissor men! Hold on. I'm gonna the rope and candle together. I've got the rope, give me the rope, and let's go over here now. Wait. There they are! Okay, there they are, there they are. There they are, okay. I was like, wait, why did that not work for a second? I was like, why did that not work? Why, where, where are the bats? There we go. And now we get... Oh, wait, it's locked. 
the box key. There we go. Oh, I keep forgetting what to do. Helen. It's Helen inside the box. Oh, <laughs> She's just in a fucking box. I don't even know if I have to talk to her. I'm doing it anyway. Yeah, we don't have to talk to her. We can just straight up fucking leave. You just need to get her out of the box. Alright, Helen, have fun. You're welcome, Helen. Helen's now out of the box and she's now alive. Proud of you, Helen. Very proud of you. Uh, here we go. We're gonna have a chase in a moment here, and this is a funny chase. How'd that happen? Well, I guess the scissor man put her there. It had to be the it had to be the way, right? Ellen is big mood. It's Helen. And then I go to this one, I think. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, I think it was this one. Yes, it was this one. Okay, thought I was Ellen. Yeah, see, I thought I was Ellen. I think I have to investigate the door. Yep, there it is. Hey, perfect. And then we entirely ignore him. By the way, his scissors are like in us at that point, and he can't actually do anything. Hey, look, here's Nolan in the room of dead children. Jennifer. Nolan. Clearly. He just in the room of all dead children. <laughs> you know, every mansion needs one. Us and Clearly, yeah. Good, good for you, Nolan. Nolan, you've hurt your leg. Oh, sorry, castle. Just a cut. I'll be all right if I'm every castle needs room for all dead children. That's correct. By the way, I think he gives us a fucking gun. I'll come back. But, but why? And ghost children. What was that? Ghost children. You saw them too? Hey, Cringy. Clearly. I've seen them a few times already. Oh, I thought Gots get. I thought it, I, who gets the? Oh yeah, I guess Gots has a gun. I thought Nolan gave us. What does he give us? Genealogy. He gives us something, right? So many. I don't remember. I guess he doesn't give us anything. I guess we get a knife later, but... I know the knife, but I don't remember what exactly else we get. Okay. And now, go up close. Sweet. And... Gotta keep going. It worked! Okay. Door on the left side, and now we get this room. Which, is this is a cool room. This is genealogy. I remember this room now. There's a lot of movement options you need to remember, and if you don't, it sucks. Um, where's the book? And... There it is. Jennifer, are you fucking blind? Go. There you go. Now you may reach it. Now Jennifer may reach it. Okay, and a lambskin parchment. And guys, remember what was earlier? Moon, uh, not moon. Moon, star, or sun? Well, it's gonna be one of those three. Traitor. Genealogy. I don't know how you're supposed to be able to see this in PS1 graphics, but it's pretty tough to know there's an empty slot here for the book. Like, getting this to move is a pain in the ass. Now, if you're wondering what happens if you get this incorrect on the next puzzle, uh, you'd eat in by rats. Uh, the answer is star. You want moon, because moon is the fastest one? 
And there's actually two ways of doing this. If you do Helen's, you get um, balls to let you know if it's wet or dry. And if you do Jennifer, you get the moon, sun, and star. And it's always moon, sun, and star, but you actually get the directions as Jennifer. You don't get them as Helen. This is all part of the plate we saw earlier. You can eyeball it sometimes, but it's hard. Moon is the easiest to see as well. Is there something else on the altar I have to use? Oh, there it is. And a dagger. A dagger with symbols carved into it. It's the mummified scissor man. Another scissor man. That's four scissor men. Two mummies, two normal. All right, now up. I don't. I don't know why they. I guess that was to scare you, but mummified scissor man. Not just a scissor man. But a mummy. The mummy. Okay, let's leave now. And back to hallway. And I know where to exit. We need to get a few more things here. This is Clock Tower PS1 more and on. It's fucking great. Okay, let's hope I remember how to go. Exit right side. Alright, here we go. Oh, yeah. They're very nervous. Uh, it's up here. And we're going to see our old friend once again. This is the last one we actually need to save, I think. Here we go. Look who it is. It's our friend Tim. This is my favorite dialogue in the game, by the way. You need a light. Hey. Hey. Tim. Hey. Looks it's like we're in a bit of a jam, doesn't it? I love Tim. Tim's funny. Poor Tim. I think you should keep these matches. Matches? Maybe you'll need a light. Maybe you'll need a light. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Hey, bloody man. Thanks for the host. Okay, now we leave. Thank you, Tim. All right. And now we get to do a bit more. Yeah, we're uh, almost done with the second game in the series. And we have five more after this. Also, thank God I've not gotten a random scissor man yet. It can happen if you uh, dilly dally too long. So you gotta be careful. No random scissor man. That's bad. Alright, third from left. Quinton Barros. He is the 13th generation. He is the traitor. Okay. So I'm again upstairs and far left door. Now we're going back. We have everything we need now, so this going to be good. I think I... Wait, hold on. Did I get everything? Five Quinton Barros. Yeah, I got everything I need. We good. It's always remembering what I need. A no. Oh, it's a no. That's right. It says, Danger's near. I've hidden the map in the library. This is how you know there's the map there. How many times and dispel the devil children from the world, Quentin Barros. Elvis, how's it going? Oh, they're absolutely amazing. The funniest part is, I don't know. If they knew he was a traitor, why wouldn't they search his thing? Because, like, he's labeled traitor, but, like, if he's labeled traitor, then why wouldn't they put more effort into stopping him? Like, you know? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me why they wouldn't do that. Okay, I think it was this room. Area. Hey, Roy, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Candle. See, there's the dry path note. It, it's still there. It's going good, my man. It's going good. Give me your born. How's it going? Enjoy the lurk, my man. Enjoy the lurk. There we go, Jennifer. That's smart. Now we can use the candle. Thank you. You have to actually know it's dark before going. I, I guess it's too dark for Jennifer. 
I hope everyone will play Gaming Reborn. Alright, now we get the thing. And sketch of the mansion. Sweet. And now we can head back. Right back to the foyer, and we're almost done. We have to go back to the part where Barden was, and we are about to finish the run. Overall, not too bad, honestly. I mean, it looks like I'm at a hour or five minute run right now. I mean, it's not too shabby. Go run, Jenner, run! I don't know what my PB is, but I, like, I don't know, it's an hour five. It'll probably be a bit more. There we go. And I don't think I need anything else for this. I think we have everything we need. So it'll be good, nice and good. Go to the pointy door. That is Barden. And... There we go. Because we have a map. And there's a valve underneath the map if you got the schematic of the actual building. And the end game is underneath this fucking well. For some odd reason, it's underneath the well. And now... Guys, wait, we don't know. Who is the Scissor Man? Do we know who the Scissor Man is yet? Does anyone have any wild guesses? Who is the real Scissor Man? I'll give you a hint. He's deadly. It's you. It's Bayleaf. There we go. We got it. It's Bayleaf. Everyone is the Scissor Man. Clearly. Clearly. And Trim uh, Pimmon, how's it going? Hope you had a wonderful day. We are almost to Bates. Although, after this run, I have to pee. So, we're going to do that. Come on. And here we go. The final door. Good to hear you're doing good. And a big welcome. That's more of an ah, not an e. Any of yourself guesses on who it might be? Any strong guesses? It's Edward. So it was you, you Edward. Edward. Yep. Wait for it. My name isn't Edward, it's Dan. <gasps> you don't mean no. So you yep. remember me now. Jennifer. No. So it all makes sense. You scissor fingered little runts. That is the perfect end song. That is the t that is the top tier insult right there. All right, come on. And time for the door spell. Got. By the way, this game ends in a fucking clusterfuck. Wait for it. Wait for it. I was gonna play caddy. It is. That's it. He just goes into the fucking uh, like abyss. Nah, he. <laughs> this is Clock Tower PS1, and that's the canon ending. <laughs> he they send Dan back into the abyss. I don't know what abyss. Yes, it is, Black Cat. You're going all the way up to Remother, because I count that. Also, get ready for Helen, 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 Helen. Oh, God, that movement. Oh god, all the movement. I'm gonna start telling that to people. 
What a romantic moment between a 15 year old and a 25 year old. What a romantic moment. Because he was covered in orphan meat. Dan was the big baby from the first one in Crush Dance. And they live. And that's Clock Tower PS1 and the end of the Jennifer Saga. By the way, these are the only actual games that are canon? How did it not gold Clock Tower 2, but it golded Game Swap? Wait a minute. What the fuck? How did I not gold that? Oh, that's great. Okay, enjoy the credits. I need to go pee. I'm also going to take the time to get more water, too.
There we go. No butter dogs. Clock tower, you're incorrect. Okay. Uh, what did I miss? I was gone because I didn't have my phone with me. Butter dogs are definitely feels bad, man. Um. Oh, guys, it's a lot of terrible opinions. Thank you for the follows. Much appreciated. That is not a terrible opinion. That's a good one right there. But it depends on how you feel about many things. Uh, anyway, at this point, we're going back to uh, the next game, which let me see if there's anything else after this. I don't think there is. Uh, don't do that to me. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, now we're in game swap and back to Clock Tower, meaning we put up the next game. And while I do that, I'm actually going to change the title in time this time. Clock Tower Ghost Head slash The Struggle Then. So in my opinion, it depends on what you enjoy out of video games in all honesty. Die forever with the raid. Good timing, I just got back. How was your stream? And thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that one. As a die forever with an E. And four. Well, let's see if Sora gets it. And how was the stream? Welcome everyone from Die Forever. You came at the perfect time. We're entering the greatest game. Oh, watch the intro of this. Watch the intro of this really quick. Nice. You're doing the seventh guest, right? You're doing the seventh guest. I've been seeing your stuff on speedrun.com. Alright, not r slash speedrun. Anyway, I started Die Forever. Really chill dude. And everyone from Die Forever's chat, welcome. My name is Ictisis, and we're doing the Clock Tower Marathon. Now we're entering the best Clock Tower game, Ghost Head. Tell me this song doesn't slap, by the way. I was my door, I did. Wait for it, wait for it. We're watching the intro cinematic, by the way. I, I have to watch this. It's perfect. Mmm. Go and Ah yes. Gotcha. Makes sense. There we go. It's California. It is! Unironically, I think Ghost Head has some of the best music in the entire series. Like, unironically, I think Ghost Head does do that the best. On the upside for me, um... I'm skipping all the events. As a speedrun, this game is awesome because you can skip all of the events. Meaning I don't need to watch any cutscenes like PS1. And this is the reason why as a speedrun, this is one of the better point and clicks. Not the best point and click, but one of the better point and clicks. Anyway, on to... Let's go. Oh, the music of Ghost Heads? Ooh, it's crispy, dude. It's phenomenal. It's great. It's Gucci. It's fucking awesome. Well, Ghost Head does a lot right in Austin. Oh, yeah, that was painful spaz. Anyway, guys, we ready for the best one? I'll watch certain cutscenes, by the way, because they're funny. But here we go. Let's go. Ghost Head has baits, and honestly, Ghost Head ranks high for me. I, I, not like super high, but it's like mid tier. Like, Clock Tower games out of the seven, uh, I count remothered. I count remothered. Only a leg. Um, Ghost Head doesn't rank the highest, but I rank this above Clock Tower PS1, actually. Hello. I think it's better. I think it's a more fun game. I think the story just. It even works a little bit better, too. Weirdly enough, as much as I like Jennifer's story, who's Bates? Alyssa's alter ego. And we'll watch some of Bates' cutscenes, because they're funny. I can skip a lot of the cutscenes in this game, however. Also, we're just finding random body parts everywhere, because that's part of the story here. You need to investigate all the body parts before you can actually begin the game. Also, I can skip all the door animations. You don't have to go through doors. You skip that, because it's a cutscene. And you skip literally all of them, which is great. Oh, this game is not related to Clock Tower in the slightest, and it's hilarious. Like, it's Clock Tower by name. Everything after Clock Tower P um, PS1 or Clock Tower 2 is only Clock Tower related by name. 
which is a tad unfortunate when you think about it. I don't quite know why people say there's a loose interpretation uh, to the Barrow's family, but that's where it all comes from. But yeah, that is a lot of mustard bleeding, that is correct. But that's the gist of what this game kind of entails. And Clock Tower 3 doesn't relate either. Neither Haunting Ground doesn't even really relate. But it is just sort of that case. Oh, wait, I need the key. There we go. Who bleeds yellow blood? Technically. Okay, and we are out of here. Sweet. Oh, I know I'm not out of here yet. Now I can go upstairs. I forget what I need to do in a lot of these sections. We'll see as we go. But I don't remember everything. I don't claim to be perfect in this game. Hugbees, how's it going? Japanese PCs? I don't own Ghost Head. Ghost Head costs a lot of money. Oh, wait, wrong way. I own the rest of the game. This is not this one. How's it going, Hugbees? You like my Clock Tower shirt? It's powerful. Also, I have to do the speed run. I'm not a purist. Nah, no, I'm not a purist. How are you doing today, Hugby? So we have a normal day. Sweet. Now we're Bates. Uh, I need this, don't I? I don't remember. Bates is hilarious. Bates is Alyssa's alter ego. Yeah, well, my thing is, normally I have to work, but since today is Memorial Day, yeah, buddy, I get to stream during daytime, which is actually pretty... I like streaming during daytime. Fortunately, I cannot always do so, though. Really? Elvis, that's fucking hilarious. That's actually the case. That's actually hilarious. I want to play my favorite Bates cutscenes. Only the favorite ones. Alright, back we go. Yeah, so far we're on a few... Uh, we've done Clock Tower, SNES, and PS1. Right now we're on Ghost Head. Which, Ghost Head's funny. Alright, there we go. We did... We're back to Alyssa. Because the whole idea of this is that you need to... um play the game with amu it's an amulet system. So, if you have the amulet, you're Alyssa. If you get into a fight after you do not have the amulet, you become Bates. Bates is Alyssa's pissed off and angry alter ego, who is just absolutely great. As well, I need to actually look at this, or I think look at that afterward. There we go. And there's just a man creeping in the corner. You don't know as many about the cutscenes as in Clock Tower PS1, but it's still going to be pretty good. And away she is. Or he is, because Bates is actually a dude. He's just chilling in the fucking corner, by the way, and I love that. Like, of all the places he can go, he's just in the corner. During Bates time. That sounds terrifying. Anyway, get ready for a fight. Alright, run away. And I think I need to do this in this room. Right here. Let's get it twice. How's it going on the carpet room, lad? Yeah, Nightcry is the one you one of the last ones. This is chronological order. Because it makes sense that way. Alright, ideally, I think I did this right, but we will see. I'm a bit nervous. I don't exactly remember the route. Because this is the one that, this is probably the one of the fuzzier games to me. Because I don't have notes up in, um, up until chapter 3, because I don't remember that at all. I remember the intro, though. It's a lot easier to remember. Too bad we're not going to get the you little shit dialogue. Because Bates, if you're Bates going into this room, like, you know, oh, that's who's behind all this. And he'll just say, you little shit. Which is hilarious to me. Bates is absolutely hilarious, and I love Bates. We'll notice Bates later on. Also, the name, like, what kind of name inspires, like, power other than Bates? Can you name a more powerful name than Bates? I don't think you can. If you want your child to have power, we'll get a better cutscene. We'll get a few other ones. If you want your child to inspire power, you need to name them Bates. I'm sorry. It, it just required. If you want your child to grow up to be nice and powerful, you need to name them Bates. It's a powerful name, and then they get beat up for the, um, till the end of time, because you named your child Bates. And you listen to a streamer online what you should name your kid. Uh, anyway, and you lit. This is corner. 
No problem, die forever. No problem at all. We get rid of the amulet in this vase because it's right here and available. There we go. We can take it back if we need to, but we'll see. I mean, it's masterful advice. And I'm just saying, the stream's going well so far, and I haven't lost steam yet. Stephanie, please. Alright, guys, we're watching this next cutscene. Oh, it skipped it. Ah, uh, boo! Ah, uh, my bad, guys. But... He just shoves her down and makes on Stephanie. I fucked up! God damn it. I didn't realize square was the skip button, not circle. I thought it was circle. I guess it's square. Is it circle or square? Yeah, it's square. I didn't know that. Alright, good to know, I suppose. Well, now we're back in track. Boo... I did done goof. I didn't realize that would be the button. I always push all four buttons at once, so I kind of just mash them. I pushed square, thinking it would be the uh, mash buttons. I thought I had a mash, but I'm incorrect. Oh, well. Maybe there's more base cutscenes later on. Anyway, I don't think I need to talk... You know what? I think I do need to talk to her. It's not that long. It's a short dialogue with her. That's your aunt. Again, nobody in this game is actually going to matter because it doesn't relate to the clock tower story at all. It's just a clock tower by name, which is kind of funny to think. One more? Really? Are you kidding me? Oh, this one. There we go. As you need the can of oil for later, everything I'm grabbing is absolutely required. As well, weirdly enough, after you talked in that room, Stephanie would have disappeared. So, then killing you, uh, the scissor stalker. We actually do have a stalker. I'm just doing really well at avoiding her. It's Stephanie in level 1. Level 2, we'll have zombies. Level 3, we have, um, your dad. Who is really the iconic one of the game. Clearly, the oil can is the strongest weapon you could possibly have in a clock tower game. If you ever get stuck with a man with scissors, get oil. I guess it lubes up the scissors and makes it hard to, uh, maneuver. Which is the true power of the statement. Right, there we go. Now I run away. I got the what I need. Now we can go get the demon idol, which is in this room right here. Oh wait, this room. Oh right, no, I need the key. I remember now. I remember. We need to know that the demon idol is missing. Do not answer the phone, by the way. She says, "I'm going to kill you," and we get chased. I mean. It's probably a smart idea, especially if you're working right now watching. I, I say some weird shit. If I can do this full time, I absolutely would, though. Oh, wait, I forgot. Uh, hold on, on. Go. I need to actually do this on the shoes. So you need to investigate the shoes three times, because there's going to be a samurai in the demon idol room, and I want him out of the demon idol room. I need him to be in the hallway leading to the demon idol room, because if, if that happens, I can't investigate it. But if he's in the hallway, I can just ignore him entirely. There you go. See, that's perfect. And now, oh my god, where'd the demon idol go? It's gone. <gasps> it's missing. There's a lot of areas you have to be either Bates or Alyssa. It's very specific on what you need to be. The game will not let you progress unless you're a certain character at certain points. Hell, in certain areas of the game, you can't even go to certain rooms unless you're Bates or Alyssa. Like, Alyssa can't go in the men's room, and Bates can't go into the women's restroom. Even though you are playing as Alyssa the entire time, technically, if you're playing as Bates, you're not allowed into the women's restroom. You can only go into the men's, which I think is kind of funny. Samurai doesn't scare you. Damn. Sekiro looks like fun. I've watched, uh, only a few people play it. I watched mainly... Actually, I watched Huggies play it. I watched Distortion play it. I don't really watch much else, because Sekiro would just seem kind of cool with the grappling hook, but I don't know much about it. Okay, and now we get to talk to the old dude. Remember that guy who we just talked to who gave us a key? He wants us to meet us down there for a special reason. So, actually, I remember the connection that this game has to the other ones. The connection this has to Clock Tower PS1 is the fucking Demon Idol. That is the only connection this has. Oh, wait, wrong. Oh, wait, no, I got the right thing. Okay, we're good. That is the only connection, in fact. And then we get a cutscene, and he'll just start strangling us, but we win the fight. Then he's out like a light. Then we leave. 
The only connection is the fucking demon idol. Again, further proving that the staff in Clock Tower SNES is absolutely useless. Nobody wants a staff game. You can't work a staff. You can work a demon idol, but not a staff. There we go. One. Talk to the man, and then take the demon idol. I think the demon idol is we need to burn it down. Now we have it and everything we need. And now we hit the boss fight with a forced cutscene. So we actually get to watch one of the cutscenes with Bates. If you want to get Bates' personality, this cutscene will actually do a pretty good job at it. So let's watch. Even without the cutscenes, this game is still perfectly shitty in a good way. And you'll see more of that coming up. Anyway, in this room, we now need to go here with the demon idol. Here we go. It's time to party. I must, must burn, burn the, the statue. statue. <laughs> and then the oil can. There you go. I'm going to kill you. And then we use the lighter. We juke him. Give and then wait, up. it's happening. I love Bates. Bates is just such a fucking madman. And then you stab. That's the way I do it. You stab the little girl afterward, and then this entire section you need the amulet back because you can't be Bates the entire time. You need to be Alyssa. You actually do need to be Alyssa, right? If you stay as Bates, you'll kind of just amulet. Protect me. You'll kind of just shit talk her, and then she'll stab you back. <laughs> Bates is the purple version of Alyssa that you saw here. I forgot to split. Yep. It's a dual personality. And all, then just the fucking spirit comes out of Stephanie. your sister. I'm sorry. Okay, mine. You stabbed your sister as Bates. Yeah. Bates is like a takes no shit kind of dude while this is, you know, a teenage girl. And Stephanie's an eight-year-old who you just beat the shit out of an eight-year-old. Which is why I wanted to show the other cutscene, which I did not get to, unfortunately. Okay. I missed it, just barely, but I did miss it. Okay, save the game, and... Now we're here, in the hostel. Nope, it's actually not a connection at all. I originally thought it was, but it's surprisingly not a connection in the slightest. Weirdly enough, it's quite stupid, but it is indeed not. Anyway, now we get to go, we leave. Uh, let's keep going. Pretty much. Also, running this game is a lot kinder to you. Like, running this game is actually a doable thing, which they fixed over PS1. PS1 is really awkward to run. Alright, so in this section of the hospital, you need to activate like four different dialogues. Right now, we have one dialogue. We need a bit more of those. Uh, door events, uh, the journalist, and the nurse key. Hold on, I forgot to split. That's fine. Here's how you take out every single enemy in the game, by the way. You guys like pro wrestling? She just whips out a fucking chair, smashes them on the skull, and then they disintegrate, which is awesome. But you can skip the cutscene, which is, again, a better part of the game, that you can skip all the parts of the game that are really just forced and slow. Talk to this guy, and then we need a few things here as well. We actually need the Maxwell papers. Let's teach us about her dad. There we go, we got vital information for the game, and we can continue moving. Oh, Elvis, they're a bitch to deal with. They're absolutely a bitch to deal with. Don't you worry, though, we have a solution for them. I have a general idea of how to get rid of them, which we will. The next split will be designed around zombie killing, which you'll see in a moment. Um, should we be able to just get our hand, I think. Go... Sweet, we got the key. Now we're good to go, and we can leave the room. Okay, now it's time to kill every zombie under the sun. All of them. Now, if you wonder how we kill zombies, you go into the women's restroom. 
This works for every single zombie in the game. They just straight up die. By doing that, they will also... I'm going to get one of the events early here. Uh, in the back. Here we go. What are you up? There we go. Perfect. I want to make sure I got that. Last time I missed that and I was really lost for a while. I wanted to make sure I had it that time. Okay. And now we can keep going. We need a few more zombies killed. We need to kill a few of them here. I think this one I have to kill too. Yeah. So, the weird mechanic of this game is in level 2, the zombies can only be killed by Alyssa. If you kill a zombie as bait, they come back to life. But if you kill one as Alyssa, it's permanently dead. Meaning, you have to make sure you do this perfectly or else the section gets really fucked up. Because you can't progress the game unless you are in exploration mode in certain sections. And in order to do that, you need to not have zombies. But if you have zombies, you can't do certain sections. There we go. We need two more zombies dead. Well, actually, three more. I forgot all about them. We need three more zombies dead. How could I forget all the zombies? And there we go. There's this one. It is now dead. And inside. And this zombie is the one I always forget. I need an upstairs zombie too. And then we'll be good. Come on. Almost there. Almost all the zombies are dead. And again, this strategy every time. You just get a bro Also, if you want to see what the death is like, I'll, I'll show you guys. You literally just smack them in the face with a fucking broom. And then you do that about five times. It's absolutely great. Uh, I think this is the room. Oh, wait, I didn't, there was no enemies in this room. Okay. Although, did I have to be in there as a listener base? I don't remember. Give me a moment. Let's see. Uh, lights. No light, thank you. Clearly. Here's this. Power's off. Alright, so that's correct. Okay, I got the sync event. Actually, I forgot to split. This is fine. Oh, come on. Push the button, Alyssa. Push, push the button. Thank you. And I also need a gun. Uh, the gun is in this locker. There's guns in this game, by the way. This is the first clock tower to introduce a active, usable gun mechanic. I mean, PS1 has a gun, but you don't actively... You only use it for one section. Okay, one more and we'll be good. Also, I should just put that. One more zombie and then we can change over to baits. Again, changing the baits is going to be required, which we'll see later. There's one uh, inside. And then up. You also must enter and exit every elevator in the game. It's not really kind to you. We literally go in the elevator to start a fight and then immediately leave said fight. That is the sole reason. Also, keep in mind, zombies can actually take the elevator for some strange fucking reason. I don't know why. You're going in an elevator. Shouldn't you innately lose the zombie? But I guess not. The only way to really lose the zombie is to go into the bathroom and beat him up with a fucking broom, I suppose. Don't discriminate? I suppose. Alright, there we go. And now we get to uh, become Bates. Let's do that. I now need to become Bates. Oh my god, why are my splits so fucked? I don't know. Okay, uh, this room. I will bully zombies. They Because you, you know I had to do it to them. Amulet. Into the locker. And then we run. And we're almost done. Well, the zombie randomly jump scare me later on, but we'll be okay. I have full health. And now I can do what I need to. It's when you have to what? There we go. In terms of playing, this plays a lot better than Clock Tower PS1. I'll say that much. 
Like, that's my firm opinion. This gameplay is way better than PS1. Or Clock Tower, like, Jennifer. That game is awkward to get moving. Ah, yes. Also, here's the entire strategy. Here's how you become Bates. Detroit, become Bates. All the damn time. Alright, now we're Bates. What Bates does is she kicks enemies in the nuts. However, what I want to do now is actually go into this room. Because Bates is weird in how she, uh, how he works. You, Every time you eliminate a zombie, you'll go back into whatever room you're in last. If I immediately killed the zombie in the hallway, I'd go back into the room where the zombie would then respawn. So it's an infinite weird thing. Also, a literal fucking gunshot ends this. Only came out on the PS1. Well, I'm emulating it right now, Crusader, but this is pretty much Ghost Head for the PS1, correct? It only came out on PS1. There we Yeah, this game is uh, very hard to come by. I own a copy. Like, this is the only game I don't, like, actively have. I have Clock Tower PS1. I just lost it in the move. I have two. I have two copies of that game, too, is the worst part. But I lost them in the move. No, I gave one to a friend, and I lost the other one in the move. That's right. Anyway, light. Also, health in this game makes a lot more sense. Instead of just random button mashing, you get three lives. You get two lives, and the third one, you die. Okay, and now we can go do the next section. I talked to the chick four times. We had all the events done, and now we may go up top and get what we need. There's going to be a lot happening right now, by the way. This is a long split. I don't remember why. I feel like I missed a split somewhere. I don't exactly know what it was, but we'll find out. Now, why do I want to be Bates going into this next section? Uh, two reasons. Alyssa can't do what Bates does. Again, they have different reactions. I lost my PS3 too, Elvis. It's unfortunate, but I lost my PS3. You know how sad that is? Very. Really enough, my PS3 is in the exact same spot as... Okay. Okay. We go. As my clock tower PS1 copy. There we go. Alright, now we're in and turn on the light. So this chick's gonna be in the corner. Um she's gonna tell us that she's not happy. She's gonna be crying, but Bates is a forceful person, so we <laughs> just bully her into giving us the information. There we go. We get information about what's happening to all the zombies. Like, I bet you're wondering, why the fuck are there zombies in a clock tower game? A lot of the other games will make sense later on, but this game, there's zombies in, for whatever reason. There just is. There, there's zombies everywhere. You must have noticed the zombies. The game has a canon reason behind the zombies, and it's really stupid, but funny. Also, an even better section. Check this out. <laughs> he wants to kill us. If you're Alyssa, you'll die. But if you're Bates, you'll just beat the shit out of him. Uh, hold on. go and I get a uh, backdoor key he's just having a seizure on the floor don't worry he's not dead he'll get back up uh, just kicking him in the nuts once is enough to take him down you do need to do more than that however now we get to become Alyssa in a moment I do need to get the vital information uh, if you don't get it you can't progress to the game and you can only get it as baits so it's a lot of things you need to do with baits Later in the game, it's a bit kinder, because both Bates and Alyssa can destroy enemies. But, it's really awkward that Bates is the only one who can not really, like, you can't permanently kill enemies as Bates. But if you kill all the enemies, you can't become Bates, and you need to be Bates to beat the game. So it's a bit awkward in a way. Anyway, I am now going to go read this. And we'll get a little fight. Don't mind the actual quick time event. Not the end of the world as long as I can escape. And watch, you'll watch Bates kick her in the nuts. Oh, goddamn, it skips the cutscene when I mash all the buttons like that. Uh, uh, do not grab the gun. Thank you. And yes, put on the amulet and grab the chair. Alyssa, you champion! We destroy her with the chair. Alright, now we're back to Alyssa. And now we're almost done. I should have done everything properly. If I did not, that means I suck. We'll see. Yeah, Zelda, that sounds about right for Ghost Head. A lot of the movement in these games are not very good. Clock Tower 3 is also pretty bad in terms of movement. 
Um, let's go up. The only game that moves well is Haunting Ground and Clock Tower SNES. And I guess Remothered. Well, Remothered has Awkward Moon. This guy also, the Nicholas Cage ripoff, is chilling. We'll talk to him later, don't you worry. We'll definitely talk to him later. Also, she's about to kill herself. We don't want that happening. So, we talk her out of it. She's dead-ass about to commit suicide in front of us. Sort of? At least I think he looks like looking at his case. We'll see him later, I think, but, I mean, up to you guys to decide. Because we will get some dialogue with him later, I think. Not right now, of course. Also, I forgot to split. Why do I keep getting split in the hospital? Okay, and now we should be good. <laughs> It's now a panic event as opposed to being just an instant death. <laughs> Hurry up and get eaten. So Kaplan here, the head doctor, well one, now he's dead. And two, and more importantly, he would try killing you because he thinks that if you die, the zombies won't get him. We meet a really weird chick who just literally shot his fucking brains out. And now we get to end the section. And down we go. Also, this is actually an area you need to worry about because if you choose incorrectly, you'll lose the entire run. We're trying to get the best ending possible. That uh, A ending is only doable if you manage to select the correct options in the early game. As always, Clock Tower games love doing this to you. I don't know why. Oh, you didn't do this thing in the very beginning of the game? Too bad for you. So in this game, the option is talk to this dude. And then you need to tell him no. We'll take. He ends up in the lab anyway, so don't worry. But he's like, oh, come to the lab with me. And then you'll come to the lab with him. But the thing is, you won't get the best ending that way. So you gotta be careful. And now we're almost done with the section. Overall, not too bad so far. Like, this is doing well as a section. And now we get to leave. And time for the most what-the-fuck thing in any of the Clock Tower games. I guarantee you, of all the games, this is going to be the most what-the-fuck section of all of them. Oh, wait, I forgot to talk to Nicolas Cage. Did I? Um, yeah, let's do that. Talk to everyone else. Come on. Back up. I mean, I would say it beats all the PS1 horror games. I have, I, I, I would agree with that sentiment. We have to talk to Nicolas Cage here. I forgot about him. I still think Tate's the guy who did it. All right, now he's gone whenever that happens. I don't know if he actually sounds like Nicolas Cage. It's been a while since I've actively heard him. I heard him in Spider-Verse recently. Wait. I just more of a cheap Nicolas Cage. Imagine you got a budget version of Nicolas Cage. I don't know how that's possible. We managed to get a budget version of the budget. Okay, back to our key. And now for the best part of the game by far. Here we go. I hope you guys are ready for this. Oh, he doesn't talk. You know what? I'll leave the death because I want to watch this again. I'll leave the death because I want to. I want to do this again. I want to do this again. Continuing is rather generous, by the way. It'll normally continue where you ever left off, but watch the cutscene because I want to. I didn't know I'd skip it. I thought it was a mandatory one. Oh, so this oh, beanie's no, fucking it's hot. Locked. Let's get out of here. The door's locked. Damn back. Fucking 300 IQ. He shoots the door, and now it's a zombie rail shooter. And it gets worse. One, she faints. Two, you now use the infinite shotgun. Correct, Jonas. It is a shotgun rail shooter in the middle of a fucking clock tower game. And the whole idea that for accuracy is you want to shoot him in the nuts because that seems to work every time. Because there's two points of interest on there. Ooh, way too close that time. Okay, keep going. 
There. There. Good. You gotta keep finding the spot, by the way. Sweep. You must nail the shot every time, by the way. It's very specific shooting. There we go. Shoot. Right? How's it going, Comfort Zone team? I'll be wonderful day. We can't use it here, though. We're playing as the other guy who uses a fucking shotgun. Come on. No! 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 Alright, that was way too close. You have to do the entire thing again, by the way. There's no checkpoints or anything. If you miss a single shot, you have to do it all from the start. There we go. This is how you truly know this game takes place in America. The infinite shotgun. The ultimate power of weaponry. Boom. The infinite shotgun in its might. Truly powerful. Infinite chamber. Exactly. By the way, Comfort Zone team, hope you're on the day. How are you doing? Hope you're doing good. If you have any questions about the run, let me know. This is, uh, I'm always happy to answer them. Anyway, let's hope I remember uh, how to play this fucking game now, because this is the section I never remember how to play. Now we're in the final level, which is the laboratory your dad works at. Okay, up the stairs. Ah, so we're so good, by the way. I'm doing pretty good on this. So far, it's pretty good. Alright, go to the closest right door to the screen. This one. Oh, wait, no, this one. Okay, and then I... You have to turn on the light, though, which is one of my only, like, downsides. Oh, you need to see the light. Boo. I don't know who decided to dev that section. I don't think it was, like... I don't know what they were thinking. Yep, running in order of... Actually, you do chronological order. These, this is also the chronological order of games. Because it's really the launch order is the only thing you have, given that none of the games actually relate to each other, barring uh, one and two. Really? Did I just go in the door? Did I not use the lab key? Are you kidding me? There we go. Uh, yeah, at certain points of the speedrun you use it, but obviously it's going to depend on where we're going to be using it. Also, I think I have to get the shotgun from him. No, here we go. This thing. Okay. Yeah, I got a shotgun off that, so we, we need that shotgun for later. It's important. And we're about to get Ghost Head coming up. This is the Clock Tower Ghost Head, as you heard. You want to factor, like, you need it at certain points, and you need to not have it at certain points. And, other way, uh, good job, Alyssa. Oh, I fucked up. That's fine. Best song in the game, by the way. Oh, now I need to be careful because taking that hit's pretty bad. Oi. 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 Alright, which way is he going? Left or right? Alright, made it. He'll change directions too. He is quite he is rather intelligent. Alright. Now we want to keep running. So far, so good. We're doing solid. And we want to escape him in the bathroom, actually. Because the bathroom is going to be absolutely necessary to juke him in. Do -do. Um, boom, 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 boom. I do love this song, by the way, and like the chanting that happens in it. Uh, light on. And in the bathroom. And he is gone. Fuck yes. Alright, we did it. Sweet. And that was pretty good. Very good, in fact. And we now have everything we need. And we are out of here. Out of the room. Okay, we're doing good. Pretty good. And, again, you gotta make sure you're being baits in certain areas. Like, this next area, you wanna be a listener for quite a while. Becoming baits here would get you killed. I've done it before. Um, the creepy lady in the corner will kill you instantly if you piss her off. As Alyssa, she's okay with you. As baits, she'll kill you. So you don't wanna be baits. Not yet. 
Uh, but now that we talked to the creepy lady, I can actually just put the amulet on the bookshelf and it will become Bates. Detroit, become Bates. There we go. And becoming Bates requires a few things here. We are going to be running into the enemy. Run into him. Thank you. Becoming Bates, this is the only way. I really wish there was a better way of becoming Bates, and that really is a good way of doing that. Yeah, Bates is fun, but you can't be Bates if you want the good ending. There we go. And the problem with becoming Bates is you take damage to become Bates. Like, it is a thing that you need to do. Headshot! Zombie's not dead, and I get to heal. Do -do -do -do. Boo -do -do -do. Light on. We'll be doing a few other things here as well. Yeah, Bates gets to use a gun, because Gates is awesome. Okay, and another monster we need to kill. Boo -do -do -do. Uh, not in this room, the next one. Also, this guy's just gonna be here. He's just straight up chilling. He doesn't matter. He's, he's just chilling. Shoot. There we go. Not bad. And we now get to progress. The cool thing about Bates is it's way easier to get rid of enemies as Bates now, and they're permanently dead. So, whenever you're doing that, you wanna make sure that you're, like, playing as Bates to get rid of many of the enemies in the game. In fact, a lot of the routing here is to be based on our... Shotgun routing. Uh, hold on, what was the thing in? Right, it's locked. And you need to know it's locked for later. There we go. And investigate hand. We're getting the wire. That's right. Hey, Rotus! 13 months. Tier 1 for 13 months. Jesus Christ. Thank you for the tier 1 sub for 13 months, Rotus. Much appreciated. Um, if you play as base, you can accidentally get yourself killed. Like, certain enemies will kill you straight up if you're Bates. Like, pretty much, if you talk to any enemy in the game during cutscenes, you'll die. Because they do not like baits. They're cool with Alyssa, they do not like baits. Like, Maxwell will kill you, um, the weird, the creepy chick would kill you, you do not want to be baits in certain sections, you need to be Alyssa. And a lot of the game is the balance between the two. Anyway, now we get this, and we get the wire. And now we have the security key, which is nice. Not bad, and go back to the examination room. I don't think I've become uh, Alyssa once again, but yeah, you want to be very careful with the game when you're playing as Bates. Luckily, there's a lot of shotguns around, but we're doing good. Also, this is going to pretty good for a clock tower marathon so far. I'm not having any complaints. We're doing pretty well. Like, there's no run I feel actively bad in just yet. Luckily, I have my notes for this and remembered it from last time, but I'm a bit worried. Uh, because Bates is a dick. What do you mean? Bates is funny, but Bates is a total dick. There we go. Into the elevator. And get rid of this monster. Alright, come on. There we go. And we get the kill. Very nice. Very nice. That is also true. Hey, Bugs Bunny, how's it going? Yes, is the indeed the master baits. You're correct. Okay, um, kill exit hall. We're killing one more. Sweet, and we're getting another shotgun now that I exp uh, used all my shotgun ammo. Here we go. Not bad. And as well, I need the light on for two reasons. We're getting another shotgun here, and we're also going to be doing another thing as well, where I'm going to be getting um, the door open for what I need next. Anyway, there's my shotgun. I'm pretty sure the shotgun's also infinite, weirdly enough. Like, you can just get a lot, you get quite a lot here. Anyway, here we go. Luckily, a lot of the puzzles in the game you can do as Alyssa or Bates, while a lot of them will be exclusive to one or the other. Here we go. End of the room now, and if I fucked up in the earlier chapter, I would have lost here, but luckily I grabbed what I needed to. Uh, the way you lose is uh, you have a samurai statue fall on you if you never activated it, and it's the most back-ended thing in the world, and I loved it. Like, it's it's funny, but it's pretty terrible. <laughs> Alright, go left into the door of the wall. And we're going back to get the amulet, pretty much. 
Now, we're going back to that room so we may proceed to get the amulet once again. And don't worry, we can eliminate monsters both as Alyssa or Bates, so it's not going to be that bad. It's just a bit different eliminating as Alyssa. Not the end of the world, like right now we're going to become Alyssa once again. We're playing as Bates for a good chunk of time, but now I must become Alyssa again, and yes, to Alyssa. And we are going to be going back over here. There we are. And we're entering new rooms as well as we proceed to go. More and more doors are getting open as they get more keys, which is nice. And just got to make sure that certain enemies aren't going to uh, mess with you. Uh, in this room, I think there's going to be an enemy that may potentially try to kill me. Here we go. And with all the zombies in the game, again, we do not want them following us. You can't do anything. The only game that lets you do anything if a stalker is chasing you is Clock Tower 3. The rest of them are not that kind. Clock Tower 3 is one of the kindest ones. And Remothered sorta of kind, but not as kind as Clock Tower 3, that you can do it like right in front of them, which is kind of funny. And time for Pro Wrestling. As we use the chair to get rid of her. I mean, if it works, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Okay, and... Back to Monster Trigger. And we're going to be doing quite a lot here. I have to use a key that I will be able to benefit from later. Uh, now this is on. I can actually go here. And I want to say I talk to this shelf. I get a storage key in here. And then what do I do? I just leave the room. That's right. And we're going back to that weird girl room. I'm then going to be... Stashing the amulet once again, and we'll be going upstairs. There is an actually a upstairs area to this game, which don't worry, we'll be going up. But it's always weird managing that, just because of the dynamic of the game. Really enough, you don't really see Ghost Head get ran a lot. The only other person I know who actually runs it are Underwater Smoking and Paw, but Smoking just does the M ending, while Paw does the uh, this category. The problem I have with both PS1 and Ghost Head is that you need a Japanese PS2 to get um, a good time on it. If you don't have a Japanese PS2, you're not going to have a good time. Like, you'll have an okay time. God damn it! Wrong locker, I suppose. I didn't know there was a wrong locker I can choose. Sneaky motherfucker. I have never actually seen that before. Oh yeah, I guess there's many lockers here you can activate. I did not know you could do that. Alright, that's good now. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> Just like that. Alright, here we go. And now we go into the elevator and we become Bates. Oh, hold on. I need the elevator key. Uh, blue key card. You need keys for like everything in this game now, so it's very specific because you're in a lab and you need clearances. That would be funny. Honestly, though, I'm pretty sure this, um, hold on, where do I run to? Hold on, where'd I go again? Go. Oh, this one. There we go. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll activate baits. Is that the first clock tower? What, this one? No, this is Ghost Head. And Ghost Head is funny, but it's not the first one. Okay. Come on. There we go. And now we can go back to more hallways to kill more monsters. There's a lot of monsters I need to kill. They're very specific. But we'll see. Almost there, though. And right side. I'm pretty sure we're getting another monster that I need to kill. So I'm going to grab out my shotgun. Yeah. Boom. Okay, and where do I go again? Exorcist Hall. Come go right again. There we go. Perfect. And go on the computer. We have to do, again, over here with the computer. Sweet. 
I'm glad to hear. It's a great game. It's absolutely one of the greatest games ever released. I get a lighter. Sweet. Got the lighter, and then where do I go after this? I don't quite remember. A lot of this game is me forgetting where to go. Um, oh, right. I'm going to be killing yet another person with a fucking shotgun. Okay, and go all the way off the kill, go right into right door. I need a lighter out. But yeah, localization kind of everything messed up, unfortunately. Uh, this is Clock Tower 3, but also known as Clock Tower Ghost Head because it's more of a spin off. While Clock Tower 3 is Clock Tower 3, everyone knows that one. But Clock Tower 1 is SNES, while Clock Tower 2 is Clock Tower PS1. Uh, hold on, use our machine, go into the left white right door. Okay, but exit left side. Sweet. Alright, now I'm ready to go. Oh! I already did something I had to do. That's fine. Go all the way right. Hmm. Kill a guy and enter me right. Go down elevator. I think I already knew what I needed to do. Actually, hold on. I don't think I did that one yet. Give me a moment. I, I have one more bullet, right? Yeah, I, I need to kill one more guy. I almost forgot. Yeah, we'll do that one again. All the way right into this door, and there's gonna be a guy in here, I think, who I need to kill. Yeah, all right, good thing I remembered. Good thing I remembered I ran out of ammo, because that would have been bad if I did not kill him. Uh, that would have been really bad. Adrian, it's actually in California. It's in California. Phoenix Wright's California, to be exact. This is Clock Tower Ghost Head. It doesn't really have a number as much as it, uh... There we go. As much as anything else. Um, it's... Come on, and then back downstairs. Give me a moment. Down the elevator, and exits. Sweet. And we're going right. Clearly. But this game is... The localization got really weird where it took place in California. Um... Give me a moment about the clock towers. Let me just try to remember where I have to go, because it's a bit weird. Uh, last run hall. I always get confused by this area, but the clock tower chronologically is Norway, Norway, and England, um, California, or Japan, um, England, Italy, a boat, Italy. Okay, keep going. Don't want to talk to her yet. My nurse, go left into the first door, right here. Yep. In this game, it's all in California. There we go, back to the security office. In um, Japan, in Ghost Head, it's Japan. But in this game, it takes place in California. But the rest of the game depends. Go. Well, Alice itself is kind of weird because they also do the same thing where it's Japan, but then it's the United States. Like, I think Catherine's a good example. It takes place in Chicago. But it doesn't actually take place. I think it's Chicago. I came here but it's not actually Chicago. Sweet. And let us go. Alright, we gave back the amulet. We'll be good to go. And I had seen back my amulet. Which, again, the reason why I placed my amulet here. Also, by the way, uh, Kepkanchi, how's it going? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. Anyone who may have joined, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um... If you have any questions about the run, let me know. I'm trying my best to remember to go. But we're doing pretty solid. Turn the elevator. Oh, I don't have to push the... I don't have to use the key card anymore. That's kind of cool. We're back to Alyssa right now, by the way. No, no, not Spain. Okay, and we are getting closer to done. Go right. Oh, hold on. Go left. And we're using the lab key. This is also a section that you have to be... You have to be Alyssa. If you're Bates here, you will die. I mean, you'll still, you're still in danger as Alyssa, but you'll die as Bates. Like, you'll, the game will be over as Bates. Alright, here we go. He does try to kill you, but you just dodge it. Also, 300 IQ, check this out. Oh! 
Oh my god, what the, what the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? He spawned right next to me, man. Come on. Now I'm dead. Not fair. Not fair at all. That one. There we go. He's back. See, that's the distance he should be. And then also, the way to escape him is like this. Alright, he's gone. We beat him. He's done. He's over. No, you'll die. Pro like, Prophet Doom, you'll genuinely just die. You cannot do that as baits or else you lose the entire game. Like, you will get a game over. Like, and it won't even let you continue. It's a... You, hey, this is one of the endings. You get, like, C ending. Which is, you die to your dad. You need to be Alyssa. You're not gonna win against a giant sword. Hell, baits can't even be an 8-year-old girl half the time. Oh, come on! Well, it's not the end of the world. I already have the action done. Of course, if, no, I guess, I guess that doesn't work. There we go, better, way better, okay. Thank you for actually accepting the door this time. Let's try this out again. Okay, now she runs. Also, that freak mask guy is your dad. And then we hit her with a steel chair. It's like an office chair. I mean, I don't think I can do that much damage with an office chair. I'm not going to lie. Like, as much as I want to say I can do damage with an office chair, I don't think I really can. And then we leave, and... Not bad. Okay, let's continue moving. We need to leave the room, go right, and we're using the storage key now on this door. This door is locked. I don't think I'm going to worry too much about dying, but even then, dying gives you more stamina. Um, you st go right in this door? I don't remember what it is. I think this is it. Yeah, this is the room. Okay, we're good. Because we have a really weird dude in here. It's great. Alright, handcuff key on the guy. This guy just tied up in the corner here. He he's doing great. He's just tied up. Who's there? Here, here you go. You can be untied. You, you can have it. He helps you out for later. This is your actual dad, I think. And then we can I think ignore him. All right, we're doing good. And then I turn on the lights and we all go back. There's a lot that must be done here. This bookshelf. We must talk to it. Because then you get creepy dialogue with a creepy chick. Which is mandatory. Creepy dialogue, creepy chick. And then we go back towards the other room. The only downside about a lot of these games is the lack of music. Clock Tower 3 actually fixes that by far. Um, what door did I go to again? I don't remember. Uh, go right now. Go back to the elevator. Okay. Back to the elevator. I'm glad I have my notes. Like, this is the only game I really... I, Clock Tower 3, I don't think I need notes for anymore. I have them just in case, but I don't think I need them. And then, like, Haunts and Ground, I definitely don't need them. But I have all my splits just in case, so I can remember where to go. It's better to have and not need it than need and not have it, in my opinion. Okay, also, as well, we're going... Oh, hold on, can I just push the button again? Thank you. Just making sure I'm in the right room. Also, I need to actually heal up, so we're going right. And this is the exact same room as earlier. There's an infinite health kit, because they know the game's going to be absolute bullshit here. <laughs> so, you just got to make sure that you know where you're going, because there's an infinite health kit in one of the rooms coming up. Uh, it's the examination room from earlier, where we got the wire. If you don't know it, there's an infinite health kit in that room. Right here. Every time you search it, it's a health kit. Every time. And it never runs out. I don't know why it's there, but it's very generous for us. 
And now I can go back. You need that, by the way, because you need health. Okay, and then we want to go back. And we're going immediately back up the elevator, too, is the funniest part. Uh, we need the health, though, because that's to be good for us later. In theory, you can just keep eating deaths uh, if you really wanted to, but I feel like you'd lose more time doing that than just by going to get the health. So it's not too shabby. Okay, back up the elevator. We're going right again. And this time, we're going to be hitting the major speedrunning tech of this game. There is actually a really big section that is uh, the hardest trick by far. I'm not a fan of it personally. It's a very tough trick to do. And it is an absolute pain. Which you'll see in a moment. Oh, talk to him. And then he kicks us out because Maxwell comes in the room. Maxwell's the big guy with the sword who's the scissor man of the game. Like, the other bosses don't really inspire unless you count Stephanie. Your uncle's back, too, for some reason. And then we can investigate the desk. Alright, we need the desk key. There it is. The key to the desk. And then we get a special card key, which lets me out of the room. Twice. You need all your card keys here, by the way. It's so fucking dumb. I love it. You need this card key to get out. You need this card key for the elevator. The secret elevator, by the way. Not the normal elevator, but the... Oh, wait. No, sorry, the blue card key for this elevator. Because this is all the elevators in the game. We use the blue card key. There we go. And then we go up. What's it down? There we go. It's down. There we go. Down. And... Here it is, the hardest skip in the entire game. Uh, I missed it, that's fine. Right, I'm gonna keep eating desks because I'm my health. By the way, the zombie just like chokes you for some reason. Let's see how many deaths it takes me to get the skip. I missed it. That's fine. Here we go. The whole skip idea here is that you want to make sure that you ignore this guy. So the whole idea is to start here, make turns, then. I, I, oh, I missed. He kills me. Where's my beanie go? A hat. Yeah, how's it going, frog? This is going to be happening quite a lot. It is not easy to get in the slightest. Hey, there we go. Got it. See, there we go. It took me a few tries, but we did end up eventually getting it. Uh, it is not an easy skip by any means. But we can get rid of him pretty easily. Then I hide behind here. In the dark, you just you hide from him and it works. Are you kidding me? That's fine, just <sighs> not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. We can just go back into the room. Hey, the raid from Precious Roy. Okay, let's see if I die in this room and then do I get the thing. Thank you for the raid, by the way. Let's see, what was the raiding message? Uh, I can't believe I went too slow in this room. The game is pretty wonky at times. Why would you spawn him right next to me? What kind of weird bullshit is this? Mirror Solid, not bad. Guys, make sure you check out Roy. Very nice man. No some Mirror Solid. Are you kidding me? Right? Okay. Wow, that's some hot. That's some hot bullshit right there. Yeah, that's some absolutely hot bullshit. Okay. Okay. 
It's, it's a bit delayed, but we will be fine. I got very unlucky. Oh, yeah, I just die. Because you need to hide behind the table and didn't let me do that for some reason. So the way we're going to do that is like this. Come on, there he is. And then... I'll go back into the other room. Because it always throws you back into the previous room. That's the biggest issue. It'll throw you back into the previous room. But it helps me here. There we go. And then we are hidden. And we're good to go. Although, I'll be eating another death because at some point I do need to become baits. So, yeah. Uh, so, do expect me to be eating another death very soon, in fact. Unless I get health. Which, I wish I had more health, but not the end of the world. It's okay, I can eat a death. All right. Eat a death, and we're becoming baits afterward. And we're killing all the zombies. That's the general idea that I need to do here. We're just murdering all of them. It's necessary. There we go. The only way to become baits is you need to be in a fight. If you're not in a fight, you don't become baits, and you don't get access to the gun. If you get access to the gun and become baits, you're good to go, but without it, yeah, a bit tough. And the thing is, you need to be baits in order to get rid of a lot of the monsters here. It's absolutely necessary. There we go. And over here. And I'll be killing the guy that killed us two times as well, so I get my little bit of revenge. Sweet. And then we're good to go. And hold on. Turn back to the room and come on Lissa. Okay. Listen to my instructions here. Oh right, I remember now. Uh this is gonna be a weird combination of things happening here. And this is also necessary. Also, yeah, let's uh, grab the amulet. We'll put down the amulet once again. Because a lot of the Alyssa inter and Bates interactions are really, really specific and kind of stupid. But we'll see how that goes. And let's just exit left and talk to Weird Girl. Okay, time for the Weird Girl to find us once again. She's right here. And in this one, you actually need to talk to her as Alyssa, but then become Bates. It's a really weird mechanic, but becoming Bates is really easy once you get the hang of it. We got that, and now we got the cleaver. Bates is the only one who is able to do that. I did say I was getting very hot, yes. The beanie was extremely hot, so I took it off. I'm not going to overheat in my room for fashion. Thank you, Tumultinus. How are you doing today? It's always good to see you. Right, we get the key, and then, um, yeah, I get the... I get the angle back. The amulet and yes sweet let's go back i'm not a bully you're a bully and now we can leave the room too which is even better we got everything we needed and now we're ending the final split of the game overall not too bad i might even pb this in a weird sort of way oh right hold on wrong door also, we could ignore this guy entirely. He's here, and he'll give you another ending if you talk to him, but we don't want to do that, because it's a bad ending. But now we get the graveyard, which is this section coming up. Which brings us to, take a wild guess, a graveyard. No, overheating for fashion is bad. It's uncomfortable. Comfort is king. Uncle Phil. And there we go. We got Philip, and I uh, talked to him twice, I think. Yeah, I talked to him twice. We did that right. But you know we had to do it to him. Beauty is pain? I don't want to be in pain. I don't want to be beautiful. There we go. Uncle Phil is now dead. He will now live forever in pillowy mounds of mashed potatoes. And now we can go back to the main hallways. Thank you, Zoku. See, I don't need to be painful to be beautiful. It works. 
Sweet. And then I immediately could use this door right here. Here we go. And let me in. Thank you. And there is feet in this room. I'm dropping my amulet here because this is where a lot of the game will happen. Right over here. As well as an AK over here that we're going to need for later. Exactly. Hot head is bad. Now where the beanie is hot. And leave the room. I'm probably going to eat another death, which is fine. I, I'll definitely eat another, another death. But we'll be okay. Go left. We're hitting the end game though. We're very close. Oh, right. Hold on. I hope I didn't mess up. I really hope I did not mess up. Oh, I, I not, right, we're good. I know where to go. Where's the mass killer? We've juked him for most of the run, Neon. He's not going to be showing up that much, given that's a speed run. I mean, he could, but, I mean, it's not very safe. We'll see him near the end of the run, but for right now, unless I really mess up, he won't be showing up that often. Although, we'll get a zombie who's about to kill me, but that's fine. Oh. That works. Hold on, am I supposed to come Bates or no? I don't remember. Green car, I said... Me, left, feet, leave room. Left and inner door and wall. Oh. Yeah, alright. I need to make sure becoming Bates is a smart idea. Alright, come on. Because I don't remember what sections I need to be Bates and what sections I don't. But we will see. We can shotgun the guy in a bit too, it just this one's kinda awkward to do so. Worst case scenario, I know there's another bait section, but I just need to be careful. Alright, and There we go. Go back to the left door, back down. Oh, come on. There we go. Other room. And there's gonna be a statue and open the Oh right, key card. You need to use the key card every time to get in this room and it's stupid. It's so stupid for this room. But how how are you doing by the way, Neon? Hope you're having a great day. And okay. Now I get a scientist to escort me where I need to be. Hopefully if I did everything right. Hopefully. Big hopefully. Yeah, there he is. Talk to him. You need to be Bates for this to work. Sweet. And then downstairs, we're getting the shotgun out again, and then I'll be getting one more gun, because that's also going to be necessary. It's pretty funny how it all works. And... Okay. Talk to sign. They call monster back upstairs. The amulet, and we're getting another thing. Upstairs. I'm gonna make it a long way because it'll be easier for me, I think. I just don't want to become Bates again. I don't want to keep dying. But now, instead of that, I will actually get a machine gun. So I had the shotgun before. Now we're getting a machine gun, which is all the more powerful as a weapon. Which you'll see in a moment how powerful this really becomes. It's right over here. There's just a, a submachine gun here. With 20 bullets. 20 whole bullets. And we're almost done with the entire run, by the way. Uh, this will be the last monster kill. And then it's all cutscenes from there on out. And panic events. Again, as always, a lot of the Clock Tower games end on a panic event, this game included. The only one that really doesn't is... The other ones, but they end on, like, a weird exit. I think Clock Tower 3 has a pretty cinematic ending, but eh. There we go. And we're about to get the kill. Right here. Oh, right. I remember now. I remember now. I can't actually do that unless you're Alyssa. The game won't let you. That's why I needed the amulet. That's why I wrote that down in my notes. That's why I... Oh, my God. Game, why are you so specific? That's the biggest crime of this game. It's way too specific. Like, everything you need to do is like, oh, do it just like this or it's not going to work. 
Eh, not bad so far. And then we get the amulets, which is right here. Take the amulet, yes, and then, hold on, um, drop again after. There we go. So I will have to eat another game over, but you know what, we're almost done with the run. Yeah, I probably will put back on the beanie, I like the look of it. The beanie is a nice look. I could open a window in theory, I haven't really opened a window. I normally don't because it's loud outside, but today's a Monday, so it's not going to be overtly loud outside now I think about it. It's weird streaming on a Monday afternoon. I like this quite a lot. It's very nice. Very pleasant to stream on a Monday afternoon. Anyway, it's about three hours to beat three games. Not too shabby. And... There we go. And we are almost out of here. There's the cutscene I get. Uh, the creepy chick kills herself. And we can see it going. True. True. Yeah, she's just dead now. Which is why you need to be Alyssa. Uh, I'm going to get one more guy coming up. Right over here. And I'm going to want her to kill me. I, I could just open up the window while it's opening. Yeah, let's do that. Go ahead and kill me. Sweet. Window is not open. You wondering why I have to do that is because uh, I need to become Bates. Which, becoming Bates requires me to... What? What are you doing? Becoming Bates does require me to get into a fight, as always. But now we're Bates, and we can continue forward. And now you use the submachine gun, the greatest weapon of mankind. I didn't ask you to exit Bates, what the hell? Screw it, we'll do it in this room. Alright, Bates, get the machine gun out. We have 20 bullets exactly. No, don't run into her! Twenty bullets exactly, see? You gonna do that twenty why is this weapon so busted? I have no clue. It's ridiculously powerful. There's no reason why the machine gun should be that powerful, but it just sort of is. Anyway, right now this run's looking like a 115, maybe? It's 113 right now. And we'll see in total what it becomes. Alright, and I have to get back the amulet, and then we're hitting the end game. We're hitting the final cutscenes, and we'll get to watch the movie. If you're in the story, um, Bates is bad. And a ghost, and there's the Barrows curse. The, sorry, the Maxwell curse in this game, because they didn't even change it to Barrows. But it's all based on the demon idol messing everything up. Also, the zombies are like a weird virus. Like... It's an infection or something that gets in your brain. It's a brain infection, and that's why people become zombies and bleed yellow blood. I don't know how having an infection in your brain gives you yellow blood, but I, I'm just calling it as I see it. Anyway, for the end game, there's going to be a few little cutscenes, but it, both of them will have panic events. Go. Uh, they're pretty easy panic events, though. It's literally just mash buttons when you need to. That's it. A lot of other games have like, oh, you need to do thing, like in Clock Tower PS1, you have to have the dagger out, and um, SNES didn't have it, but in this game, essentially, but somehow worse. Anyway, we are hitting the finale of the game right over here. Here we go. The final door. Where we get Ghost Ted. Nope, it's a different Alyssa entirely. Your wealthy family. Everyone must die. You're going crazy. Talking to you won't do any good. Sorry, how rude of me to forget. Since I was the one who made you crazy. Father? Ah, yes, Teddy, Alyssa. you're Ghost Ted. You're... You're not my daughter. What a twist! The daughter of George Maxwell. Yeah. I was jealous of this man. So to make him fall, I dug you up from the Maxwell's grave. What are you talking about? Right, Adrian? Father, I, d 
I don't understand. You were the cursed child of the Maxwell family. The daughter with the cruel alter ego. The cursed daughter born into the Maxwell family every few generations. It happens. Hey, Void, how's it going? Poor Alyssa, she seems so sad. Everyone must die. Panic Man, by the way. That's not the last Panic Man, by the way. That's the first one. There's two of them. Hope you're doing good. I loved you as if you were my own daughter. This is all you need to know about the entire game. I never thought of you as a tool to harm anyone. You have actual knees in this game now. So I infected the statue with bacteria. To make him go crazy. It's a bacterial infection. Father! Goodbye, Alyssa. Hurry and leave. This building is going to blow up. <laughs> what a fucking ending. Wait, Father. And then... Everyone must die. You're not my father. There we go. Lie down. That is Clock Tower Ghost Head. Watch the ending, by the way. And actually, I'll watch the ending while I set up the uh, Clock Tower 3. I have no clue, Bob. I really have no clue. How am I hair sticking out of this? Oh, wait. Hold on. It's what's here. Give me a moment. Um, there we go. That's what's there. I forget. It's what's on the saving data. It's just one last action. I don't know why it doesn't. Oh, there's no ending movie. Why? I don't know. There we go. Now I look like a punk. Ghost Ted. It may as well be. Okay. Look at I'm gonna go pee again. I'll get him with this. Do you know what you're doing? Digging up the Maxwell grave? You think the curse is real? It's it's pure absurdity. The curse of the Maxwells is just an old wives' tale. It's hard, isn't it? They did it to themselves. Everyone's didn't dead, they? and it's all my fault. Maybe so. It would have been better if I had died. I'm not going to die. It's not that you've died there once already, you know. Well, I guess I've got to get rid of those zombies. It's not going to be easy. Wait, assistant detective. Hey, Crispy Cream, how's it going, man? Good to see you again. I got a face. Who the fuck messaged me on Facebook? Oh, it's not muted. You're right. It's a good song. 
I'll enjoy what I set the next game. Sweet. All right, looking at so far. But yeah, that was a that was a fun one. I enjoyed this uh, as so far. And then we'll be doing Clock Tower Three. So I'm excited. I'm excited for everything coming up. I think we'll be nice and good. Mm hmm. I know this is PR. Also, really fucking long credits, by the way. I don't quite know why. The credits are very, very long. Ooh, spooky. But it's an absolute banger of a song. Yeah, we're hitting that one next. A few more things we gotta do. And it works while I play at the ending credits. Do, do. I love I love that bass line, man. Alright, and sweet. They're ready. The Hobbit have one? For what? Audio oh audiobook. Uh but I don't know. Oh, I should get more water. Yeah, I'm gonna get water. We'll be right back. We'll be. I'm gonna grab water while it's, that's a long credit sequence.
Wait. Alright, I think we're about ready to go. Let me just uh, get my instructions ready. Just in case, I'd rather have it not need it than need not have it, right? Anyway, let's close this. And... Where is my Sega? Hey, how's it going? I'm testing this out now. My dad told me I look like Double D. I like Double D. It was a cool character. I hear it. That's good. So it's just my Super Famicom. Yeah, we're about halfway through the marathon right now, and we'll be watching the uh, cutscene. I think after this game, it'll be roughly, like, about halfway through this will be roughly the half point. So at that point, after this game, you get to watch any pop torts on stream. Remind me of Eddie? I'd believe it. No, not Double DD. Sounds like a good time, though, Kitty Wolf. And you're watching the intro, because I'm doing it for all the games. I mean, how often do you see these games, right? And for chats, for those of you guys here, I'll let you I'll let you have one. We'll get to watch one. Which terrible cutscene do you want to watch? I'll go through the theater, you can pick one terrible cutscene. One. Before we begin. Oh, I don't need these on. The acid bath? You'd have to remind me which one that is again, because I remember all the cutscenes I've ever had. I remember the ones I liked. Just remind me which is the name of it, and then we get Double Dennis? I, I, I know that, that's a good one. Not the remind me about the acid bath. Crackhead Ron rolling is funny. For bedroom? So Crackhead Ron. Look, a clock tower! Three! Gotcha. I right, can do that one. Let's see if I have... I should be Corroder's intro. It should be Corroder's intro, that is. Also, sound should be good to my knowledge. I heard on my phone it wasn't bad. Okay, let's see... No, this game is... Depends on your opinion, honestly. I don't think it's better, but a lot of people do. Mm. It's this one. Here's the acid bath. We're on Ghost Head Swap. Game Swap Ghost Head. I stole the Game Swap. Did she really say dicky eyes? You just concentrate on your work. She dead ass said dicky eyes. What is it you're making this time? Some new toy that'll have the local kids a gog on pet. Actually, I've been busy making this. Oh, the shawl. Oh, but what's this? Winter's coming, and I don't want you catching cold, wandering around outside. 
I've been making this in my spare time. How is it warm enough? No. It's lovely. So warm and soft. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Enough play, Abby Family. You make me sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's just beating up an old woman. And kidnapping an old woman. The acid bath. He is. He really is. How's it going, Nicholas? Hope you having a great day. He, I know he's continuing the laughing. Okay, you know this one's gonna be on me because I really want to see it again. We're watching one more because I really want to see one more shitty cutscene. One more shitty cutscene because I really want to see it. You guys already know which one's gonna be. No, not Chopper. Not Linda. It's um. We're watching the Scissor Family. Yeah, we're watching this one. <laughs> if you guys don't know this one, this should be a good indication of what Clock Tide 3 is as well. <laughs> this game is a massive what the fuck. You get two. This one's on me. Well, laughter from characters are on Alyssa. Right? But the best part has to be this. I just love this. Um, they added propellers to it. was just a dress rehearsal. Now let the show begin. Lights, camera, action! They have the decoy, Dennis. I, I'll forever love the phrase decoy Dennis. It's the decoy Dennis. They whipped him out. give us your beating heart, or else Dennis is going to be sliced and diced. Sliced and diced. Well, at least Dennis is brave in the face of fear. Oh, right. It's fucking great. Like, of all the things I can do in this fucking game. Denny. That isn't like so much of an answer. They probably would have done it either way. The more you think about it, they probably would have killed Dennis either way. Anyway, enough of bullying Dennis. Let's... Oh, that would have been bad. Very bad, Zoku. Very bad. Either very bad or very sad. Very bad, so die. Very... This game has some issues, but ultimately I'm warming up to it. I am warming up to this game a bit more. I still think I like Ghost Head a bit more because Ghost Head's a very, very bad kind of cheesy. But as a speedrun, this is definitely better. Anyway, three, two, one, go. Alright, time to party. It's definitely an enjoyable game. Like, I give it more credit than I have been giving it. It's definitely an enjoyable game is the thing. Yeah, he survives, don't worry. He makes it. He does make it. But now, this is the game I practiced the most recently, so this should be the most fresh in my mind, barring Clock Tower SNES, obviously. As I really do love... Like, if you guys know anything about my stream, you know I love Clock Tower SNES. What are our worries if he survives? Can you imagine the power Dennis has if he manages to survive that? There we 
go. All right, now I'm remembering this game. I'm worried about Nightcry, actually. Nightcry I've not done in a while. I'm worried about that one. Nightcry's gonna be good, though. Nightcry will be very good. Like, that's probably gonna be the funniest one. But we'll see how that goes. And inside. I might be able to get a better time in this. We'll see. Nightcry all deaths would be funny. Time to crawl. It is time to crawl. Well, I don't know why they added this in. Death percent would be fucking brutal, though. I would not want to do that. It would be funny, but very brutal. Luckily, we do get to watch one death, like, fully, because you have to watch it. Alright, then we get the notes. A lot of notes in this game that we're going to ignore. I'm mostly worried about the intro of this game, but luck luckily, Clock Tower 3 is very generous on checkpoints. The most cruel game will be um, Haunting Ground, because there's not really any checkpoints. Well, this game does give you pretty nice checkpoints. As well, even Ghost Head will give you checkpoints. There we go. Yeah, we just finished up. We're just now entering Clock Tower 3. It just started. Yo. I'm doing pretty good. I'm going to use my instructions just yet, so I feel pretty confident in my gameplay. Okay, and there's like two cutscenes I need to skip. But the, the loads in this game are pretty brutal, like just saying. The loads have to be one of the worst parts about this entire game, in my opinion. Like, it is an abysmal load time. It's very unfortunate. Anyway, on the upside, I just get to go back here. And then we are good. And let's now go for Sledgehammer. I will never get over the fact that they named the guy fucking Sledgehammer. Like, at least in Clock Tower 2, they have a reason for calling him the Scissor Man. It's because it's sensationalist media calling him the Scissor Man. In fact, characters uh, acknowledge, hey, that's a fucking dumb name to name after a serial killer. It's very tacky, too. But then it's like, there's a lot of tacky stuff in that game. And this game, on the other hand, isn't really related to, as in, like... It's kind of related how Ghost Head was related, which is not really. The extreme loose end of it is the Barros family is the same, but different. It's supposed to be, oh, it's very loosely related to the Barros family. Which, that's where they decided to make the thing that was the massive connection. There are scissor people in this game on the upside, but, yeah. Yeah, we're on the... The lab is the longest part. I don't know why either, but in a lot of the Clock Tower games, the final level will normally be the longest. This is actually an exception. Uh, the PS2 games are a bit nice. Because they are long, yes, but all it's an extremely front-ended. Like, this longest section of the game is arguably Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer is one of the longest, Corroder is pretty long. And then the more you get into the game, the shorter it gets. Like, it's not an overtly long game, in all honesty. Go. Like, I mean, there's obviously some lengthy parts of the game. Like, the castle's kind of long, but that's an end game area, and it's really not that long when you get the hang of it. Initially, it's kind of long, but when you get the hang of it, no, nah, not at all. Also, ghost dodge? Yeah, dodge the ghost. Dodging the ghost is important there. Luckily, again, if I will continue. No, no resets. Uh, if I die, I die. It's okay. I can reset it on this game. Haunting Ground is the only one I'm mildly worried about, but I'm playing New Game Plus for that one because I only play New Game Plus for Haunting Ground. I do not do New Game. It is fucking painful to do New Game in that game. In this game, New Game is fun. And Haunting Ground? No, not really. There we go. Thank you for letting me in. Took me long enough. And now we're going to get introduced to Sledgehammer. You guys like Sledgehammer? Uh, I think they should do a uh, Haunting Ground remaster for anything. Like, Haunting Ground needs a remastering. In this game, I mean, it would be okay, but I don't think it's as neat as Haunting Ground, in my opinion. Oh, I'm also biased. There you go. I mean, at the very least, the run's going well so far, and I'm remembering where to go. I think that's the most important part of the game. I got pretty solid this game. I'm currently in ninth place. I want to move up. I can definitely move up, though. We'll see. And there we go. And nice. I can't remember a lot of my time save is, it might be the fights, but we'll see. Chopper is long because he's two parts, but even then, if you only, like, I count him as two different choppers, but I'd say Sledgehammer is by far the longest for what he actually is. Because Sledgehammer is like 20 minutes. Like, the other bosses in the game are usually like, oh, they get two levels later. Sledgehammer doesn't have two levels. They just make him extremely long for whatever fucking reason. And I don't quite know why. 
Ah, uh, yes, Wildfire, there you go. Also, Mr. USB, hope you're having a great day today. It's good to see you, my man. Okay, and we get the key. A lot of the game is pretty straightforward to play, and this is the first of the 3D clock tower. I guess really major non-point and click clock tires are just full 3D movement. Well, yeah, they can absolutely do that. Like, that's absolutely doable, and they really should. So, how does Clock Tower 3 work in comparison to the other ones? Well, new mechanics. Um, now enemies will attack you nearby, and you introduced to a different panic system. In the older games, like uh, up to Ghost Head, the panic system worked in a way that whenever you encountered enemies, your health would go down. And it was always like a static thing, like, oh, eventually you'll lose the fight, which is okay. In this game, you have an actual bar, and panic comes from attacks that are nearby you. So it makes a bit more sense that, hey, even if you get attacked, even if you get hit, it's not the end of the world, you're, you'll just increase in panic. The thing is, when you hit max panic, what's going to happen instead of a immediate death, you'll get into panic mode, which allows you kind of to have a final last resort. The problem is, though, it wasn't really refined in Clock Tower 3. And the one thing I really don't like about this game is the panic system. I think other games do it well, this one does not. Ghost Head have arguably the most balanced one. Clock Tower SNES's doesn't mean shit. Um, Clock Tower PS1's is definitely the, like one of the more generous ones you can mash. While Haunts of Ground arguably did the panic system the absolute best. Uh, later on, we'll have Nightcry and Remothered, which they don't really have panic systems. Um, Nightcry does, but Remothered has more of a stamina system uh, as instead, and stamina is be the major thing. Obviously, the game will get harder uh, based on your stamina, but it's not a panic system, so to speak. It's absolutely stamina. Anyway, now we're going to the piano room. He's teleporting away. We'll be fine. He's not going to do anything to us. Did I change the name of the game? I did not. God damn it. Change it. Thank God this game has long loads. Can't believe I forgot to change it. <laughs> so remind me. Alright, so are any other mods. Remind me at the end of each game. I need to change the title. There you go. Where is the alien isolation engine? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, it's a fun game. I do really enjoy it. The only problem, though, is the alien isolation. It hurts my hands. I only do it every now and again. I would love to learn the major categories, but it's really a long, long game. And for long games, I want to kind of dip my toes into the evil then. But then after that, we can tie it out. Also, I forgot to split. That's fine. Not the end of the world. Do it again. You can change it? I guess you could. It's not just the name of the game. Like, Content Ground, Clock Tower 3, um, Night Cry, and then Remothered. Also, do not hit me, please. I'm a bit worried about this upcoming part. Um, it's definitely a bit risky with everything. Do not be in front of me, please. Do not. All right, we're good. And it would be funny, Anthal. It would be nice. Although, it'd be fair, though. I mean, the, the PS1 games didn't age the best. I think, at least as a game, this game's all right. But I think they do a lot wrong. But it paves the way for Haunting Ground, which I think is the best part. All oh, right, of course. Intuitive. Oh yeah, I suppose you could. Well, the title is fine. It's the, the category I need, specifically. I haven't changed it. It's not that long. I just, especially with these games, I did during a load. Yeah, that's a major opinion. I respect this game now because without it, like the basis of Haunting Ground would not be there. And Haunting Ground is arguably the best of all of the Clock Tower games. Unless you count Remothered, but Remothered still is below Haunting Ground, in my opinion. I think it has potential, but it's still ranked below Haunting Ground. This game is pretty rough, but it does a lot of things right. Oh. We'll have to see then. Maybe. Potentially, so potentially. I don't know. Move is doing pretty well. We're about to hit a little scare cutscene. Wow, what the hell? That's new. Huh. I didn't know I could do that. I didn't know I could do that. Huh. I actually didn't know that. How's it going, Bachman? Good to see you. How's it work going? Hope you're having a good time. I actually... Yeah, I'm wearing a beanie today. He'll be uh, telling me to wear a beanie. I like it, actually. 
Marathon's doing good. Uh, a lot of good runs. I may have EB's ghost out. I actually need to check. I got about an hour. Um, I have to time that. Looks like an hour 12, maybe? From the look of it. I don't know the exact time I got ghost out, but it's about an hour 12. Oh, God. There we go. I'm getting a lot better at my movement in this game, which is an upside. I'm glad to hear you back from work. The marathon's going pretty damn well. I'm having a good time with it, and... Time for the cutscene. Oh, my doggies are barking. My poor dog. I hear them outside. And water. Oh, God. Now it's all the dogs are barking. All the dogs are barking. Not just mine. The other dogs. I hate fire trucks, man. Fire trucks suck. If only they stop dying. It's unfortunate. <sighs> yeah, I hear the fire trucks. God damn it. You know what? I'll just accept it. I wonder what happened. Yeah, I'd probably be beating Ghost Head, actually, now I think about it. My PV was kind of bad, but that might be better. I might have been. I, I died quite a lot in Ghost Head, but we'll have to see. Either way, this run's going well. Yeah, that's what that's what all about, though. As long, oh, wait, wrong way. As long as you're having a good time, the run is good. Alright, let's say the dogs stops. It's not too bad. But... I just realized I, I'm in, I'm embracing the long hair beanie look now. I own a lot of beanies. I may as well get use out of them, right? Also, fun fact of this hallway: you need to stay on the left side. If you're on the right side, you'll die. Tape. Very important. I'm enjoying the beanie. I'm definitely enjoying it. And it makes it like less. Uh, I can keep my long hair without having to worry about like having the really like weird bowl cut thing that happens near the end of it. Okay. Am I gonna get panic? I hope I don't do not panic. Do not. Motherfucker, you panic me. That's fine. You don't chase me into here, but uh, panic's really bad. No, I don't have the map. There we go. That's fair. That's the way to get rid of the panic animation. Yeah, I hate the panic animation because she runs like a fucking angry duck chasing an angrier piece of bread. And I don't quite understand why. Alright, also RNG section. It requires you to run across this. Two is considered good, but you can get one. I've gotten one before. There's one. Oh, hey, she did PP then. Sweet. Likely gonna be a two. Uh, maybe a three? A three is bad, but I mean, eh. A one would be perfect. I, I think you get zero, actually. I don't quite know. All right, I got a two. Two is fine. On the way back, let's see what also I get. On the way back, what do I get? Three, four, five. No. Yeah, Brazilian Ghost is time for snippety snap. The cool part of this game, by the way, is a lot of like, oh, when are you? Oh my god, are you kidding me? A lot of oh, when are you doing such and such game in chronological order? Of release. So, like, a lot of people were asking about Nightcry, actually. That's... Oh, my God. That was terrible. That was bad. That's near the end. That's, like, the second to last game. Which well, nothing wrong with that. I, I'm just doing it there because that's the literally when it came out. And it makes sense. Nightcry is actually the one I'm most worried about because I don't remember the route super well. But I should be fine. Alright, I didn't get hit. That's good. Getting hit there is really unfortunate. It can happen. But you do gotta be worried. I gotta keep moving. And then... We're leaving the piano concert hall. Also, if you guys are wondering why a lot of people tend to like Clock Tower 3, maybe you're new here, maybe you don't know anything about the Clock Tower series and just stumbled in from some random direction. A lot of people know Night Cry of Fear. Oh god, no. A lot of people who watch me obviously know I do horror games, and Clock Tower games especially, but maybe you're new here, maybe you came from an auto host, maybe you just wandered in somehow. Uh, just a brief introduction about, about me and the game. My name is Nick Dice, I do a lot of horror games and horror game speedruns. Uh, one of my favorite ones is the Clock Tower series, which I'm currently doing a marathon of all the games. Uh, this is Clock Tower 3, which came out on the PS2 and kind of revived the series in a way. Um, the whole thing with this is it, uh, this came out when Capcom took over the series for a bit. Capcom, I don't think, currently owns the series, as far as I know, but they used to. And the mechanics are the same. You have stalkers. You must solve puzzles. Um, you'll get chased by a variety of different people. We do have scissor men, or scissor people, coming up. 
coming up later. But the thing about this game that honestly originally I wasn't a fan of and now I think it's kind of tongue in cheek is going to be um, the way boss fights are dealt with. Come on. So there are boss fights in this game. Which. A lot of the games have boss fights, don't be wrong. And, like, for example, uh, butterflies will stop you if you run into them. They're kind of a luminescence doing the haunting ground. It's a summer mechanic. You don't want to hit them because they will pause you and killers can catch up to you, which you do not want. However, the weird part about this fucking game, which you'll see in a moment, is going to be arrows. So in Clock Tower, SNES, for example, there's boss fights, yes, but they're panic events, and it's Jennifer, you know, reasonably fighting a boss. You know, she's um, tripping on kerosene, she's running away, oh, kerosene, she's running away, she's bumping into a doll and just surviving. It, for her, it makes sense in her fights. Now, Alyssa is full-blown magical girl mode. There's two forms of this game. Um, there's the killer stalker who's chasing you, and then normally you need to get a memory back to um, judge the killer. It's judgment. Which you'll see coming up in a moment here. And the judgment section, as we can see, will be a boss fight. And the boss fight's gonna be a bit rough. Well, I mean, it's kind of fun to play, but I'll let it speak for itself. Ah, yes, skeptical. It is absolutely ay 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 I'll be absolutely that. And I'll let it speak for itself because we are almost on the Sledgehammer boss fight. By the way, the first enemy of the game, his name is Sledgehammer. Get it? Get it? His name is Sledgehammer. Get it? Oh, Nightcry is terrible, but I enjoy it. For the Vita, I don't know. I know, I think Paw may have done that, but I have not done that personally for the Vita. I don't own a Vita. If I did, I would have, but I don't own a Vita, unfortunately. Anyway, keep going to the concert hall. We're going to get back the watch, and then... Here we go. Here's what it means, Garfield. We're going to have the boss fight Judgment. Boss battles. They exist in this game. And... The boss fight is going to be a magical girl fight, which you'll see momentarily. We did, Yorisha, we did. Here's the Ayaya coming up right now. It is Judgment. One, two, three, four. I'll need a hit. One, two, three, four. One. And you keep firing arrows at him. One, two, three. Two. And you just keep doing this, and then at some point, we're getting into something really fucky. Come on. Keep going. Here we go. It's the Spirit Bomb, baby. It is Sailor Moon plus Dragon Ball Z plus a... Uh, what was the thing people always said? Bleach? There it is. I do have a Stockholm Syndrome Wildfire, I do. And then he's dead. And then he dies. But yeah, that was about like a 17 minute section. I'm enjoying the game a lot more than I used to at the very least. But I still do have issues with this game. Mainly, I mean, it reminds me a lot of Fatal Frames movement, but the combat's pretty rough. I think the panic system could be a lot better in this game. That also has to be one of my biggest gripes. I think it's the panic system. Like, I can get over the movement. The boss fights are kind of fun to get the hang of it. But the final boss is pretty fucking dumb. And then... Oh, yeah. This hero, evil spirit bomb is great. But my issue has to be the fact that you have the, um... Really unfortunate sections in general. Okay. No, not save game data. Continue that saving. There we go. There's also that weird dentist cutscene that's entirely wacky. Hey, we got Dick's room key. We're gonna be slinging Dick. Alright, let's go back. 
If it wasn't directed by... Was it? Was it directed by a movie director? I don't even know if it was. I don't claim to ever know much about Clock Tower 3. I know basics of it, but I don't know a lot. Just because I was never really into this game, unfortunately. No, don't look at that. There we go. You had to look at the note. A lot of the puzzles in a lot of the Clock Tower games require you to have the knowledge before doing something, unfortunately. Haunting Ground's not like that. They'll let you do whatever you want. If you know the answer, just fucking go for it. In this game, however, you need to have knowledge. It kind of sucks. A lot of the other games have that, but I think that was one of Haunting Ground's major upsides to me. The fact that, oh, alright, I know the answer. I'm good. That's fucking hilarious. I don't know what it would have been like. I really don't know. It's hard to say. And up. By the way, so far we're doing pretty good in the run. I mean, I have no complaints. I've been moving well. Neuro speed run. It's a great game to speedrun in all honesty. I know I enjoy it. And I'm doing New Game Plus because Haunting Ground ending New Game is a fucking slog. New Game Plus is good. New Game and Haunting Ground is the only game I refuse New Game on. Like, it is so painful. I don't like it. The reason why is because, one, the RNG is somehow worse. Um, two, you don't get uh, stamina which and um, means of escaping things, which is very unfortunate. Like, some of the escapes in Haunting Ground are really tedious to do. There we go. Right. Left, left, right, right, right. And one more right. Then the wacky puzzle. And... The longest loading screen ever has to be one of my major graphs of this game. <laughs> They're so fucking long. And there we go. We're in the mansion. We're out of the mansion. We're doing good. Sweet. Runners are out of the dominant. Oh, it is actively worse, Skeptical. It's actively worse, actually. It's the worst weapon in the game by far. It's kind of funny, but it's really bad. Really? I like Battle Royale. It's a great book and movie. I don't actually. I don't really watch the entire movie. I read the book. I need to read the manga at some point. There we go. Worse than the whip? No, the gun is amazing. The whip is absolutely terrible. The gun, really good. The whip, really bad. Hmm. Gotcha. The book is really good. I can't recommend Valerie out the book enough. Now, I think they actually tried... I think a Clock Tower movie was in development for a while, but I don't know who was on it. It's unfortunate. I mean, it could be cool, but I don't really see it being too good. Some of the changes don't make sense. What did they change? Like, I loved the book. I loved the book quite a lot. It was really fucking good to me. It was quite literally ahead of its time, which is unfortunate when you think about it. Alright, and... And now we go up the stairs. You got a Blu-ray of Battle Royale. Nice. Not bad at all, Celestial. I'll give that props. You got a lot of props. It's a really fun book. It's a really fun movie. I've seen parts of the second one, really enough. And, yes. No, not E. God damn it. My inputs drop half the time in this game. It's really bad. Cameras are still as low as I've been building. That's funny. I guess it makes sense. Did it inspire Danganronpa? I guess it makes sense, Elvis. I guess that would make sense if it did. Oh, there's a ghost right there. Oh, thank you, ghost. Get out of the way. Piss off, ghost. Thank you, ghost. But yes, yeah, so overall, this one's going to be good as well. Battle Royale inspired Lord of the... Then Lord of the Flies come out before that? I could be wrong, but I could have sworn but, um, Lord of the Flies is an older book. Now, I want to say, I never read Lord of, the Fry, uh, Lord of the Flies. I never had to read that in high school. I read different books. I read the fucking Pearl. You know how badly the Pearl sucked? A lot. Hated the Pearl, dude. It was fucking awful. I read Old Man in the Sea. Also pretty... Eh. I don't like the Old Man in the Sea. 
Old man in the sea can be defined as there's an old man, there's a sea, there's a fish, he loses the fish, and then it's a Jesus allegory where he just carries it back like because he's a diseased fucking old man. It's the absolute worth measuring of the dick measuring contest. Imagine like you had a fucking seven year old who still wanted to kick ass. He tries it, he actively loses, but he carries back his failure because he wants to brag to the young children who can do his job. And that's the old man in the sea. He does not catch the fish. He actively loses the fish. Moby Dick does it better, I'll say that much. I mean, then Moby Dick has different meanings, but they both are about fish, I suppose. Really enough, I do know a decent amount about books, I just don't always talk about it. Lord of the Fries would be funny, I don't know why I thought fries. I'm hungry, man, give me credit. Yeah, give me some credit here, I'm hungry. I forgot to split, by the way, that's fine. He catches the fish, and then he gets eaten by sharks, and he doesn't catch the fish anymore. So he does not catch the fish. He loses it. Oh, I have a Pop-Tart next to me. I'm, I'm saving that for um, the end of this run. I also have some chips to tide me over. There we go. What's wrong with the streamer and Pop-Tart? It was available, it was there, and it wasn't, like anything else. It's cherry. I'm not the biggest fan of cherry, but I'm not gonna fucking, like, uh, oh, it's cherry. I'm not gonna eat cherry. It was, it was in the house. And I wanted enough to sustain me, not like a bar. Potters are sweet as fuck. It was the only thing I had that was like actually like a food that was easy to have that you can keep all in close by to me. Normally, I don't eat Pop-Tarts all the time. If you want to make a Pop-Tart, I like Oreo. I like Oreo-flavored things. I don't protein, I already eat that, but I usually buy them as I go. Yeah, cherry's not the best, but you know what? It's edible, it's food. That's the best way to describe a lot of things. A lot of the things I can go as well, it's food. <laughs> well, it's a game. A lot of the things I describe that are things I enjoy or things I'm okay with are, well, it's something. Well, it's it's a thing. <laughs> like going about Clock Tower Ghost Dead. Well, it's a game. For a care package? No, is it the, is it the one to Punchy? <laughs> Croissants would be good. It's probably food that's coming later, but like that's gonna be around dinner time. I'm not gonna have that now. That sounds good. The Oreo has to be a favorite though. I love Oreo Pop Tarts. Like if I I should buy a box of my own Oreo Pop Tarts again, keep them at my desk. What I'd do is I would like eat one I'd eat one per day. Because then I'd be good for lunch and then I'd just be good. I'm eating two, because I'm a fat boy. Go, but that's my logic on pop tarts. I'm okay with them. I'm not. I don't actively eat pop tarts daily. I, I really do not. My binges are chips. Actually, I eat a fuck ton of chips. Actually, I should not eat too many chips. Young man in the sea. That'd be funny. The old man in the sea. He catches the fish and then he loses it to sharks and then he carries back the dead body to prove to guys that he caught a fish. All it looks like though is he's carrying back to disease corpse. He could just pick that up uh, along the fucking beach. It would have been hilarious. Oh, my neck. All right, now we're back. Nice. What else did I read? I loved Of Mice and Men in high... Let's talk about high school books for a moment. I loved Of Mice and Men. I did enjoy The Great Gatsby, but it was okay. I didn't, like... I wasn't in love with it, but it was all right. Um, hated the Pearl. Not a fan of Old Man in the Sea. There we go. I didn't know they had Pop-Tarts without frosting. Like, I did not even know that was a, actually a thing. Is it? I'm willing to believe that is a thing, but I'm shocked, actually. Or the Scarlet Letter? I didn't actually read that. I know of it, but I didn't have to read it when I was a kid. What did I read? Uh, like, I read The Giver. I would read that, because that was the big book at the time. Which, I guess it's... People have feelings, and people don't have feelings. It's really a weird book, and I think about it. I don't know, toaster strudels. Those are all the rage back when I was like fucking ten. I don't know how awesome they made the commercials for toaster strudels, but they weren't that awesome. They were pretty disappointing. People do, like, do their cool toaster strudel tricks, while well, meanwhile I couldn't like I put mine on like a fucking animal. I just tried throwing it off like one giant glob in the middle, and then I never did it again. Read the stranger? I did not. I did not read the stranger. Now. Anyway, here's the acid bath cutscene that we skipped last time. Skipping it again, by the way, because watching it's 
not the smartest idea. Because it loses time. Anyway, while Corroder is dying to fire, invisibility band. By the way, I've not said it at all today, but Clock Tower 3 is actually just an allegory of a 15-year-old girl going to Evo. One, yes, she is 15. Two, this is a an accurate portrayal of the Smash community next to a 15-year-old girl. Surprisingly enough, yeah, I can read. I've been meaning to read the book Misery, because I guess it's something I should come to expect. Okay, I gotta keep going down. Everything good. I got the toolbox. That is indeed hot, hot, hot. I always go there about Smash Zoku. I did it, like all day on Saturday. And I'll continue to go there. Oh, goddamn, forgot about this. Oh, fuck off, Kuroder. I forgot about that. I fucked up. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Oh, fuck off, buddy. Come on. Piss off. All right, we're good. Yeah, I used the water, but it kind of fucked me on the hitbox. We're fine. Yeah, it's fun, man. It's fun to talk trash. Don't stun me. Where'd he go? Where, where the hell did he go? You know wrong? Smash is fun, but I have a strong shit talking about melee. Why do you need a broken controller? Oh, yeah, there he is. And... Again? Are you fucking me? Come on. Fuck, okay, I'm just running away. Oh yeah, it's like the f I, I remember this guy. It's like the fat boy chased me from a fucking. Dist oh wow, that was close. Well, that's good for me. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I texted him wearing a beanie. People kept telling me to wear a beanie. I, I like the look. It's not bad. See, not even bad. Okay, and water. See, it's accurate. You throw water on a Smash Bros, they'll ignite on fire. Dude, KBBQ sounds fucking great. He, oh yeah, that's right, Clock Tower. It's like the guy fucking running the Korean barbecue buffet. Yeah, that's me. I know from experience that man is me. I did a little waddle thing to the buffet. I don't actually, but it'd be funny. You're not wrong. You're definitely not wrong, Texan. I always have to wonder whenever I should talk Smash, do I gain or lose a follower? It's either one or the other. I never know which one. It's always hard to say. One always happens. Maryland's been going great, actually. Uh, Ghost Ted uh, is a bit of touch and go, but not bad. And this game isn't going swimmingly, actually. I'm really happy putting the practice for this. It is. I was saying uh, Kuroda reminds me of like a fat guy going to Korean barbecue, rushing the buffet, or the way he runs, like the fucking waddling. There we go. But yeah, Maryland's been going well. Yeah, that was the ghost that broke my back and I was bitching about the entire time. Well deserved bitching, by the way. By the way, let's see, do I get damage or no damage? Or I'm gonna be saying this here. Hopefully no damage, but going into panic's not the end of the world, because it's the boss fight's like right there. Okay, come on. Might be damaged? We'll see. Oh no, we're doing great. This is actually really he's not even gonna touch me. Well, I stand immediately corrected, given that he touched me. Okay, Corroder fight now. Let's see how this goes. The Corroder fight has one of two ways of going, good or bad. Back to Sailor Moon, by the way, guys. You ready for this? You ready for Sailor Moon Clock Tower Edition? Also, you see the closet doesn't have my Clock Tower shirt anymore, because I'm wearing it. Hey, zombie, how's it going? Gonna go bad? Damn, man. You're not wrong. You're, you might actually be correct. You might actually be right. Yo. Yeah. We'll see. Judgment! One, two, three. There she is. Oh, to die. That's good. Good! There she is. Oh. 
Oh my god, zombie eat a dick. That was fucking nice. A three shot. A two time. A three time. Jesus. That's the exact opposite. Holy shit, that was a good fight. I mean, I saw the damage from a bit, but that was really fucking it. I, I see that you have the good idea. You don't need PP? Well, you don't have the PP. Oh, I'm getting hit. Come on. You don't have to eat PP if you don't want to. And... Come on, walk, Croder! And... come on... One more. One more. Good fight. Really good fucking fight. Yeah, no PB for you. By the way, Zombie, welcome to the stream officially. Hope you have a wonderful day. Anyone who may have joined, by the way. Thank you for being a good sport as well. Um, I'm McDice to a lot of horror games and horror game speedruns. Very big fan of the genre. Right now we're in the middle of a clock tire marathon. We're on clock tire three. Uh, we have a few more games to go, but this has been good so far. We're about halfway through this game right now. Really good, in fact. Um, yeah, it's about 40 minutes, 40 minutes. Uh, that was a good fight. We have, uh, actually about a little under half, I would say. A little under half. Healer, hope you're doing well. I'm doing pretty good right now, by the way. Also, the coolest part about today is today was, uh, I didn't get a big auto host at the start, and it just kind of it went up here naturally. Like, that's really nice to me that I was able to, like, well, have the stream today that's like, hey, this is going well. It's going good so far. It's a lot of potential in the future. Anyway, we give her the shawl, and now we're going to go deal with Chopper. Chopper is a weird enemy in the game. He's hard, but easy. He, he can be both. Depending on the cycles Chopper gives you, he's either incredibly simple or really fucking difficult. Chopper doesn't have an in-between. He's one or the other. Corroder's usually on the easier side. Um, sometimes he'll be mean to you. If you get bad cycles, obviously it's gonna suck. Oh, wait, where's the thing? There it is. Okay. Yeah, we've been doing... I, I love... This, I love the Scissor Man zombie. I am... Uh, the runner of every Clock Tower game. I currently have done 1, 2, and Ghost Head. We're currently on 3. This is the 4th one, and we have 3 more after this. And right now we're entering Chopper. Chopper is going to be a tough section. Chopper, like, movement-wise isn't the problem. Chopper, boss-wise, though, is a bit of an issue. A scissor person? You know, it, it's, it's hard not... It, it's hard to go against the whole idea of a lesbian icon thing. When I look more and more like a lesbian by the day, and then my icon, like, one of my, like, streaming icons is quite literally scissors. I am pretty sure it's a walking joke somewhere, but I'm not gonna fucking... <laughs> I, I agree with it. That is correct! Jemima and, um, the scissor walker are both women. As well, you have the red nun if you count that. The red nun also counts. Red nun's my favorite, by the way. She's really fucking... All right, chopper time. Chopper, be kind to me. Do not attack. Thank you, chopper. But I accept my biases and everything. I accept my fate. It's up to God from the aura. Lewd happens. It always does occur. All right. Psycho schoolgirls with really deep, raspy voices. Wait a minute. You're into Bates. You love Bates. Dude, if I actually get partnered, guys, I'm gonna be so fucking hyped. I'm currently in the path of partnership. It's tr I, I keep forgetting. Every stream is actually potentially reviewed by Twitch. Guys, if Twitch is watching us right now, if uh, any of those Twitch partner reps are watching, let's just have a quick, uh, we love our Twitch partner rep here. We love anyone who is involved on Twitch. Right, guys? Right, chats? We all love the Twitch partner reps. Any sta- exactly. Zombie, you're fitting in great so far. Also, Chopper. I don't mind sucking up. I don't mind at all. Twitch partner ups are the best. See, you guys understand. Alright. He's on fire. We sure do love Twitch staff. We all have the right idea here. The part We love partner ups here. Oh no. Oh no. Doing good. And... E2. What's better than Twitch staff? 
Oh yeah, that's correct. That's absolutely correct. Better than t normal Twitch partner reps. Reps that recommend me for partner. Or approve my partner application. I'm gonna get rejected. <laughs> Call it now. It's gonna be a big rejection. Hey, thanks for the follow. It's much appreciated, zombie. Yeah, if I get it, that'd be hype as hell. It, that's possible. Also, really good chopper sections. I'm happy with all this. Exactly. Only the coolest Twitch staff would make that happen. Okay, and... Four. The Twitch staff. That sounds... That sounds terrifying, Clock Tower. That one sounds terrifying. Okay, now I have the power puzzle. By the way, I haven't actually had to use my notes at all yet, which is really good for me. Normally, I have to refer to my notes. I've not had to do that yet, which is nice. Okay. Electrical power box. Let's hope I don't choke this time. And it is up left. Right. Middle. Left. Right. Middle. Sweet. And just all the same. Um, the left is, after this, we have Haunting Ground, we have Night Cry, and we have Remother. All three should be pretty good. Oh, God! You know what? Fuck it. I'll, I'll take that. That's fine. That's fine. That's honestly fine. That was a bit brutal, but that's fine. Twitch. Oh, I imagine I have to get a job at Twitch and, like, there's specific partner reps. Oh, come on. Side. All good, Dragoon. It'll only take us about, like, uh, about maybe an hour 20. And we will be seeing all the cutscenes, but yeah, I recommend playing it entirely. Like, I, I don't mind that at all. I just remember after the hour 20 after this run, show up for Nightcry, because Nightcry is a blast. Like, Nightcry I actually don't recommend playing. Watching it's good enough. The cutscenes are really good, though, for Nightcry. I think Nightcry is going to be the big one. Like, the biggest one. I think it might dip a bit during Remothered, but we'll see. Pretty much, Elvis. But Chopper is actually a cool character, because he's like that guy with the tribal tattoo and found axes in the forest. There we go. Yeah, Nightcry is amazing. I love Nightcry. It's such a shit show. It's so hilarious, too. And there we go. The ladder of climate. And we're about to get hit by... Near hit by Chopper. We gotta be a bit worried, but let's see. Oh my god, that was way too close for comfort. Uh, Chopper, do not make me pump in a lavender or invisibility potion, please. That was so rough. Do not throw anything at me, please. Okay, we're doing good, Chopper. Good so far, so good. You're doing solid. Doing me a solid, buddy. Really enough, Chopper can't enter the elevator at any point. There is an invisible wall for Chopper that he cannot come in. But Chopper is absolutely crazy. He's one of the harder guys to deal with. Clock Tower 1, you mean for uh, the PS1 or Clock Tower SNES? SNES is really good. Clock Tower PS1 is pretty bad. There we go, and let's hope to god this works. I mean, we should be fine, provided I can hit Chopper with my Holy Water. But we'll see coming up. Like, I shouldn't have the issue, I don't think. Like, it's possible, but we'll see. Oh, dude, SNES, no, that's the one that's good. SNES is the good one. I run that a lot. Uh, it's actually one of my main speed games. I did that one first, and there's a lot of tech that you do, uh, involved in tech skipping, you can skip major puzzles. It is really one of the best ones. I do that quite frequently, in fact. So, if you ever show up again, I mean, I'll be doing definitely another day. Today I did it first, though, because it was the first of all of them. So, I had, I'm doing it in chronological order. So, that had to be the first one, of course. Also, I haven't really referred to my notes barring the elevator floors, but even then, I still had a good idea of what I wanted to put on that. And... There's one... two we need that for later and we're now going up we're entering the chopper boss fight uh the chopper boss fight's not really hard it's actually a mini boss fight because it's like oh you're not supposed to be fighting him yet go away chopper oh get out of here which you'll see coming up in a moment you also hear a baby crying that baby is you i don't actually know who the baby is but it is a baby crying sweet Exactly. And then... Another magical girl fight. She does. Oh, you can't... She, it's not gonna bend over for them, Clock Tower. She's wearing a skirt. She's 15, man. 
She's 15. There's a lot of protagonists in this game who are 15. Anyway, here's Chopper. And begin. Thank you, Chopper, for being brain dead. Chopper, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you know this means you lose the fight, right, Chopper? There we go, we, he just lost... Chopper, why did you lose the fight? Chopper, do you have brain damage? Are you okay? Why would you do this to yourself? He actively lost the fight because of his actions. Like, he had so much going for him, and he just walked into all of them. Like, he did... He, I mean, good for me that he didn't do any of the attacks that attacked me. But, like... He had it in his hand, like the palm of his hand, he had it. Huh. Weird. I wonder why. Also, for safety purposes, we're having extra lavender. Um, chopper can get really rough in the chopper section here. So we will see how this goes. The more I think about it as well, wouldn't it be technically faster to go to the other section first? Ah, fuck it, let's go to this section first. Um, go. And the graveyard section. I hate this part. Yeah, not you're not wrong, Elvis. You're not wrong. One. This part's either really good or really bad. I mean, on the upside, you do get extra holy water here. But on the downside, everything else. Well, the problem with the graveyard is you have a crypt. And the crypt section is arguably one of the worst in the entire run. Uh, the reason being is because you have these ghosts who are, are RNG cycles. Sometimes they grab you, sometimes they don't. Let's see how it goes. And unlucky me. I might even be grabbed. I, I don't know if that has to be a double. I hope it does not. Yeah, we um the RNG, you want the ghost to be on the back side of the crypt, because if they're on the front side, then they will just attack you. And them grabbing you is a lot of your health bound, which you do not want to lose. And here we go. We activate we put this here. The whole idea of this puzzle is all the stones are mixed up. You need to do two puzzle sections to complete the graveyard. One of them is, hey, stones are mixed up, go fix the stones. And the the entire puzzle is just color co Oh my, what the hell are you doing? The entire puzzle is just color coordinated. That's also incredibly unlucky right there. That was really bad. Like, incredibly bad right there. That's not supposed to happen at all. Like, out into the hallway is incredibly rough. Normally, I want behind the crypt, but again, RNG section, can't really do much about it. Luckily, I saved my holy water, because I can get more later. And it's safe this way. I should be safe as well, so I'm going to go straight forward. I'm going to take a risk, because we have to put this one away now. Um, let's see, how are we doing? And you are going to be... Alright, that works. Almost bad. Luckily, it doesn't matter how close you are on the second try, because they die. So this ghost is now dead. Oh my god, what's with these ghosts, though, dude? These are one of the worst ghost spawns I've ever had. I don't know how the ghost spawns exactly work, but they're pretty rough. I can eat it on the next one, so it's not going to be too bad. You don't eat too many hits, because the ghosts can kill you. But they won't kill you unless you're in panic mode. We'll see how we do. Um, looks like... Bad orange? Yeah, bad RNG. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna hit twice, but not the end of the world. I hit panic mode and we'll run away. I probably should have came in here with an extra holy water. Worst case scenario, I'll have to play this out again, but I mean, it's just time loss. Yeah, you know, we're in a good spot, though. The panic mode will be in a good spot. There we go. They won't chase us into the main area, which is solid. And then we can get more holy water. And we'll wait, we'll wait it out. We don't have to worry. I, I'm not gonna kill myself for this. We'll wait it out. There we go. There we go. We're, do we're doing good. Bit of time loss off that for the panic, but I'm just getting really unlucky at the ghost spawns. Get out of the way. Thank you. These ghosts, man. 
These ghosts are beyond cruel. I don't know why they're, I'm getting the worst ghosts I've ever seen. This is entirely luck, by the way. The ghosts are on cycles, and it's just kind of up to how you moved earlier in the game on what cycle they're on. Meaning, you can't really control them. You can, I guess you can try to predict which one you have to go to, but yeah, good luck with that. And I've said right now, I'm going to make sure I get the full um, water usages. I'm still going to have... I'm not going to refill my water just yet, because what I want to do is this. Get that ready for later. You need a holy water to activate any portal in the game. I don't know why you need two. I you think one would be enough. But maybe just confirm you didn't want to use that. Either way, good thing I saved my holy water. Jesus Christ, dude. All the ghosts here were bad. Why were these ghosts so bad? Like, eating a hit's not bad, but having to use holy water can get really bad. Because then you have to refill your holy water. I have to refill it anyway, which is why I saved it. But it's like, okay, that's fine. Anyway, the ghost puzzle is now done. Really bad puzzle, by the way. And now we're going to be hitting the next puzzle, which is a three-line puzzle with Chopper. Chopper's a bit easier to deal with, but harder in a way. In fact, I saved an invisibility ban I got earlier for Chopper and for safety purposes. You kind of want it for both. All the way, one. And then we're grabbing this and leaving. And you need the Compass of Light and the Compass of Shadow, because that summons a special portal. And that portal allows you to find the Ruder Bow, or the Ruder Arrow, which is a special arrow that gives you strength. I think it lets you kill the rest of the enemies in the game, like, specifically the final boss. Come on, and it's rather strange how much goes into it. My major issue with Clockshot 3 as well is the story is pretty bad. Uh, the entire story of Clock Chat 3 could have been prevented by Alyssa listening to her mom. Like, it's one of those stories where the entire game is prevented by one action that is d due to the protagonist. And the other games, let's take a look. Jennifer gets adopted. You can't really, um, you don't have much of an option on that one. Like, and she, she had no way of knowing that part. And then let's look at Clock Tower 2. Um, the Scissor Man is back, trying to kill Jennifer. You can't really do much about that one, can you? Uh, Clock Tower Ghost Head. Um, there's a curse and someone's trying to kill you in your own house. It is, but the problem is, like, it's it's a stupid version of it. Because it happens right in the beginning of the game. And the entire plot happens because the hero decided, Hey, I'm going to listen. I'm gonna disobey my mom and go back home anyway. Like, if she just listened to her mom, none of this would have happened. Also, good luck, bad luck, butterflies. Juke. Alright, juke them. Oh, no. Alright, we're good. Butterflies are off me. Thank you. I mean, ultimately, I guess they end up stopping everything, but it's still a big issue because they didn't have to do that in the first place. Yeah, it was definitely less than 500 IQ. Or negative 500 IQ pro tag. Okay, we're doing good. I might not even have to use my lavender, which will be good if I don't have to use it. Invisibility ring I'm using specifically here. Uh, right about here. Saving my lavender for later, because I do not want to use my lavender just yet. Uh, that would be good to have later. I have two of them, but the mo more lavender you have, the better you are off. Oh, nice trick. <laughs> the invisibility ring I saved for the specific session will be nicer. Alright, keep going. Yeah, Zenzuki, we're on clock tower three now. Y'all some this ghost head. Oh god, my dogs. My poor little doggies. This is also why you can't use the holy water on him, because you need to use it on the pedestal. Meaning you're not a hotel water, it sucks to you. Hey, don't worry, we'll be getting there soon. That's fine. It's why we have these. It's why we carry lavender on us. That's why we have it. We want it for a reason. Lavender's good to have for that exact reason. You don't want to deal with Chopper killing you. That would be really bad. Dying here would be really bad. You have to reset the ascent. That was way too close for comfort, but luckily we're right here. Bye, Chopper. Yeah, getting Womboed by... I think the only enemy I've ever had Wombo me... Well, Chopper can do it, but he's not as bad as Corroder, and he's not as bad as the, uh, the final boss. Like, those two are really bad Wombos for some reason. The Scissor Twins are really easy to deal with, weirdly enough. I don't know why they are. They're incredibly nice. Anyway, I actually don't need any holy water. I think I just get more coming up. There's one. 
That ain't Falco? You sure it's not Falco? It might be Falco. It could be. I think I do need holy water, actually. I should probably take it just in case. Yeah, I'd rather have not need it than need not have it. Let's go get the holy water really quick. I'd rather have it just in case I, like... It's a safe maneuver. Worst case scenario, later on I learn I don't need it, and I mean, I'll be fine. But I do need it for the hospital level coming up. Sweet. Alright, now let's go. Into the weird chasm that exists in one part of the game and only this one part. It is a very strange chasm. I don't really know why it exists. Like, in all the places, I don't know why you get dragged to half the places we do. Anyway, remember how I mentioned the special arrow we're gonna get? We're getting that right now. It's the Rooter Arrow. Three of them. We have three more, and this is gonna be good. We have Haunting Ground, Night Cry, and Remothered. In theory, the marathon gets longer in the future when I, uh, when the other sequels come out. Sounds good, Garfield. Hey, don't you worry, we'll be back on normal schedule soon. Like, tomorrow will be a normal schedule day where I go 8 to 12 because I have actual work. But today I just didn't have to work, so I was like, okay, I'm cool streaming the entire time. And now we have the runaway cutscene where we run away. And that's the entire dig. Thank you. And have a great night, Garfield. It's always good to see you, my man. Worst part of this cutscene is the camera, which moves in this... I don't know why it moves like this. There's zero reason for the camera to move like this. Actual work? Well, I mean... Definitely you can count this as work, but I don't really count it. <laughs> I have fun. Alright, time for the boss fight. For Choppa. Let's see, now this time Chopper, if he's fine, if Chopper's kind here, we're looking good. Fun is not allowed? Damn. Damn. Do -do. All right, Chopper time, let's go. Yeah, well, I'm not wrong. One. doing that. Why are there so many police officers out today? It's Monday. One. I want him to say catch. That's good. Firing. Good. Good hits. And that's good. Him saying catch means I get him stunned. Okay. Apparently. Apparently that's the case. And he firing. I suppose. When do I get the spirit bomb? There it is. And we are dropping the bomb. Doom. Look at this. It is the bomb. Oh, wait, is he dead? He is dead. Sweet. One spirit bomb. Good for me. Yeah, we dropped the big one. He's dead. We dropped the big one. And you know we had to do it to him. Okay, now we gotta go to the castle, which the castle level's fun, but obviously there's gonna be work with that. Alright, come on, we're almost done. I can't wait till night cry. It's coming soon. No, yes. Hey, how's it going, Bugs Bunny? Welcome back. Alright, now we got Dennis, and we will keep going forward. Nightcry? Yeah, that's coming up. Nightcry's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good one. Nightcry's hilarious, by the way. It's just such a good game. Because it's so terrible. Dude, also, I'm almost at 2,800 followers, man. I'm hype. I'm almost at 2,800. That's good. That's a good number. 
Let me in. Okay, now comes the hospital section where this entire section is just save Dennis. It's kind of a weird section in a way, because it's pretty easy. Oh, I messed up my movement. That's fine. Ghost, what the hell are you doing right there? That's an awkward spot for a ghost to be. Leave me alone, ghost. You can save the ghost, but there's no need to. You just have to escape. And we are good. And the whole idea of the, uh, the hospital is you need three keys to get to the portal room. And the portal room is not awesome. It's not hard to get to once you're there. You just need to make sure you can actually get there. Okay. And it's actually a really easy route if you don't know it. You go up the stairs. You want to then go to the second room right here at the uh, little uh, keypad. The reason why is because this room uh, has a hole in it, and going through the hole will bring you to the next room. And that room has uh, the mirror that you need for the major puzzle for this section. Again, the entire puzzle is going to be you need to go between two different worlds in order to get the three keys, A, B, and C. Two of the keys are on this side, but two of them are technically on the other side, if that makes sense. So, right now, you get the mirror, which lets me go to the other side. The thing is, the answer to one of the keys is on the other side, and you need to do the puzzle over there before the other side happens, which you'll see coming up. Yeah, everybody here snippety snap quite a lot. Here we go. You'll hear it. You'll hear it. He almost attacked me. Why? Why would you do this to me, friend? Why would you attack me like this? He just straight up attacked me. And now I want to go downstairs. Also, she actually landed that. How? I don't know. You don't have to go downstairs immediately, but it's nice. All the way down. Grab the key. Yeah, Raphael's definitely their twin. Luckily as well, body blocking is not really a thing in this game. Like, if there's an enemy, you just run through them, which I think is a really nice thing. Yeah, she is the ninja, but we can't, like, she's not going to do much to us. Slice and die. You're gonna hear that a lot, though, by the way. The Holy Waters are also gonna be nice for the uh, scissor, uh, scissor Twins, because they are not gonna be able to do shit to it. They'll start even melting. There we go. Now we're up, and we need the Holy Water on this side, because it allows me to do this. And now we can leave. I have one more Holy Water I can use before I have to worry, but we'll be good. Ah, we'll use it here. Thank you. Thank you for, like, missing entirely, Jemima. By the way, the, the funniest part about this game has to be the fact that her name is fucking Jemima. Like, I don't know a lot of Jemimas in my life. I'll never get over that. Why is her name Jemima, of all things? Why Jemima? Like, who names their kid Jemima? It's Aunt Jemima, but that's about it. Alright, down we go. Yeah, absolutely, but this game is English. Her, her name is Jemima here. Good thing that she can't get in this room, by the way, because that's good. I guess you got me there. Snippity snapped her name on the uh, birth certificate. Ah, that would make sense. That would make a lot of sense. Okay, crawl underneath, and good or bad RNG is going to find me. I don't quite know. We'll see. Raphael, I don't quite understand you and your logic, but I'm very thankful that you do not hit me. One. Two. Like, I appreciate that he did not actually want to beat my shit in, because that was very good, in fact. Jamal Aimu, I'm kind of arguing. Hey, thanks so much for the follow. It's much appreciated. Alright, now we can continue going. Let's see if I get the good RNG or bad RNG, by the way. Also, I'm gonna grab Lavender for safety. I, there's no reason not to grab Lavender. Honestly, I need it. It's nice. It's there. It's available. It's healthy. It will keep me alive. Which, honestly, good thing. Being alive is normally a good thing, just saying. Most people want to be alive in their video games, right? And good thing I dropped input there, because I pushed start, and I did not need to. Alright, now I have a lot of lavender, probably more than I need, but I'd rather be able to just to run. I don't go into the weird panic mode. I'd rather be safe. 
Hey, here's Raphael. Oh, you like being dead. That well, your name is Zombie. Okay, and I love that. By the way, that if you wait long enough, like if you just delay the throw, you'll hit both of them, which is really nice and really safe. It would have been better, but her name is Jemima in here, and we'll forever call her Jemima. I'm telling you though, I might need to make their scissors new sub icons at some point. They have cool scissors. Cause I'm wondering for the sub icons, like the scissor icons, um, they're actually all clock tower references, barring the gold one. Um, the green one's actually the um, the cover art for Clock Tower too, in, ja uh, in the Japanese version. Fleb. I just hit him with the water. <laughs> Again, that's the exact reaction. I'm telling you, it's accurate. Dick Burrows has to be the funniest fucking name I've ever heard for a boss. I know his name's not actually Dick Burrows, but everything's funnier if we think it is. Thank you for not hitting me, by the way, Raphael. You did good, Raphael. You did good. And now, on the other side. Come on, we are doing good. Minor Johnson? That's true. Dambra. That's fair. That's fair. It's a very fair estimate for his name. Then we're all down. Good. Is this the... Broke? Yeah, broken form. By the way, the worst animation in gaming coming up right now. This is worse than anything in Nightcry. I forever say Nightcry is better animated on this next section coming up. But you'll see what it is. You'll see what it is right now. So we're shimmying, right? Now what do you think happens when you shimmy? No, it's an entirely different castle. She crouch shimmies. She must has the she has like probably the thighs of a fucking god. Or a goddess, I should say. Cause like, how the fuck do you crouch shimmy? I want you to I want anyone here to try that out. Like when you get the chance and you think you're better than Alyssa. Fucking crouch yoga. Yeah, apparently, Zadik, you're right. You're absolutely correct. Yoga. And good juke. Good for me, I made it. Kegels, I suppose, skeptical, I suppose. Like, I know I would not be able to. I would die. Oh, shimming in general, I'd probably die. The fact that she's able to shimmy like this in the side of a castle is insane. Even more so when you consider that she crouch shimmies. Like, that's crazy to me. Alright, come on. Here's the ash. I really wish that could be a thing, but no, it's not. I love how since I did that during her attack, it didn't actually count against me, which is really nice to me. So good. How you doing, by the way, Zadik? Hope you're having a great day, as always. You're doing good, my dude. I always enjoy you, my man. I always enjoy you. You're a fun man. Go. Turn the candlestick. I think I need more holy water. Yes. I always have a pleasant experience with you in Discord. I know you stop in, say hi. I definitely appreciate it. I want to say that. Just because I don't always get to say whenever you leave. But it is always pleasant to me. And the A crest. Sweet. Hung up the ledge? I don't have the upper body strength for that. I like I would probably be able to shimmy, but I wouldn't be able to put myself back up and I'd probably die. That'd be bad. I don't want to die. I want to be alive. Also, very glad I don't have to use my notes for this entire section. Slice and dice. Ah, no. eh, good trade of lows, I'll take it. Go. I can't let I got hit. First time I need to run for something, you're dead. Damn. Such is life. So my strategy is just remain healthy enough that if I don't need to be chased, I can book it. I did a 5k once. I can still probably do decent. Not amazing, but I can do decent enough, I suppose. I think the end crest is actually one of the cooler puzzles in the entire game. Like I like this I like this um key item. 
The decrest thing is fucking dumb, and I, I will say this yet again. The decrest in this game is absolutely fucking dumb. Which you'll see why I think so in a moment. By the way, 129 is my PB. Exactly, Wildfire, you understand. There we go. I'm gonna use Holy Water again. Oh, that range did not work in my favor. Normally that range works, that time did not work. Normally it's good range, that time it was not so good range. Just in case. There we go. And crest. Sweet. Paired and good. Yeah, it, the Holy Water is usually very accurate. I'm surprised I missed that one. I'm very surprised that one missed. But, I mean, it happens. This alright. To be fair though, Fiona does pretty good. Like, Pawning Ground's really good in terms of movement. And then you get back to really bad movement in the following games. Like they had it on Haunting Ground. Then after they everyone just forgot how characters move. Remothered sorta of has it if her outfit wasn't Oh god, I paused the game. I don't know 104 right now. Oh in game time, that's right. I tried running a skirt in a couple of shoes. I have not. But people are telling me I should. Oh, I didn't grab the thing. Are you kidding me? That's fine. There we go. One, the decrest. And the worst puzzle in the game goes to the decrest. How hard is it to learn? Uh, D ending or, or C ending or A ending? That's the real question. Do new game plus, but overall, not that hard. If you know, the, like most horror speedruns, if you know the routing, it's not overtly hard. Now, obviously, stuff like boss fights, like Clock Tower 3, will vary, and then Remothered has some tech, but most of the stuff's rather straightforward and easy when you get really get into it. Here we go. The hidden switch. Which, the most dumb section I've ever done, right here. So, the entire D crest is answered right here. I don't know why. I always complain about this, and I'll continue to complain about this. It's such a bad puzzle. It is a really bad puzzle. Why put the answer to the puzzle literally in a forced room? Like, you have to do that room. Like, everything in there is mandatory. You have to do that. So, like, what's the whole point of not doing that, you know? I don't quite know. Go, and... Apparently, I actually have not Sanzuki. I never tried Tofu. My favorite part of RE2 was um, the one where he plays the shop owner. I don't remember his name. What was his name? Good. I can't remember his name. The guy in the yellow flannel, shop owner, the gun shop guy. What was his name? Sort of like a K, right? I'm blanking on his name. Kendo, thank you. Thank you, guys. Major K-pop. Skeptical. I knew I started with a K. I was like, well, he has a weird name. I don't remember it. And... Going down. Much appreciated. I mean, you're not wrong. Also, Major K-pop, welcome to the stream. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you have any questions, do let me know. I'm a very big fan of horror games and horror game speedruns here. So if you like that stuff, you're definitely in the right spot. A lot of friendly people as well. Uh, I'm doing a Clock Tower series marathon, which is all the Clock Tower games back to back to back. And so far, it's been going pretty good. Well, clearly, I mean, she's trying to, I don't know, scare the psychopaths. I don't, I don't know why she runs like that. Like, really, the only game I don't compare, complain about the running is SNES and, um, Haunting Ground? Haunting Ground has really good running. Uh, Remothered's bad because of her outfit. Nightcry looks like she shit herself. Hey, thanks for the follow. It's much appreciated. Um, in this game, she runs very awkwardly. But she's, like, 15! Oh, come on. All right, let's hope I pass the puzzle again, because this is a hard puzzle. That makes sense. Go. This room always scares the shit out of me, because dying here is really bad. 
What? I, uh, cause you get knocked out of the room and you need to go back to the room. Like, it's really strange. I don't know why they do it. It's one of the strangest things. I suppose it could be story at all. Like, oh, it all goes into it. Uh, we can use an all costume if we want to. I usually use frog because it's funny. But you know, it's not required. In fact, um, world record doesn't use it. But it's definitely helpful. Like, frog is helpful in stamina. Gun is nice for the boss fight. Uh, the whip is useless. And then everything else is just okay. After this, by the way, I need to go to the bathroom. So, yeah. Alright, we're doing good. So far, so good. Time for Magical Girl time, and this fight should go well, I think. No, well, Huey costumes can work, but the problem is... The only Huey costume you'd want to use is German Shepherd. With German Shepherd, he does a lot of damage, but he won't listen to you. So, it's a bit of a give and take on the trade. Like, oh, do I want Huey to listen to me, or do I want him to do a lot of damage? The problem is, you can do more damage on your own, so it's like, okay, it's a so-so thing. Oh, wow. She is. Oh, I stood there. That's fine. This part of the run's really bad because it doesn't auto aim for you. Well, like, that worked. That that worked. Her health bar is small, Zanzu, because it's a two-part boss fight. And yeah. He's a lot tougher as well, so you have to be careful of him. Normally you want to use two um back arrows on her, but the problem is I wasn't able to land them. That's good. That's fine. Come on, give me a good, give me a better one. This is good. Very good. All right, we got, we got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Oh, god damn it! Don't yaha me. Two, three, four, five. Spirit bomb, baby, we got him. Jemima goes snippety snap. And Raphael actually just goes, Bruh, I'm gonna fucking kill you, man. And it's it's painful. I would, guys, I'm three followers away from 2,800. I'm hype as hell. And one shot kill? No. Don't give me the aha. Uh -huh. Are we good? Him yaw hawing is bad. You do not want that. Oh, no! Not two spirit bombs! It takes so much time! I don't need... That's overkill! We don't need this kind of overkill in this game! Boom! I mean, that was incredibly lucky, but it's weird because it wasn't. By the way, good fight. There we go. And, alright, time for the final boss. By the way, this is a really good run right now. Like, I'm looking at the time for the run. I'm currently at a 119. Like, this could be a really good PB. Like, if I get, like, a 125, this is going to be damn good. I don't remember how long everything takes, though, is a problem. I always say the final boss can be a bit rough, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, uh, Dick Burroughs is gonna be rough, that's gonna be bad. You know, in my chat, by the way, you can call him another chance, but if you ever watch the Claw Tower 3 stream, anyone who watches me, I want you to remember this. We're calling the final boss Dick Burroughs, and that's final. If anyone asks, if anyone tells you differently, say no. His name is Dick Burroughs. We're rooting for Dick Burroughs' good RNG. We are rooting for that, Zanzuki, you're correct. We'll be calling him Dick Burroughs from here on out. If anyone asks. Alright, Binding Arrow. And let's go. I think we should be good, we'll have to see. And almost there. Dicky Eyes, right? The big dick burrow. Well, he is big. He has a dick. And he does burrow. 
So it's not wrong. Dick bros? No, not dick bros. Dick burrows. He burrows dick, Void. He burrows dick, yeah. He can also be dick burrows, but in that case, it's even more terrifying when you think about it. Because, I mean, I'd rather be so. I'd rather know that someone is burrowing dick than borrowing dick. How the fuck would that one work? How do you borrow dick? Like, how would that one work? I don't quite know. Who wants to educate me? Who wants to educate me on that one? I don't know. I suppose. And then... Hey, Bestoro, how's it going, my man? Good to see you again. How you been? Nothing wrong with that, my dude. Hope you're doing well. And let's go. Lend ass and borrow dick. Perfect. And then we go up. <laughs> really good right now. Hmm. Makes sense. And the running section. Let's hope this goes well. One, two, three, four, five. All right, guys. Time for the final boss. Dick Burrows. It's time to take him out. He will no longer burrow dick in the company of family. Judgment! Let's go. You guys ready for this again? Shit, dude. Fucking bullshit, man. Nice, man. That's good to hear the best drop. That was some hot garbage. Really unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Eh, it's all good, Tempest. I could probably still PBF that. Eh, it'll be good. How's it going, Splinter? Good to see you, man. Good to see you again. Uh, I can still PB because I did really good in my early game. I did really fucking good. Yeah, it's instant death. But I can just do it again. Hey, Moonshine, how's it going? I'm wearing a beanie today. I got a nice little beanie on. Right? Well, she tanked a spirit bomb. You're happy I'm doing Clock Tower wearing a beanie? On the upside, we have this part. Dick Burrows burrowed dick. It sucks. He has a lot of years sentence, and he's not killing nearly as many people as Chopper did. One, two, three, four. That's way too close. One, two, three, four. Five. One. All right, we're doing good now. I'll play it safe. One, two, three, four. Five. Come on, keep going. Keep we're doing good. I have a few beanies. I used to have more, but I mean hit. Fine. That's good. Alright, do it again. 
One, two, three, four, five. Back on the cycle. Okay, there we go. There's one. Here's two. Really? Keep going. It's fine. Why aren't I getting the combo? I'm getting hit. I'm doing the five now, right? Ooh. Oh, come on. Three, four. Oh, this is a bad cycle now. Alright, good. Back on track. Two, three. That's bad. That's fine. One, two, three, four, five. The attack. Two, three, four, five. Come on, keep going. Come on. And... I never get tired of hearing that, though. Right? It's fucking terrible. And... Come on. Going. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. This is the entire fight, by the way. This is the entire fucking fight. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Oh god, that's fine. Well, oh, come on, man. One, I <laughs> that was bullshit. Two attacks. All right, good. Three, four, five. You need five charges for the big thing. One, two, three. Fire. Thank you. <laughs> You're gonna hear this a lot, by the way. The entire fight's just that fucking sound, by the way. Okay. Three, four, five. Finally! Thank you for the spirit bomb! Finally! I finally got one. I'm not being this, by the way, because he was so. He was such a fucking asshole. Just the blah. -ha. Every time. I, he's not dead yet, but, I mean, he's close to dying. He has, like, one fucking line. One fucking line after every attack. You okay, me? Right, one, two, three, four, five. Good. Yep, he has a lot of health. Good hit for me. Oh. Come on. It's good. Keep going. No. Come on. Chain blows? No, yeah, oh, I dodged him. Good. Four. Come on. This way. Good. Four. There. <laughs> He's back. He's doing it again. I'm getting hit. That's fine. 
shit. One, two. Oh, I should load entirely. Alright, come on. Four. Five. Come on. Fuck, didn't work. Okay. Good. This is the entire fucking fight, by the way. I did hit him. I'm not getting the juice, though. Why? That has it. Yeah, right? That's what Bobby said all the time, right? Okay. Keep going. He's gonna do it. There it is. Every time. Every fucking time. Okay, good for me, and... There's the bleh. He really likes making that fucking noise, though. I don't know why. Is this what eternal life gives you? The power to be fucking annoying? Alright, keep going. He's almost dead, by the way. Come on. Come on. Last one. Finally! Holy shitty f that fight took 12 minutes! The run's not even done yet, by the way. I still have to worry. Take strength. Good attack, thank you. Do not do blah -ha. He did blah -ha at the end. We did it! And that's Clock Tower 3. Also known as Game Swap 3. This fucking ending, man. Good run, we're doing Haunted Ground after this. I need to go pee, I'm eating a Pop Tart. I won't allow the ritual to happen. Uh, never. I make that sound all the time. Uh. Thank you, Tempest. And thank you everyone for the congratulations on that one. Yeah, we're doing Haunted Ground next. That being said, I need to go pee, enjoy the ending. Uh, if you like what you've seen so far, go wish me a follow, it's always appreciated. Uh, I'm gonna go pee. So. They're back and Haunting Ground is next. I'll do it afterward. Oh, god damn it.
Who has firm shoulders? Me? Probably, my shoulders are tense. Right? It's just blah ha Thank you for the welcome back. And now I watch the Clock Tower 3 credits. I'm eating my fucking Pop-Tarts. I got two of them and they're cherry. Let's see how they are. Are they good? Bad? Don't oh, know. They are right. Oh! Thank you, Sora. No Jenkum. Sounds good. Enough of that. Ooh, a lot of points. Thank you, Sora. I didn't know I could do it like that. Not too bad. Okay. I do not. I never seen it, but I never actually done it. It's on here. Oh, that's right. Um. That's how I put the case for this game. I don't know. Well, I don't want to be a bad owner. The fuck did I put the case for this? I guess it's not the end of the world, but I should probably find it. Put that right there. I did not put, try to put the pop tart in the case. I haven't popped in my hand though. It would be a funny idea, but no. I'm trying to find the game that the uh, the other uh, the case of the other game that was in there. I don't know where that went. I'm worried. Also, oh, I found it. I just realized I own Until Dawn. When the fuck did I get Until Dawn? I bought that game apparently at one point or another. Apparently, I own it. I don't remember owning that game, but apparently, I do. I'm gonna for later, I wanna eat it now. Guess what else I found? Mystery game. It's a mystery game. Anyone take a while and guess what game this is? I'll give you a hint, this is the shittiest game I own. It's terrible. Actually, yes. It is Wilson Gromit. Let's put that up there. Alright, enjoy the intro. I'm eating my other Pop Tart. I'm gonna have water too. Enjoy the intro. I'm getting water. I should realize I'm out. I'm out of water. I keep drinking water. I mean, that's... I keep peeing because I keep drinking water. But I need to stay hydrated. It is a floppy beanie. Yeah, it's a bit of poop up here. I could put it down more, but it's like... I like it like that. Anyway, grabbing water.
She's terrifying. She's great. Alright, let's go. I walk like Corroder? Exactly, just the... Exactly like Corroder, right? Have a good one, Dragoon. We'll be back in about an hour twenty. About an hour twenty, be safe, about an hour ten. No, we about an hour. My APB is about an hour 06, so about an hour 20 is a safe estimate. Anyway, three, two, one, let's go. Yes, and Zuki, that's where a lot of other new game plus content is. Anyway, Haunting Ground, really fun speedrun, really fun game. If you've never seen it before, it's absolutely worth it. It is such a good fucking game. Like, of all the actual genuinely good games, I think this is probably the best of the actual games. Speedrun, eh, it's high tier, but not the best. Now, for a casual game, why do I love this so much? Well, it does everything Clock Tower does perfectly, and it takes the best of all of them, and it just combines it all together. It also adds in some new mechanics, and they do well. Like, nothing in this game seems bad to me. Everything in this game is definitely well designed. It makes you feel weird. It makes you. It makes everything creepy. Everything is rather nice. Also, for the sake of being silly on my end, I am going to use the frog costume because I always use the frog costume. Ashy frog, no frog. Decide now. All right. Yeah. Ah, screw it. We'll go without it. No frogs. No frogs allowed. We'll get the frog costume later if we need it. Always froggy. We're going with no frogs. We can't use stuffed toy though, because that requires a lot. Anyway, I actually want to walk in this hallway for stamina. Go. We walk in this hallway because I need this all. I need full stamina for what I'm about to do. Okay. And it is. There we go. I'm dead. Guinea Prince, the raid. Got it, thank god, okay. Barely got that, that worked, that worked. How is it going, Guinea Prince? Sunless skies, how'd that go? Welcome everybody from Guinea Prince's stream. I'm McDice, I do a lot of horror games and horror game speedruns. Um, no, not really. Well, speedrunning normally is whoever does what, so it's kind of hard to say. Anyway, the uh, answer is meth. The answer is always meth. Haunting Ground's actually just a big PSA that you should not do meth. Welcome, Biffalo, and everyone else. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Guy, I'm going to share Guinea Prince, good friend of the stream. Uh, anyway, the answer is... Oh, God, I'm blanking, blanking. Ma Magnus? No. Uh, what, am I, what are my answers? Salt. There we go. It took me a bit. Salt. Sulfur. I'm doing this on my notes, by the way, because I remember this game pretty well. Uh, Mercury. RRL, and the tablets here are all going to be for the late game. I need them later, so I'm making them now. Uh, Adamus. Powder. And Morgan is the last one. So these are all New Game Plus items. I do New Game Plus in this category because it's way easier to deal with the Psychopaths and Huey. Great game, but a rough speed run. There we go. Yeah, it's me to remember the towels. You can put on the frog suit in the, like, there's another room we can put it on if you really want to. Do you guys really want to see the frog costume? I'll leave it up to you. Do you really want to see her in the frog costume? There is another room I could change her into. Alright, keep moving. And the first answer, again, is meth. But yes, everyone. Guinea Prince, there you are. The advertisement saw his weight. But, please, frog. I like Guinea Prince aside. He gave us a nice, generous raid. So I'll let him and his community to decide. But, uh, we can do whatever. Oh, I'll be frog or no frog. It's gonna vary in that part. I'm not gonna do dominatrix, because it's physically, like, it makes the run harder. And then cowgirl is just tough. It's not easy to use. Just another frog? Any prince wants frog. We're doing frog. But yes, anyone who may have joined, welcome. I'm McDice, I still love horror games and horror game speedruns. Clock Tower is a big focus for me. I'm currently in the middle of a Clock Tower marathon where I'm going to beat every single Clock Tower game uh, in a row. We've already done four of them, we are now on number five. Haunting Round. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, the frog's adorable. It's an absolutely adorable costume. The game's also all sorts of creepy, which I think is amazing. Definitely a very well done game. I don't have a stuffed toy, and also it's not really worth having because he does less damage. No stuffed toy, but yes, frog. I've been too lazy to beat the game on hard mode with max Huey settings. There we go. Because the frog costume is adorable, and it doesn't really give you any real upgrades. It gives you one. Hey, Mike Patel, how's it going? Good to see you. It's going good. Today is going really solid. I'm definitely having a good time. It's enjoyable. And we are going to be going down to the kitchen. The kitchen is going to have everything we need to get Huey. I forgot to split, by the way. Why do I keep getting to split my games? I don't know why. I'm not thinking. Why, why do I forget to split? That wasn't a weird area to forget to split, by the way. That was, like, very obvious. Oh, yeah. I skipped tablets. That, that works. Okay, up we go. No, not spit. Splits. There's a difference. It's splitting. My splits. I have like five to build this cutscenes. And there we go. Well, three. Nope, two more after this. We got two more after this one. Uh, we have Nightcry and then Remothered. In theory, if more Remothered games ever come out, that would ha like we'll do that. Oh, good, Mr. Bun Savage. I mean, it's. Well, it's only there's Clock Tower 1. Oh, yeah, Clock Tower 1 and 3. That's four games. But. Yeah, that. Well, um, it's. You get a cute crouch animation, and you get. You just don't lose stamina for backstepping, which is very safe on certain fights, and it's nice. In early game, it matters. Late game, it does not matter. But yeah, we're on number 5 right now. Yeah. Well, I, was wondering, I wasn't too sure how long today was going to be. Like, this is about an hour, Nightcrawler's about an hour. About eight hours from what I predicted. And you'd probably be faster if I cut down the water, like, bathroom and water breaks. Because I'm going to the bathroom and getting water very often because I don't want to fuck up my back. I don't want to fuck up my body. I don't want to be dehydrated. I want to make sure I'm good. I'm doing all the things that are making sure I'm a happy screamer. Thank you, Huey. Oh, wait, I forgot. That. <laughs> there I am. You guys remember Bleh, right? Thank you, Huey. Huey! My muscle memory is forgetting where to split. No. Come on, Huey, let's go. Huey. Come on, boy. He's coming. Now, most of the early games are probably the roughest in terms of RNG, because Huey won't listen to you. It's kind of a gamble if he does or does not, meaning you want to tell him no quite a lot. Like, calling him commands, when he barks, it's affirmative. If you tell him no, it will kind of build him more trust in you, which is good. You could tell him good boy. We do that later in the run. That kind of solidifies Huey listening to us normally. But for right now, it's not too bad. Although it's also a bit risky doing that because Huey might potentially, um... What's the word? There we go. We might potentially summon an enemy. Luckily, though, I'm grabbing extra items that should make the run safer for me. Yeah. Well, it's not consistent, though, because Huey can immediately forget orders, too. Normally, you just want to make sure he's not stopping, and he's consistently... If he's running, you're good. That's the general idea. Huey should always be running. Alright, there we go, and... Kick. Kicking doors will be faster than opening them by all means. It does take more stamina, though, but it is faster. Which is why in certain categories, I'm, like, I walked here when I had this costume. If you don't have the frog costume, you can't, you can't afford to kick the door. Normally, you can kick the door, but I don't ever really kick it. But I run through that hallway, which is a bit safer. Alright, there we go. And here we wait. There we go. There he is. Alright, it takes Huey a while to actually accept he's doing this. He always lies down like a lazy asshole, which is unfortunate. But he's Huey. Huey. That's the life of Huey, and it is rather unfortunate. Best boy? Well, it's funny that in this game we're, uh, we're treating dogs well, while in Clock Tower PS1 we threw soap into a dog's eye. Huey. Truly the difference of games. Alright, Huey, don't fuck me on this. Alright, he's doing good so far. Tactical soap, again. Never forget the tactical soap. 
Thank you, Huey. That was not so bad. That was not so bad. Okay, and let's see. Can I get the fast trap? Hey, Kalanek, how's it going? It's going good. I'm having a good time for the marathon. Holy shit, I got the fast strat! Dude, wait a minute! That's the fast strat, baby! Look at this shit! It took me a while! Damn, son! That's that's really good! So that strategy, you just hide immediately, and it's really clutch. If you mess it up, you can still recover, but it's worth going for at least once. And it landed. That was really damn good. That was extremely nice. Okay... And now we get to do this. Also, we're putting on the frog costume, because you guys demand adorable frogs. Not me, personally, but Fiona is. First off... I could put Huey in the German Shepherd, but he won't listen as much, and I prefer Huey listening than damage. Um, oh, come on, Fiona. Morgan... I'm doing Morgan, Adamus, and Powder. I get the Fairy Earrings, the Blast Shoes, and the Diamond Choker. Now, each item serves a purpose. The Fairy Earrings are going to make me invisible if I stand still. The Diamond Choker gives me advanced stamina and pa reduces panic. And the Blast Shoes are actually an RNG item for later, but it will be nice for me. Yeah. The reason being is because you end up saving a lot of time later. What does Frog do? Uh, you do an adorable crouch animation, which we can see later on in the game. And also, you you don't lose stamina whenever you jump backward. See, watch. Oh, I didn't, I didn't get there. That's fine. So you can just keep hopping backwards and it's hilarious. It's not fast or anything. It's just funny. We'll see it at least once. Like, I, There's going to be a section I can mess around uh, around Danielle's time. But we have to wait a little bit. Debilitus actually takes a good, like, about one, about half of the run, actually. Like, maybe about a third of the run is Debilitus. A little over a third. It's like 26 minutes on Debilitus, about 25 minutes on Debilitus, I'd say. Maybe less, a little bit less, I think. Maybe about, like, at least 20. A third of the run is Debilitus, though. Yeah, and the, run, the running animation is a lot better than other games. Like, she's running at least like an actual person. There we go. Also, she's 18, so it's no longer creepers hitting on 15-year-olds, which, I mean, it's still bad, but it's better. A little bit better. Yeah, she sprints well. Uh, her stamina makes sense. She's not infinite stamina. Like, the stamina meter's not even that bad. Like, she'll deteriorate her stamina as you play the game. There we go. And then... Keep going down. Yeah, Swede! Yes, Mr. Ron Savage. And that's called New Game Plus, which is the category I'm doing right now. This category has two, uh, this game has two categories. New Game and New Game Plus. New Game is for Masochist, our advanced Masochist. And then New Game Plus is actually a bearable category for the game. I don't like doing New Game, just because it's really rough if you mess up in the slightest. Like, one mess up and it's bad. I'm guaranteed to mess up at least a few times. And clearly, this is the canon outfit. She did it all in a frog costume. Alright, let's call Huey. There we go. What games are left? This game, Night Cry, and then Remother. Alright, we have Huey. This is good. Huey is good. Debiltus is baby. If you're wondering who Debiltus is, he's baby. He's not a bad man. He's just... He's baby. Come on, Huey. Let's go. We knock Debiltus out, and we will get him later. Weirdly enough, you can pick Debiltus back up if you investigate his body. Um... Talking to him twice to do that. I agree, Brazilianus. I absolutely agree. I, I I think it is. I could have done it without the cannon, but I like honestly it's much more fun this way. Are you barking already? Why the fuck are you barking already? Come on. Come on, Huey. Huey. And the ending is cannon. No. Huey, you dick, come here. Huey. Huey! 
Gotta give him a lot of no's, because this asshole won't listen half the time. No. You... There we go. The ending is just canon, for what it's supposed to be. The only ending that's actually supposed to be canon is in the main categories, also... Come on. Go, Huey. Thank you, Huey. Get in there, get in there, do well. He did it. Okay, good job, Huey, I'm proud of you. Thank you, wow. Exactly, canon to what? The frog dreams of Fiona. The game is just better if she's wearing a frog costume. There's just a lot more uh, power involved in it. I need you, Huey, come on. Yes, you have A, B, C, and D ending. A ending is the canon ending because you're a good person. B ending is a version of the A ending, but it's not canon because no. it's bad. C ending is not canon. It's like a, oh, this is what would happen if you just immediately left the mansion. And then D ending is bad and definitely not canon because it doesn't go with what, you know, how Fiona acts. Fiona's generous. She's not a mean person. So that's why A ending is canon. There we go. And a lot of the decisions in the game are based upon that decision. It's like, oh, are you making the kind decisions or are you making the mean decisions? If you're a dick in the game, you're going to get bad results. If you're not a dick, you get good results. There we go, and let's go down. Ooh, my neck. So I, I do need, I think my shoulder, I need like a shoulder or something. How do I make my shoulders less firm? Go, Huey. There we go, Huey, good job. And back up we go. I'll split here. It's easier splitting. On the ladder, because it's honestly smarter by all means. Okay, and then we head back. A lot of the sections obviously be Huey listening to me. And I've actually made the section very specific to how Debiltis is going to act. The more time that you spend without Debiltis, the more likely you'll come back. So the thing is... Oh, uh, and Big Ugly, they... Yeah, pretty much. But the thing with this game is... Uh, what was I saying? I lost my chance. Oh, yeah, so the enemies. Enemies in this game work based on a timer. So, whenever Del Debiltus goes away or any enemy in the game, they're away for a certain amount of minutes. Uh, Debiltus is about, I think, seven minutes, and then it gets lower and lower per enemy. Like, Danielle will come back sooner, and then... Also, they're not gone. They are just far away from you. So when you kill, when you injure Debiltus enough to raise stunned, he just disappears, but he's going far away. I mean, he can come back if he's close enough, and you can make him come faster depending on the noise you're making. Normally, you know he's close if Huey starts bar barking. If that happens, he should be right around the corner, and you better be careful. What I do, though, with the Debiltus is I plan on him right about this section right here. So, after I leave the study, which I opened the door already, I am going to get to Beltus once I leave this room. As well, we use this study key, and we're going to get a few items off this. There we go, we get the Lunar Refractor. We'll use that for a puzzle coming up, and then Beltus spawns now. There he is. Normally he spawns behind me, which is why this manipulation works. As well, this is my major contribution to Clock Tower speedrunning, or pounding on speedrunning. Um... I made this route, and it's about 14 seconds faster than the old route, which would be going all the way around, um, down the ladder, and then back. The reason why is because Fiona climbing a ladder is not quick. She's very slow to climb ladders, as you can see. Meaning, if you just run all the way back, it's going to be faster. As well, you need to be on the second floor anyway, so you, like, you end up on the second floor using this route. Which would save us quite a lot of time. Hey, Huey, how, how did you get here? Huey, when the hell did... Where did I leave you? Oh, okay, Huey, you're, you're fine. That's that's cool. Huh. i never seen Huey actually follow me here. I and mean, we don't need him, and he'll spawn with me when I need him. But it's kind of funny he actually decided to follow me. Normally he doesn't. Go. It's especially weird, all things considered, given that I'm going to be, like... I went pretty far away from him. Like, he was in a hole. I didn't call him out. 
And I'm going up a ladder, so he can't really get me again. So, like, okay, Huey, that's that's fine. You're cool. Huey's cool, guys, right? We all like Huey here. I think we all like Huey. But you know what we don't like? Long puzzles. They just decided to give her a frog costume. There's no real context. They just thought it would be adorable and gave her a frog costume, which I think is a great addition to the game. Given a game where it's all about, like, um, you know, voyeurism and sexual violence, like, it's kind of silly that you have a frog costume. Now, the other costumes are obvious sex appeal, like a cowgirl outfit and a um, dominatrix outfit. Now, those are obvious sex appeal for the gamers. However, the frog costume is just adorable, and it's really fun to play in this one. It's like, hey, that's... It's very cute. I like the frog costume. I brought a frog. I, I bought a frog Higurimi because I wanted to have a frog costume of my own. Ooh, my neck. Good crack. But yeah, the entire puzzle for this is literally just match the color blocks to each other. So orange with orange, uh, silver with silver, brown with brown, and green with green. And it's not overtly hard. It's pretty easy. You just gotta know the exact timing you need. Don't worry about Huey, by the way. He will be fine. Exactly. The frog alt is where it's at. Frog costume all day long, baby. Anyone using any other costume is a pleb. An absolute pleb. And push the box. And there we go. It's a long section, by the way, so we have some time. Dominatrix gives you a whip that replaces your kick. It's really bad. It's pure sex appeal. It's even then, it's not even, like I think cowgirl is better if you want that aspect. Uh, cowgirl, more sex appeal, but even more importantly, it gives you a gun. The gun is actually the strongest kick in the game, and it's just the reason why it doesn't overtly save time though is because you don't get your kick, you get a gun, and you can't kick down the doors, which does add up later on. But you do get a lot of stamina save, meaning I'm pretty sure it's faster if you don't need to do the costume change, or you can afford the load on it, which if you're on PSN it would make sense, but if you're on PS2 it's probably not worth it. My P my uh, C ending still uses Cowgirl because it was really good. Actually, I've never been able to whip open a door. Like, the whip's incredibly awkward to get working, and yet they have a very awkward angle. Like, it's more trouble than it's worth. There we go. It's also much slower than the kick. Oh, but alright, that's fine. Not bad. And then the puzzle, which is two and then one. Also, we open this door for later because I do need to make my way back. And then you can actually gun open a door, but the angle is incredibly awkward. It's incredibly awkward to do and not worth it. Like, it takes more time to aim the gun than kicking. No, gun is amazing if you need it for Debeltis, and the whip is really, really bad from what I've noticed. Like, I've never been able to get the whip actually working. The gun has its uses. Namely, you save a lot of stamina on Debeltis 1. Like, the first time with Debeltis, you save a fuck ton of time. In a casual setting, though, yeah, the gun's pretty bad. But for one single fight, it's really good. For one fight. Well, the whip, I don't like the whip at all. It's really bad in terms of speedrun. Anyway, speaking of uh, actual fighting and all that, we're hitting the first boss fight of the game, Debilitus. This boss fight has two methods of beating him. Um, I am going to use the pacifist method because it's the best ending, and that's probably canon. It's canon assuming because Fiona's not a bad person. She's pretty nice, and it shows throughout the game in her choices, in her morals. So we're not going to be killing... Debilitus. We'll be saving Debilitus. There we go. Nice. Haunting around Daniela, hands down, Googler. Daniela, hands down. Also, better stay. Daniela's really fucking good. Oh, you dick. Debilitus, you dick. Stop it. Break it. There's one. You need to break the two chandeliers. Only Debeltis can break them. Help! Help! Huey, you dick! What are you doing? Help! Huey! Huey, you inbred fuck! 
Good thing I have a save. Do I have a save? I don't know. I'm worried. I don't know. Huey is awful sometimes. Anyway, I have a save somewhere around there. I hope it works. That's unfortunate. You know, I've never had Huey be that bad. That was incredibly unlucky. Let's check. All right. No, it is not a. This is not a PG stream now. Really? I never like. I don't know if you can ignore the frog. Ignore the costume change. It's the only save I have. By the way, I need to redo my items thanks to Huey. Fuck Huey, dude. There's a reason why nobody likes Huey. When you speed run the game, when you play the game casually, he's fine. When you speed run this game, Huey is the worst fucking thing to ever happen. I'll try it, but I've never been able to do it. Also, do having to build us do it just faster? Because consider the auto-aim that happens. Like, it is not easy to aim at these things. I'll see if I can, but I am not thinking. I do not think I can. Oh, come on. Grab it. Thank you. Ignore the assless chaps. And... I mean, I have to get my items again. Fuck Huey, dude. Huey, you suck so much. I want you to understand that. Good! Why couldn't you do this earlier, you dick? Thank you! Wow, look at that! Way better. Way the fuck better. Alright. I hate Huey. There's a difference. Huey's not human. Huey doesn't matter. There's a difference. Alright. Well, I still think my item's back. I need Morgan. Um, also, I need to throw out a plate, I think. I have an extra, eh, extra plate at the end of the world. Yeah, I need to fix my items. Which, I actually need a better time to... I might not be able to do that. Wait, I can't fix my items. I mean, I can get the frog suit back, but I can't actually fix all the items, because I'd be losing quite a lot of time by doing that. I'd have to do it later. You just murder him. You just straight up just gun him down. You just keep kicking him until he dies. He has a certain amount of health. There we go... Oh god, I'm missing the other plates too, are you kidding me? Joester, thanks so much for the raid, it is much appreciated. Fuck Huey, dude. How was the stream, Joester? Can I get a shout out for Joester? What are you up to today? Hope you're having a great one. Sorcerers? I've never heard of that game. By the way, I hope it went well. Everyone, welcome from Joester stream. I do a lot of horror games and horror game speedruns. Uh, I just got some... No, Huey is not a good boy. If Huey was a good boy, he would have fucking attacked once. Huey was the exact definition of a bad boy. Dude, that's fucking legit. Very proud of you, Joe. If you guys don't know Joe, he has a run at GDQ coming up. He's gonna be doing Pac-Man, World, and I think Mort the Chicken? I don't know if it was three games. I know he has those two. Yeah, right now we're doing... Oh, because she's sick. Makes sense. Huey. And look who's not around. Thanks, Huey. You suck. Ah. Huey, where the hell are you? Huey. Huey, don't you want to be useful for five seconds? Huey. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Huey. Oh. And stay still. Yeah. Huey. Oh. <sighs> Come on. That was the wrong way entirely. Thank you for actually cooperating now, Huey. How many gunshots can you tank? They're gunshots, Fiona. Or Daniela is a gunshot. Oh, she's almost down. She's almost down.
Huey, can you stop being a dick for five seconds? Huey is the biggest piece of shit I've ever had, by the way. He's almost down, Huey. One more bite. Really? Huey. I hate Huey so fucking much. Yo, know, can you get knocked down already? Yeah, you have unlimited ammo. Finally! Thank God. It doesn't matter if I knock her down, I need certain things done, though. Alright, uh, salt? Which I have right now, plenty of that. Because I need these play key, I need this play key back. Sulfur. Mercury. Because fuck Huey, say it with me. Fuck, big, big fuck Huey. Yeah, she has a ton of health, which is why I'm more pissed off at Huey. RL. Powder. And then, um. Morgan. There we go. Thank God that this is an actual, like, a serious attempt at getting disqualified. Alright, she's down the ground. Which way do I want to go? I want to go back. Yes, yeah, alright, this way. We're doing, we're doing good. I think long way around, because fuck Huey. He is not. Huey is a bad, bad boy. He's terrible. Huey is the worst fucking thing to come to haunting around speedrunning. I think there's a major issue with the speedrun as well, that's why it's not a good pick. If Huey didn't exist, it would be significantly better. Huey. Like, that is Huey's level of bad. No, I'm absolutely correct. Let's keep going. Huey's an asshole. He's a massive asshole. Yeah. Um... Well, Lifeline in general is a bad game, so no. It's a meme game. It's not really good, it's like three hours. Huey himself is a part of the programming. He is his programming. So Huey is bad. He very full well could have helped me there. But he didn't. Kyo, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kyo. I am sorry, Kyo. Why did you do that to yourself? And first off. Peepo, yeah, Peepo's sad. I feel bad for Peepo. And then... Uh, I have a lot of plates now, so let's do this. So I don't want the rest plate. I don't need that. You don't need rest. I mean, this is mostly New Game Plus plates, so... Morgan... True. But they could have made the game be completable without Huey. Meaning that's even worse that Huey sucks because you're so dependent on him. Oh, it does play like gas. It's hot garbage. And then... Thank God I already have the diamond choker. Okay, now we're back. Also, I don't mind... Hey, thanks so much for the follow. I'm glad you're enjoying the rantings. But it is appreciated. Now we're back. Also, again, this isn't like a actual... No one's ever done this, so I don't mind loading an old save. Especially given that it's just a time loss save, and it's like, it should be there anyways to continue, but this game doesn't give you continues for some odd reason, so I may as well just use that as a save. I took the time hit anyway, so it's not that bad. There we go. And now we finally get to use the key. We don't know about Huey either, but yeah. Oh yeah, Overblood's terrible. I don't know why they included a jumping mechanic in Overblood either, but it's just sort of there. And it doesn't make sense to have it. Yeah, Huey doesn't exist in Clock Tower 3. Also, you can do things in Clock, uh, Clock Tower 3 that... If there's psycho, if there's uh, stalkers nearby, you can't do anything in any other game. Clock Tower 3 is the only... Oh, yeah, that too. Like, the continues are really great to have. There you go. Luckily, hey, Huey's back. And then I forgot to split. 
All right, now we're back to normal. We're back on pace. This is where I should be. This is roughly about where I'd normally be, so we're fine. Have everything I need. We'll be fine. And now we can go back down with the frog costume. To be fair, it was probably deserved, Zanzuki. Huey probably deserved it to some degree. A large one, I might add. There we go. I think he did, at least. Hey, Belmont, how's it going today? It's going good. We're about almost six hours into the clock tower marathon. Doing good. Almost done with about halfway through this game. Huey, I hope you understand you're not getting a good boy anymore. Earlier, I was going to give you some good boys, but you're the exact opposite of that. I said I'm going to do some crouching because it's adorable. Crouch. Fuck you, Huey. This game may have always made me one. Hey, it's a fun game when Huey listens. Sweet. Barely got that, by the way. Come on. Come on. Huey, you fucking dick. You come here. No. Come on. Alright, he's coming. Good job. Huey is a massive asshole, though. That's the only thing I'll always bitch about when I play this game. Like, if Huey was removed from this game and it was just the Fiona gameplay, it would be probably my favorite clock tower speedrun. It's a fun game, but Huey ruins it actively. No me? No, no Huey. He actively ruins the game. As well, I better be careful. We might have some issues coming up with Fiona or with uh, Danielle. We'll see. Come on, Huey. Where the fuck are you? I don't actively ruin the game. I'm actively playing the game. No, it's not by the same fair as Clock Tower. Rule of Rose is similar but different. Come on, Huey. Let me die. So no. Huey deserves all the shit talking he gets. He just stood there. Because Huey sucks. Salt. I do. He had one job and he didn't do it. There we go. Alright, now, Huey, go make yourself useful and jump into the dragon's mouth. Since I'm already behind on time, check the scene out. I don't mind playing, given that the same MPV. And then look at him go. Huey. Hmm. It does. I love the scene. This is the one good scene that Huey's involved in. He's fine when you don't have to rely on him. I'll say that much. Hey, thanks so much for the Huey. ten bits. It's appreciated. He just air buds it into the mouth. And it's great. Alright, thank god I don't need Huey. After a few more things, we don't need Huey anymore. After the color panel puzzle, thank god we do not need Huey. For a long time. One, two, three. Oh yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Anything having to do with Huey is rough. Although Fiona doesn't listen nearly as well like as Huey does. I have done the extra mode with Huey. It's painful. It's not fun to do. Alright, well, we don't have Daniela yet, which is good. I mean, having her would be really bad. There is always the random chance she might show up, and we have to be careful for that. Welcome back, Sora. Hold on. Chessboard. Here we go. One. Yeah, it's Kuya. Two. You have to do a few things in this room because it's going to shift around the merry-go-round puzzle. And by doing these, I'm getting the room I need specifically. Three. Come on. Unfortunately, I need Huey for one more room. After this, you could fuck off for a bit. Come on. Here, come on, Huey. 
Almost there. The problem with all the Huey commands as well is I'm summoning, I'm potentially summoning Danielle every time I do these. Alright, Huey, don't be a big fuck this time. Here are you fucks, step on them. Huey. Come on. Huey, you you dense fuck. Huey. Huey, you suck. Come on. Huey. You're so fucking terrible, Huey. Finally! Thank you, Huey. You are the most dense motherfucker I've dealt with all day. I would rather play Clock Tower 3 again than deal with your ass, Huey. Come on. Now, the best part about this next section, we no longer need Huey. That is the greatest thing I have said all day. I do no longer need Huey. He does not matter for the next two sections. Thank God he does not matter for the next two sections. If he did, I would hate this. Like, he actively does not matter right now, which is good. Because now I'm back on my own accord. That is funny! And then I forgot how bad Huey is as a character. I didn't realize Huey would be the biggest asshole in the world. Uh, no clue. Oh, hold on. And then chamomile. So I grabbed it, and let's use lavender, too. Okay, Huey. Now you can play in traffic or some shit. I don't know. We're gonna have to yell in a moment, but I don't care about her. Because you can... I, you're not even gonna do anything, Huey. You don't matter. Oh, right. I have to open this door. Again, Huey doesn't matter because watch. The next few puzzles are all me. It's not Huey in the slightest. All I have to do is go to the graveyard and the crypt and she won't find me. See? I'm already good. I don't need you anymore. We don't need him until Ricardo, actually. Which is good until then. I mean, after Ricardo, it's going to suck. And then we'll be fine. I don't remember the name of the joke plate. If I remembered it, I would play it, but I don't remember the name of it. It's the disco plate. Let me see. I can look it up, actually. Hold on, there's a plate somewhere around here. I don't remember the plates! Oh, I found it. I know what it is. We'll play it. I remember the plate. Okay, I, I looked it up. Saltatio. Council juice? Oh, Huey is terrible, Zoku. But for you guys, we'll do this. Check this out. Saltatio, the best thing in the game. Better than Huey, but times ten. At least Huey's in the dancing frame. This exists! It makes you happy, too. Yep. It's it's great. It actually is great. I love that. I love that you can make the golem dance. And also, it gives you full stamina. So, like, for some reason, you have no health casually, you need it. Just saltatio. And the golem will do what you want. It's really fun. I love doing that. There's not many options to show, but during a clock time marathon, of course. He's an adorable golem. The golems are great in this game. Golems are absolutely great. It's a shame the golems fall victim to a life of meth and parties, but, I mean... That's the golem lifestyle. That is the golem lifestyle. 
Remember, kids, don't do meth. If you learn anything by watching play uh, Haunting Ground, don't do meth. You'll melt into a puddle of ash if you do meth. Go. So. Humunculuses are annoying, but the golems are great. Because the homunculus can actually attack you. The homunculi. Yo. Hey, Mr. Greywish of the raid. The main actually is not. Hey, I'm hoping. Okay, the game was going. GBF5, welcome. Oh, God, I don't remember where to go. Do I remember the path? Oh, God, I don't remember the path. Uh, Haunting Ground notes, please. Uh, Haunting Ground. Uh, I have my notes. Where are my notes? Where are my notes? Where are my notes? I do not remember this path. I hate this path. Meth is bad. Remember that. Okay, the answer is red, red. I can't. Red, red, black, red. Is it black? Oh, red, red, black, red, black, black, red, right. There we go. Okay. Oh, God, that puzzle always scares me. But yes, Mr. Greywish, thank you so much. Uh, can I get a... Oh, you're dead. Minecraft. Hope it went well. Oh, did I, did I deactivate it? I guess I did. Hope I did. And... Okay, it's time for Daniela, the final... Or, the second boss of the game. Wait, let me through. Thank you. Yeah, I had the fairy earrings, which is why I like this category a lot more. Anyway, everyone from the raid, if you're wondering who I am, what do I do? I'm McDysis, I do a lot of horror games and horror game speedruns. Right now, I'm in the middle of Haunting Ground, which is a part of my Clock Tower Marathon. Uh, my goal was to do every single Clock Tower game in a row. Thank you for the follow, it was much appreciated, and I'm excited. Anyway, this fight is just murder Daniela and shove these boxes. But you're relying on Huey again. Huey, that's bad. Huey, no. Thank you. Huey going like that behind her is good. She is. Thank you, Huey. That's good. See, I think Huey when he deserves it. She does, because she's a smart person. I'd do the same thing if I could. Thank you, Huey. Huey Lewis in the news. No. That's what Huey's giving Daniela. Huey. I like Huey Lewis. Fiona. Oh. Well, you know what, Huey? That was a fucking master dive. I give you props. Huey, I give you a lot of props. That was a master dive. That was a fucking top tier dive. You see that shit? He fucking yeeted himself at her. Huey, Huey you don't know you don't listen to Huey Lewis in the news? Good job, Huey. Getting a raise. Wow, good timing. Thank you, Huey. That was actually a good fight. Weirdly enough, Huey actually cooperated. In some weird dimension, Huey decided not to be a massive asshole. I mean, earlier he was, but he finally redeemed himself. Hey, how's it going, Shirakon? How do I say that name? Shirakata? She did. She does eat Huey across the room. Huey. Okay, and now we get the next section, which is going to be a tough one. Hope to God it shot off the actual arrow, by the way. That puzzle's even harder in reverse. You feel bad for the maid? It's even worse because she's not really a homunculus, but consider the following. They've been doing this evil plan for quite a while, and it's very likely that uh, they did it to her at one point, considering... When you play the game and get the D-ending, Fiona acts very similar to what Daniela acts like at her, um, cre at her, when she's crazy. If Fiona ends up falling victim to the plan, she too acts like that. So it's very likely the same exact thing they're trying to do to Fiona probably at one point happened to Daniela. Which makes it even sadder when you think about. There we go. Nothing wrong with lurking. Nothing wrong with that. You're always more than allowed to lurk. I always enjoy seeing lurkers come out of, uh, out of the shadows as well. It's very nice to me. This means, like, the chat's comfortable. But I'm glad. We're doing pretty good right now. We are hitting the next section with Ricardo. Ricardo is one of the toughest boss fights in the entire... Actually, he is the toughest stalker in the game because he has a gun. And that's the entire thing. He's also really rough. 
That also makes sense. Alright, I didn't get shot, we're good. Alright, now I just keep running, we'll be good. We need Huey for later, but for right now. There he is, he's coming, I need him to follow me. Ricardo's insane. Kitty Wolf, that's a. Uh, more power to you on that one. Ricardo's insane, though. Ha! Gotcha! Chump. Fucked him up. Good job. Like or you like. That's more more than fair. Just, I do want to warn you about Ricardo. Really good Ricardo fight, by the way. So that's how you want to get rid of Ricardo, because two, th two things. One, we get into the room we need to be in. Two, and more importantly, we get rid of him. So at that point, we do quite a lot. There we go. And we keep moving. And then I go in this room, down here, and we're going to be going up the stairs. A lot of the game right now is routing. This is probably the most confusing part for me for a while to learn. Like, I think if you learn this part of the game, you're probably good to run the entire thing. Pig Ganon? Good question. The child. The children. They're everywhere. And then Huey is actually a G at this point in the game, because you'll unlock the door. Come on. There we go. Thank you, Huey. He lets us in. He unlocked the door like a god. Huey. Huey, this is the most important part for you, by the way. Please listen to me, Huey. Please, for the love of God, listen to me. Huey. This part is the hardest part by far. And I'm, I'm worried. I'm definitely worried here. Huey. Come on, Huey. I'm opening doors, by the way, because I don't trust the game. Huey, 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 Thank you. Ooh. No, I mean, it's... You can wait out, but you have to be careful. Go. Huey! Go. Huey! Can you... Go. That's bad. Huey is a total... Huey is a total fucking dick, too. Come on. Let's not forget that. All right, come on. I literally need you for about a few seconds here, Huey. Come on. Just cooperate for like five fucking seconds. Do this and you're golden, Huey. You don't have to do anything else in the game if you just do this. You're good after this. He did it. Okay, we're good. We're good. This is the one thing I need Huey to do. We don't. We Huey doesn't matter anymore until the end game, but it's easy to get him in that room. Huey's going to be uh, away from us for quite a while. Thank God. Fuck you, Huey. Huey does not matter. That is a wrong opinion. Wrong. Yeah. Let's hope that Ricardo doesn't show up, though, because he can. He might. Alright, thank God he didn't. Um, I hope he doesn't. I'm definitely worried. I'll forever talk trash about Huey. He's a dick. Huge dick. Huey is a huge, veiny dick. That's what he is. Alright, enough of that. Let's actually go back to the puzzle area. Thank you for actually cooperating for one brief moment. You know, that would have been nicer when I needed it. Alright, come on. Yeah, Huey is actually just the reincarnation of Dick Burroughs. Okay, now I have to do the Prime of Materia. So this section is a bunch of alchemy, and you better know how to do your alchemy. I don't know the exact answers and why these work, but you need to take it to certain machines. This one, uh, the one we're just at, and then a machine that requires backtracking, actually. You can backtrack to other areas of the castle if you go far enough. Like, it's actually a thing you can straight up do. Go. And here's the backtrack. You go through this little chasm area. We're gonna go up some stairs. 
Ricardo shouldn't find me here, luckily. Like, he might find me near the end of this, but I got pretty lucky with Ricardo's not being an asshole. Like, Huey might be a dick, but Ricardo's been pretty nice. Which, normally, he's not the nicest guy. Normally, Ricardo's a bit of a jerk. But, I mean, in more ways than one. In more than just him, you know, trying to rape you and impregnate you and turn you into his mom. Um, oh, there we go. Ricardo is not being a massive dick, which is a good thing. There we go, and sulfuric. And back we go. That's, yeah, that's... Fuck, I went to the wrong one. I went the wrong way. Why did I forget? I thought I went to the other room. I thought I did. I know now I did not, but I thought I went here. Minor time loss, nothing in the world. I thought I went to the room I didn't. I don't know why. Well, at least you figure that out. But yeah, that's the what's that's Ricardo's motivation. Like, Ricardo's motivation is to turn you into his mom. By raping you, impregnating you with himself, and then having you give birth to him. And it's pretty messed up. It's even more messed up given that he wants to fuck a frog. It doesn't matter if you're in frog costume or not. He'll undress the frog. Yeah, he's basically your dad, too, is the worst part. He's actually your, like, canonical... He's a biological copy of your dad. And... A lot of these games are... Uh, a lot of the horror games are begin horror games for a reason. They're not, the stories aren't exactly the brightest. Yep. And almost there. Just gotta keep moving. And where are we? Yeah, over here. At least the final at least the final boss doesn't care about making you pregnant. He just literally kills you for your blood. He has like he puts you in a blender while the other guy fucks a frog. There's a difference. Weirdly enough, you'd think Ricardo would have been the normal one, but no, fucking Ugo is the normal one. You honestly think that Ugo would have been the normal one, right? Or, like, Ugo would have been the monster, and Ricardo the normal one, not and vice versa. There we go, now we got it. Yep, that is the story. Uh, your grandfather Lorenzo wanted kids or something, so he made more. Uh, he made copies of himself, which are his children, which are Lorenzo and Ugo. Ugo is your dad, which, again, I, I've never met anyone named Ugo in my life, and Ugo sounds like someone who might be a fucking homunculus. But Ricardo is the one who's the demon. The man fucking went for it, wow. Shit. I don't know how, but... Huey, Huey get him! He's chasing me. Thank you, Huey. Hurry, hide by the vases! Huey, can you not rat him out to me, please? We have to wait him out. This sucks. Thanks, Huey, for waiting patiently nearby me while he's... When the music spots... When the music stops, he's gone. You have to wait until that, though. It's a long wait. That's how you run around, right, Anthal? You smack the gun. Alright, run away. Now we're good, we got what we need, and we're out of this bitch. How the fuck did you find me? Huey, help me! Thank you. Thanks, Yuri. Ha! This is also why the fairy earrings are good. 
I got fucking. Yeah, I did get jabated. What the poor four. Ricardo, you're a fucking dick. I hope you understand this. Ricardo, leave the goddamn room. He's trying to scare you, yeah. Huey! Thank God, Huey, you fuck. You almost body blocked me. Why would you do this to me, Huey? Why would you body block me like this? Huey, I do not understand, like, anything you do. There we go, and... Keep moving. We're almost there. Almost there. Then into the forest. Sweet. And then... Alright, the forest is entirely RNG. The RNG forest. Let's see how this goes. Mmm, okay. Potentially good? No, that's bad, okay. Wrong one. Well, he'll kill you. Like, he could shoot you in the head and... Like, he'll still kill you. But it just sort of varies on how he goes around it. Oh, goddamn, the berries. The berries in the RNG forest. Damn. Absolutely, yeah. It's way easier to have you be alive, because pregnancy. Okay, and I'm thinking left. There we go. We made it. We made it. This is good. That's the good one right there. This is it. We're done. Actually, even then, you don't have to find Huey. I mean, unless you literally are beating the shit out of Huey throughout the entire game, you're fine. You have to try really hard to get the bad ending. Like, incredibly hard. You have to be kicking Huey quite literally non-stop for, like, hours. I've never gotten the bad ending in all the times I've ever played it. Like, you have to actively be a dick to Huey. If you do the spear normally, you're, like, you're not gonna get it. You must actively be a dick to him. That's a big active. Alright, and now time for one of my favorite sections of the game. Also, he stripped the frog! Stop! How's it going? Ten months. Ah. Heckin' Chonker Ellen DeGeneres ah. playing Haunting Ground. There's nothing on the weaker one, Sob. You're losing a bit of your touch, my man. But thank you for the sub. There we go. And sweet. No, me saying dick things to Huey isn't the same as literally kicking Huey to death. Come on, Huey. You're wondering what's happening right now as well. So Ricardo's invisible because he put do not see Ricardo juice on our eyes. Huey can see him because Huey does not have don't see Ricardo juice on his eyes, but we cannot see him at all. And up we go. And the section's really easy. Really easy section. All you do is go up. And then... Oh, man. Right. There it is. And down. Then up. And there you go. Ricardo is gone. I don't know why that works. It just gets rid of Ricardo entirely. It's one of the coolest manipulations you can do in the game that you don't have to worry about chasing him or running away from him. Like, he just, he can't do anything to you. It's extremely safe, really easy to pull off. Huey. Huey, can you come up here? There he is. Most likely random shadow. By the way, Sob, how are you doing today? Hmm. Go. Huey. Hope you're all having a good day. Going back up the tower. We're doing that one more time, by the way, funny enough. Like, it happens once again when you hit this next section. Because you'll be coming back. 
Yeah, you. You know we are. And then this section as well, I can do an animation. Uh, fall cancel. Watch. Uh, thing is gonna fall right about here. But I cancel it by doing that. It's faster than getting knocked down. And then Huey actually wants to stay up there. I'll go back down here. Run back up. He's gone. Immediately gone. You do that twice. You, you do that twice, and it's great. Huey. Huey, I do need you though. There he is. I don't know why he followed me in that one instance. I guess he's being more obedient than normal, but eh. Here we go. Also, we do not get the frog for the end of the run because he literally takes the frog costume away from us. So you end in the the dress. He strips you out of your clothing. Carvash, how's it going, my man? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. It's always good to see you. And manipulation of the luminescence. Come on. And juke. I love that juke, by the way. It's nice. Yeah. You. I mean, you could change into it, but it's not worth it. I think it's much faster just to keep it. Which is why we're not going to be changing back for the rest of the run. We're going to be in this outfit. Because we accept our... He took our dignity as a frog. Okay. No, I mean, I died I died in many runs. Oh, you see, yesterday? I died in like two different runs yesterday. It happens quite a lot. It either happens or it doesn't. What I'm more going to be annoyed about is if Huey decides to be an asshole here. Huey, don't fucking do it to me. Thank you. Huey being an asshole is the biggest here. God, fuck you, Huey. <sighs> How many times am I going to take Huey? There's one. Let's, let's see if he cooperates. Good. Two. Slow walk is good. Anything else is bad. Hey, it's not our fault he literally stripped us out of our frog costume because he wanted to plow us. I think we get a little, a little bit of leeway on that one. Okay, this is going good. This is actually a pretty good one. I messed up on the first one, but Huey's cooperating now. I mean, he did. That's canon. Thank you, Huey. No, oh, I don't do that yet. It's entirely accurate. He wants to plow a frog. And we don't need Huey until the boss fight. Which we should be good on. Is he moving? If you've not heard that term in a while, he's really French. He might be. <laughs> he might be French. You know, actually, no, he's Italian. Why am I saying might be? He's a, he's like canonically Italian. Wait, yeah, he, he's not French. No, he is definitely Italian. And one, two, three. By the way, if you fucked up on this puzzle, you'd have to go all the way back down, and it's terrible. Better hope you grab the miniature. And now the boss fight with Ricardo. Really easy boss fight, in fact. Here's how it works. Huey. Huey. It's really generous on this one, I don't know why. Like, Huey's really good at going into that hole. Like, it's kind of strange when you think about it, because normally he's really... Like, he's much of a dick. But, yeah, we just beat the fight. Yeah. The, the mini bridge is insane, dude. Like, it's really hard to, like, pick up. But it's really necessary. It's a pain in the ass to actually get. But then when you get it, it's pretty, like, it's pretty easy just to route it in. There we go. Although, if it's understandable, because you have Ricardo immediately chasing you. Come on, let's keep going. And Ricardo's dead, by the way, now. He's at, he's definitely dead. He's no longer alive, and we are on the final section of the game. Uh, we have one more little area, but... we actually going to do a really cool speedrun skip that's going to allow me to skip most of the actual bad parts about him. As well, we don't care about Huey, because I can trap him up here. He'll be back here during a cutscene. Because Huey's magical. He teleports. He actually does teleport. Normally, in this section, if you pull a lever early, Huey gets trapped down, uh, down the spire, and he cannot come up. And in theory, if you trapped Huey on the top of the spire, you should have to go back from right? Not really, because Huey will teleport whenever you have a boss fight. It's a pretty cool mechanic of the game. But it helps me because... Watch, I'm gonna just 
I'm gonna have to do that at one point. But for right now, though, I can just keep going down. Go down a bit more, and then we'll pull one. And watch. Yeah, it was a minor mess up. Not the end of the world, but... I blame Huey. Haunting Ground was definitely the worst run of the uh, marathon so far. Clock Tower 3 would have been the... Uh, like, Clock Tower 3 is actually one of the better ones. Um, PS1 was a bit rough, but not bad. Ghost Head was really good. Um, Clock Tower is as good as Clock Tower can be. And then... We'll see how the others go. And anyway, Huey's not on the other side and can no longer jump down the spire. We have trapped Huey up top of the spire forever and he'll never make it out, guys. I, I apologize, but you know we had to do it to him. You know we had to do it to Huey. It was, it was mandatory that we do it to Huey. And now we get to go to the final building. Don't you worry, though. Huey will be back through magic. Because Huey is apparently magical and I don't know how. He has the power to be magical. There we go, and... No, it does not. It, is, it does not count as animal abuse. Q is the king of the spire, what do you mean? He is also magical. Exactly, Dakaris gets it. Dogs are magical. Huey is my spirit animal. Thank you for the five minutes, Cougar. It's much appreciated. I'm glad to hear Huey is your spirit animal. It's a painful one to have, but I respect it. And, okay, now I get to do the cool glitch. So, what's this glitch I'm talking about? Normally in this section, if you go down this hallway coming up, you spawn the final stalker, old Lorenzo, or Lorenzo in general. However, I'm going to do a bit of a trick. So, enemies in this game are programmed in a strange way. And... You kind of can tell whenever Huey was barking at Humunculuses that there's more enemies that are coded as enemies in this game, right? We get the hand, we get the candle skip because it's gonna be needed, but we're never actually going to see Lorenzo until the final boss fight. Now the reason why is because I am going to kick open this vase and it's gonna spawn a luminescent. With that luminescent, it now counts as a stalker chasing me. Why does that matter? Because if I have a stalker chasing me, I can begin the panic event, which happens right here and the next section of the game uh, occurs. So if I stop right here, I get a cutscene uh, where I use the candle and blow up an invisible uh, Lorenzo, but he won't come back. And now, normally in this section, after you blow up Lorenzo, he's just come back with a vengeance crawling really fast after you, but watching him run down the hallway, it's gonna be blank. Watch. I'll show the cutscene off. And it's hilarious. You can hear him, but during the cutscene, he's literally invisible, and it's fucking great. But the thing is, the game keeps the programming, so I never actually get chased. Yep, he glitches out, and he never actually spawns, but what is that? why is that so much faster? One, you don't have to deal with the stalker. Two, give me a moment. Normally, once you kick the machine, you start a boss fight with Ricardo, or Lorenzo. But Lorenzo never spawns. So the door is unlocked, and I can just leave immediately, skipping an entire boss fight. That boss fight's not an easy one, by the way. What you're supposed to do is you have to get uh, Lorenzo onto the conveyor belt and get him crushed. It is a very, very tough boss fight. Uh, hold on, wrong way. It is one of the toughest boss fights in the game, in all honesty. And you can die very easily by messing it up. But the thing is, in the speedrun, you just skip it entirely because you never spawn in Lorenzo. Young Lorenzo will be around later during the final boss fight because he's always there, but it's very easy just to do that one, and I prepared a lot for that one as well. But that's the major uh, Haunting Ground skip, and in theory, that probably saves however long it takes you to fight um, young Lorenzo, or old Lorenzo. Anyway, there's Huey. He's barking at us. We need Huey because he has the trail of the staff. It's really easy in the end game. I don't know why. Huey is very responsive at this point in time. It, the door's just never locked. So you don't need the key for it. The door just doesn't be unlocked. Like, when you go to the door, it just opens automatically because the door never ends up getting unlocked. Hey, thanks for the follow. It's much appreciated. Go. Oh my god, that RNG. Too bad I didn't have powder. 
Too bad that wasn't the boss fight. That was really good. So powder is an item uh, I grabbed earlier that gives my uh, kicks a random chance to become explosive. It does a lot of damage. Like, it, does, it hits like a truck. And it saves time if you manage to get it. Come on. Come on, Huey. And almost there. One more room. And here is the boss fight with young Lorenzo. So what the staff does is it opens the main door. There is a door that you have to open, but there's no power to it. This gives power to that door. But what happens as well is it spawns the final boss, young Lorenzo. Lorenzo has two strategies. One, you beat the ever-loving shit out of him while kicking him. Like, so, oh, watch. You'll hit Futile a lot. But as well, you can kick pebbles into the fire and have him step on them, which does a lot of damage as well. But the thing with powder, if I get more powders, I do a lot of damage, which I'm going to try for. He kicked me! What a dick! Come on. Keep going. Keep going. You don't want to hear it's over. Oh yeah, it's great. You just have Huey mount him, and then you just keep kicking him until he dies. Hey, Ross. Again, powder... I love how he tries kicking me. Normally, he tries falcon punching me. <laughs> oh, that was the bad one. Come on. Clearly, young Lorenzo's into cock and ball torture. He kicked Huey! Come on. Pete, he's gunning down Huey. Huey, no! Come on, Huey. Been a bad fight because they kicked Huey. Come on. Huey? Huey! Huey, you fuck! Oh, thank god that was not a one-shot kill. No, that's a one-shot kill! Thank you! Finally! I mean, I suppose I did end up kicking Huey. Oh god, Huey, no! Huey, don't let him kick me! This is bad luck, by the way. There we go. Boss is dead. Ah, uh, there's a bit more. Yeah, he just eats him. Right? It's hilarious, though, that we just kick him in the nuts and then he dies. Also, now time for the actual final boss. It, the game ends in a chase. Where, you guys ever watch that movie Man on Fire? This part of the game is actually pretty fun because it requires you to know how to do the stun canceling. So whenever the earthquake happens, it's going to be faster to shove because then you won't fall down and you get a little bit of forward momentum. On the third one though, you actually do want to fall into it because you fall into the cutscene, which is kind of funny. Yeah, the one statue that's just falling on you. You could have let just fall in general, but it's not, too, it's not that hard to get rid of. Yeah, it's like the final boss in that one Spider-Man game. What you're supposed to do is crouch, but if you just do this, it's way better. And we are done. And I'll play out the final cutscene just because. Right now, how's it going, by the way? Well, you're supposed to knock the things in and have them step on him, but it's funnier to do this. Oh, you know how terrifying this is? It's like, ah! <laughs> I figured I'll play this out. It's not over yet. I still have to do one more action, but the run's like, ah. And then he just straight up fucking dies. Anyway, open the door. Nice. Sounds like a good time. 
He does, Initial Z. He does. It will not, but that is Haunting Ground. And now comes... Oh god, now comes some absolute shit. <laughs> now comes the best one. Thanks, Huey. Thanks, Huey. I do love Huey, he's nice. Boom, boom. And then we get the finale. And then, let's see, I'm just checking some stuff out on notifications. Yeah, looking good. But this is the ending. Anyway, while this ends, uh, you probably could take a wild guess what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna go pee. So be right back. And I'm gonna grab more water. A lot of water, a lot of peeing. So. Uh, yeah, I need water for my boys. It's nice. But enjoy the ending. We're doing Night Cry next. There we go. Alright. It's now time for the best one. Which bad game is better? I think Nightcry is honestly funnier, but. I changed the category, but. How do you change the category with that? Is that Nightbot? Oh, it's the game! I didn't know that was a thing. Again, I, I always forget. It's game. Alright, good enough. I'll get my Night Cry instructions just in case, because it's just been a hot minute since I've done this game. So you do need to forgive me for a brief moment on me having to use instructions. I don't actively need them, but I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And, um. Fuck it, we can watch some of the funny deaths too, given the scenario. Anyway, that was Haunting Ground, and we'll watch the, um... We'll get our end card. Good to know. I like the beanie look. I think the beanie looks solid. I'm enjoying it. 
123. Yeah, it's about a 120. I call it exactly. I mean, that was a good estimate. That's solid. Yeah, it was like a little under 20 minutes. Alright, guys. And now we are hitting fucking... Uh, you guys have some strange tastes in many things. And this has been one of the most requested games in quite a while. A lot of people want me to do this one, and I don't know why. It's fucking Nightcry. It is time- yeah, I'm gonna make a tweet about that. I'll tweet on Twitter. It's time for Nightcry. Which is the greatest speedrun ever made in the history of mankind. There's not a better game than Nightcry. It is truly video game Jesus. Now, you know I'm talking about The Ring? Like, The Ring is like Nightcry, but like similar. Also, I like how my splits are showing up here because the window's buggy as hell. Nightcry always acts like it crashes in the beginning, but it's fine. Oh, worse. Worse than that. Enjoy my splits in the background. <laughs> That's how long this takes. You can see because it, it's taking 30 seconds so far. Perfect timing, Dragoon. Perfect timing. You're on Nike right now. That was actual perfect timing, yeah. 300 IQ timing. And right, that's right, that's fucking right. Wait a minute. Oh, close one. And volume mixer. How are we doing on this? Perfect. Okay, let's just hope to God I'm not gonna need any uh, direction. You know what? Fuck it. We'll do it live. Let's hope to God I don't need any instructions. Lord help me on this fucking game. Say a prayer with me, guys. May God have mercy on my poor, pathetic soul for having to run Nightcry. And... Go. Fucking Nightcry, man. This game. This fucking game. It's all keyboard and mouse, by the way. That's all this game is. Keyboard and mouse. Here we go. Oh, it's great. It's fucking great. Look, hopefully I remember what to do. Uh, this game is the first spiritual successor of Clock Tower. I'm in a whopping 5 FPS right now, by the way. Can I skip cutscenes again? Hold on. Uh, skip event. Oh, there it is. There we go. I remember now. Techie! Perfect fucking timing, Techie! Perfect fucking timing! The man knew! The man fucking knew! Techie, you shit poster, just in time! So, welcome everyone, this is Nightcry. I'm hoping I remember what to do. I think I remember this later. Nightcry speeder is saying, You're the amnesia! Welcome everyone from Techie's, uh, I think it's the Otter Squad. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I make dice to love horror games, speedruns, and horror adjacent games. Um, just a lot of that stuff. Uh, I'm currently doing in the middle of a clock tower marathon. We're doing Nightcry, which is the greatest game ever invented. Look at this walking animation. She's actively walking like she shit herself, which is perfect. The game is amazing. Oh, you can see the FPS is the best part. He wants us to light up his glass eye. That's the thing. But welcome everyone from Techie Stream. Um, make yourselves at home. A lot of friendly people in chat, and you'll have a good time as well. There we go. Now we have matches, which we can now use on the thing. Can't use that here. Not on him. There we go. Better. It's pretty bad. She did skip the like day. It's pretty. It's pretty rough. I'm showing off the coolest scenes in Death Row as well, because it's not a like. Oh, I'm not gonna be at the end of the world if I don't get the best time. But look at the way she runs. This is how a human being runs. Right? This is how human beings move. Find me a girl who runs just like this. 
right? I mean, it's accurate. Oh, it's terrible. I mean, you talk to both of them, I think. Monica and Kelly. There we go, and now I go on the lower floor. It's pretty bad. Also, there's a straight up an old woman in this elevator. We ignore her. And now comes the best part. Can you hope it gets better? Actually, if you guys don't know this game, allow me to show you the power of Nightcry. I know Techie knows that for anyone from Techie Stream as well, you came in at a great time. Nightcry is just one of those games that's a big fever dream. And you'll see why in a moment. Also, we ignore that one. We don't need that one. Uh, here we go, though. We want to talk to this guy near the sodas. Look at this dude. He was! He was! And he loved the game. And one more. And I'm not going to skip the cutscene. Don't get yourself worked up now. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> what? You think a soda will get you on my good side? Hey, you're thirsty, right? <laughs> Here we go. Wait, what wait for it, wait for it. What is it now? Well, uh, something's grabbing my hand. What? I said something inside here grabbing my hand. Oh, Harry, the Gregory Peck Act is a bit out. It might be. Think. I'm serious. The first death of the game just pulls him into the fucking vending machine, which is just absolutely great. Alright, come on, I gotta ditch him now. Gotta keep moving, and we actually want to use- oh, no! Use the fire extinguisher, and it gets rid of him. How long is this game? About an hour. Well, in terms of speedrunning about an hour, but it might be a bit longer. God, you wish that were you. Okay, there we go. We steal his smartphone. Nice. Now we need to charge his phone. <laughs> Inside the vending machine, Techie? Is that what you mean? Hey, Cruz, how's it going? Right? Just screaming the entire time. And there's going to be a lot of movement like this. It's pretty fun. The absolute best movement ever. Also, you can't run. You move it like this forever. Okay, I really wish I had my notes right now. I really wish I had my notes. Oh, yeah, perfect. There you go. And then I charge the phone. On the thing over here. There we go. We charge the phone. Also... The smartphone doubles as the fucking saving thing as well. This is an actual part of the game you need to do. Murder aboard the Oceanas, help! You need to make a Facebook post or else you'll lose the entire game. Not this one. There we go. Like, that is actually a requirement you must do. If you do not make that, you'll lose the game on the second level every time. You have to make that post. Yep. Oh, hold on. I need to turn on the light, too. Because the flashlight you use is the phone's flashlight, which is hilarious. You need to do that. Yep. Absolutely correct, Punchy. Even better, the phone just rings right when you walk into the room. Also, I have no idea where I split. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've done this game, but I think there's a suitcase coming up at some point. By the way, we're doing fine. Make sure I the light. Yep. The battery will hold up now, but it's it's just funny to see. Also, guys, were you ready for prime video game deaths? Now, I have a death here that will top the vending machine. It will top it. 100% will top it. Like, this is prime video game death. You're about to see some plug get slaughtered. She is clock tower. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. You can't skip this, by the way. You have to watch this every time. Very pale. Are are you alive? 
Wait for it. What? Wait for it. Yes! You can't skip this animation either. You have to watch him die to the shopping cart. It's fucking great. This game is one of the greatest games ever made. Alright, now I get the key card. And we keep going down the hallway. <laughs> I really do love this game. You go in the shop and you explore around. Why is the game hated again? Because it moves like she shits herself and people don't know how to have a good time with games. People keep acting like, oh, it's not RE2. I'm not like, if I'm not, uh... If it's not the greatest horror game ever made, I'm gonna have a bad time. No, man, I, this game is shit, and I acknowledge this game is shit. Go. Go, and... Right now, this hallway now. I think I get a phone call. Yeah, there it is. Angie Brown. This is the Gert chick's husband. Honestly, I enjoy this game quite a lot. It's quite a fun one. Also, I don't remember the answer to the code. Hey, thanks for the follow. It is much appreciated. Um, I want to say it is 0314. Uh, let's try it. Oh. Let's see. I think it's 0314, so... Uh huh. Oh, three. Yeah, I know it's his birthday, but I don't remember the exact day. Yeah, it was oh, 03 on four. Why do I remember this random guy's fucking birthday? Glad I remember that, because, I mean, you don't actually need to know the answer, which I think is one of the better things. You can just straight up go for it. You just go for it. If you take a guess, it works. There we go, and now we can head back. Oh, I have a guide on this. If you need a guide, I have the well, speedrun guide. You're not going to get all the other things, but you'll have the main way to beat it. Why is that his luggage? Because he's a maintenance man. The man does maintenance. Alright, you know what? Let me select the damn fuse inside that. Thank you. And right, let's go. I have my... T oh, the problem is there's a speedrun guide, and there's glitches that happen in this game. Like, I know Techie knows the glitch, and some of you who watched the run previously know the glitch, but if you don't know the glitch, like, it is very specific. Also, this next section, light on, and run in. You need the light on, or else it doesn't work. It's so fucking stupid. I love that... I love that section, but I hate it. Also, I never know what's actually behind this, like, weird door over here. There's like a really weird cryptic door that you can't ever enter, and I don't know what's behind it. Also, the musical delay is perfect. I see the light on, actually. Just keep running. Hey, I think it's supposed to follow. I think it's actually run past it. Uh, let me. No, not yet. Let me. Let, it, 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 camera, camera, camera. Thank you, game. Thank you. She runs so angrily. Oh, God. No, not that way. This way. Thank you. This is how I aspire to run like. Oh, I was right, I think. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, I had a cross. Not the end of the world. Um, It's minor time loss, but I just had a cross over through the shop. Well, at least I had the right idea in muscle memory, but we'll see. And then the, the cell phone light is the best part. She uses a genuine cell phone light to do the game. The rest of the game should be good, though. I hope to God I remember everything I need to. Also, that's the time loss you go by not going through the bar. I did mess up a little bit. Not the end of the world. Also, some things in this game are really specific that you have to have the light on or it doesn't work. Like, there's one door that if you go into and don't go into the light on, you die, but nothing's in the room. In this room, on the other hand, I get a couple things here. One, you get a key. Also, you would normally think that killing off a friend is a bad thing, but you need to kill off a friend or else you do not get to pass the run. Like, if you fail to kill off your friend, you physically cannot beat the game. You did, Rowan, you did. Oh, I fucked up, that's fine. 
So our friend Jessica is now dead. Uh, see, she's in the, uh, the closet. Uh, the scissor walker as well is now chasing us. We're going to ignore her and just go to this. By the way, yes, the scissor walker in this game is a chick. And another fire extinguisher takes her out. Yeah, we got the VOD. There we go. Yeah! Hold on, one more. I like Monica a lot in this game, actually. Oh, is this one. Like, the character I'm playing right now who looks like she shit herself is actually a really good character when you fully get into it. Like, she's not what she appears to be. She's definitely a family person and is hustling to save her family. She's a lot cooler than you would think, but at the same time, it's hilarious because she does not at all come off that way. And then the main character we end up playing as, who you're supposed to sympathize with, is like an emotionless character. Hotter than Bates, in theory. Although Bates doesn't look like she shit herself, so I guess Bates has that going for her. Also, Bates, I'm pretty sure, is a young child. Oh, right, I have to just move this out of the way. There we go. You can't pass the line, after all. And now, like I mentioned, you need a specific fucking... You need the light on. If you do not have the light on, you die. There we go. And that was good. Overall, not too bad. Um, over here. And there we go. Nice. That's stage one. So, stage one. In theory, if you play the game casually, I fucked up. But as a speedrun, I did not. And now we get to play as the great god of Nightcry speedrunning. The absolute unit. The fucking champion. The king. Leonard. Leonard is the absolute god of this game. Look at the way he moves. Look at this awesome movement. Truly inspiring Leonard's movement here. We're going to ignore these chavs and we're going to keep moving. Yeah, this is Leonard. And Leonard is the king of everything. He is such a king. He ditched the raft. He lets people know there is a raft nearby. And he makes them row the entire way. He doesn't do a damn thing. He makes these strapping young men row his bath. Row his... Um, life raft. As well, this young man was staring at him in the shower. That's actual dialogue in the game that one of them mentioned. Hey, I was staring at you in the shower, man. Right? How's it going, my cock? Hope you're doing good. Let's keep going. Alright, we got what we need. Raft King. I don't even know what's that. See? Leonard just a god making them row the raft while he stands in the middle of it. <laughs> Leonard, that's not how you ride it a raft. Looks deserted. I think I have all the dialogue, right? Ah. You ah again? Yeah, you're ah again. And then I talk to you too, I think. And then Leonard just goes fucking in man mode while these chumps wait on the shore of the beach. Look at this absolute god. We can just keep moving. I do need this on, though. Look at all these rafts. And look what Leonard's going to do. Exactly. You don't need a row when you're the king. You find the footsteps. By the way, this is going to be a long time to actually do. Because if you don't know about the footsteps, you cannot go into the next section. Even though it's painfully obvious. If you don't investigate footsteps, you cannot enter this area. As well, I actually theorized that there would be a really good speedrun skip that you can do if you manage to pull it off. Uh, you'll see it later, what it's kind of like. But I haven't been able to get a good movement for it. It's currently impossible, um, but in theory, if it works, it's awesome. By the way, the game is currently frozen, and now it's unfrozen. Thank you. Now, Leonard is the king of stealth. Check this out. Leonard is going to juke this jabroni fucking sliced his ankles, dude. He did not even see Leonard coming. The master of stealth. Solid snake? No. Lengthy Leonard. Liquid Leonard. There you go. Better. He's liquid Leonard. Lengthy Leonard does not sound as good as liquid Leonard. Okay, as well, Leonard does not like to get dirty, so he gets gloves with non-slip coating. He also is an avid baseball champion, so he gets baseball because he loves baseball. And as well, he's a hit radio DJ, so he can call for help on the radio. We only call for channel 16.
There you go. I think I was right. If I remember correctly, it should be 16. Fuck it, I'll assume I got it right. Worst case scenario, I have to redo this, which I don't mind redoing Nightcry. He would be. He would be, Elvis. He absolutely would be proud. Really? What do they have instead of vision cones? As well, you don't think Leonard's done, do you? He's gonna figure out everything. He's gonna figure out the entire case. He's gonna be a one-man army and solve the entire case before we even get to the third section of the game. Here we go. So, the thing I theorize you can skip is the building of the mask. Uh, you do need to build a mask in order to help you uh, be stealthy later. He does walk weird. He's Leonard, Mike. What do you expect? Leonard the God. But we get this. A tube of super glue. And I think we get something from the back. No, just the super glue. Okay, we're good. Yeah, by the way, in this entire weird puzzle, you need super glue. That's the entire reason we went there. Nothing else is needed, just super glue. Yeah, and you better hope you have that super glue or else you can't beat the game. That's mandatory items. And time for the best slew thing you've ever seen. You want to see a legend? I'm going to show you a legend right now. Check this out. I don't know if you can. I think you can get dragged into it, but check this out. An absolute god. The baseball king, Leonard. The master of stealth. Look at this man. This perfection of a man. He is an ace pitcher, yes. And a master sleuth. No other game has this level of stealth. By the way, Leonard fucking killed him afterward is the best part. The man is now dead. Leonard killed him. Uh-huh. There we go. And now we get the mask part one. We get two parts of the mask. There we go. The cracked mask. Anything Leonard can't do? Uh, there's one thing Leonard can't do, which we'll find out later, but you'll see. Uh, remind me... I don't know, Wild Zanzuki. Remind me about, let's say... Hmm, remind me when we hit the vents of the game to let you know. Can he dance? He can dance. Remind me when we hit the vents. When, when, you have, when we're playing as Rooney in the vents, remind me. Metal, thank you for the host. Oh, wait, hold up. I forgot. Boom! He destroys- I almost died to a ghost, by the way. We just murdered a ghost. And now you get the cracked mask. And then I get to use super glue on the mask. And now you have the mask of the faithful. War puppy, how's it going, man? Good to see you again. Hi, Ben. He destroyed it. He wrecked him. And we are good to go. Nice. Uh, Remother is a tough game. It does take a bit to get used to. Now, the part I thought you can speedrun skip. How's it going to be a cry? I've actually skipped the first two sections. There's one more part of the section I cannot skip. And I'll show you what it is in a moment. Um, I've skipped, if you're wondering. Um, in this section, you need to be able to run forward into the Colts with your mask on. Because if you don't have the mask, they'll kill you. So we put on the mask. But in theory, if you were able to run forward, you can glitch out the guy so they can't see you. However, this guy would still see you. So if I were able to glitch past this guy, I would be able to glitch past getting the mask, which would be much quicker. However, I can't figure out that part, unfortunately. I've tried many different attempts. If it were to happen, it would be frame perfect, unfortunately, but it is technically doable. The only problem, though, is you can't get close enough to this door to get the action. If you could, it'd be better, but you unfortunately cannot. Anyway, we're going to talk to this. The phone. Uh, twice, because we need the phone number, putting some digits in. Yeah, there are cults of people, which we'll learn more about in a little bit. Let me just exit through here. Nice. And then, Indiana Jones time. I, uh, Rope, I may have to go Indiana Jones on someone, so I'm going to hang on to this. Leonard is obviously the next incarnation of Indiana Jones. He is a true god, a legend. He is the absolute madman. He is an absolute god. You also have to read all the books and all this shit on here. There we go. 
I don't remember exactly how much of it you all need to read, but you need to read a good amount. And we also steal the Hand of Glory, because we're going to need that later. And I think it's one more up here. Yeah, there we go. One more. Thank you, Leonard. And then I actually need to do this. Um, was it Will Anderson? I think it was. No, not Emma. Will. There you go. Leonard, the master of stealth, has snuck past a guard. Hold on, what do I use this on? Okay, and... There it is. Leonard the Absolute God. No, actually you don't. You don't need to do that one. Because normally you need to. If this was not a speedrun, you would need to. However, since I am uh, doing a speedrun, you'll see what we do instead. You do need the gloves because they're necessary. You would fall into the abyss and die to the scissor walker if you don't have the gloves. So you need to make sure you take the gloves. It's very important you have them. There we go. And now I take uh, the Hand of Glory and light it on fire. And time for the craziest quick time event in the world, guys. This is true horror. This is survival horror at its finest. Check it out, the Hand of Glory cutscene. Don't be scared, guys. Don't get scared. Ooh. Ooh. Guys, I... Oh, they're getting spooky. So spooky. <gasps> Absolutely terrifying. All right, we're done. They are. They are absolutely terrifying. They were going to touch my soul. As well, I don't remember the exact order of things I need to do, but I want to say it's... Gotta open this up. Uh, there we go. I'm missing the Jerome. This is Jerome, by the way. There you go. We got Jerome. And now we gotta check out a few other things. Oh, hold on. I think over here. Yeah, over here there's a ceremonial dagger I think I need. We get the dagger. I don't know if you grab it. I think you just need to investigate it. As well, we're not going to go back. Oh, back, back here. Thank you, Leonard. Up here, and then we get a map of the Oceanus, which is the boat we're on. go and then I got it all and then I think we're out of here I think that was everything I needed to do worst case scenario we, won't, we don't get to leave I didn't do everything so we should be good in a moment and yep we're out of here he just carries Jerome back by the way and then we should be good here. If not, I'll have to redo that. Yeah, we good, baby. And now, ready for this, guys? You ready? The greatest part of the speedrun? Wait for it. Wait for it. It's Rooney. Yeah, I've talked to everybody. Well, sort of, right now is a flashback, but you'll get back to the main story in a little bit. Keep talking to him. It really is the jam. Rooney is technically the main character and will be the character who plays for the rest of the game. And Rooney is the shy, awkward kid. And that's her entire personality. 
There's also this guy right here. We don't have to worry about him. All right, if I did everything right, I should be able to leave, and then we'll be good. Don't worry, we'll get back inside. Do 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 do. And now with Rooney, it's a bit of an interesting section. Oh, uh, was it right here? Yes, it was. Rooney was about to fall off the cliff, and then Jerome saved her. Go. Thank you, Buttercream. We need to get Jerome's number. He's gonna get sick to test drinks in his room. When is the vents? It's coming up, don't you worry. Back inside. It happens during Rooney's section. Dude, dude. Also, look at this guy, Dang and Rapa character, just fucking standing there. He does move, though, so he's better than the other games. Also, a lot of the extra characters here are quite. also enjoy the music. A lot of the extra characters here are um, Kickstarter backers, <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Oh, come on. Uh, ignore her, because we're going to this room. Why is no one dancing? Because it's so funky. It's a good question. It's a very good question, Jonas. I mean, gotta talk to this gentleman, Saul. We get his digits. No, I don't want to play pool or darts. Although, with pool, do I have the... I'm going to grab the answer, because I'm a bit worried here, actually. We'll grab it later, I think. Go. And then, I don't know what cool 3D world is. This is the one part of the game I'm a bit worried about. Uh, I need to know the answers to the puzzle coming up. If I don't, I'm going to be stuck there for a while. There's Jerome. Haunted by flashbacks of his own hubris. Rooney, get in there. Rooney, get... Thank you. Good job, Rooney. Also, cutscene skipping. A very good thing for this game to have as a speedrun. We can watch the funny ones, but overall, you don't need to worry about too much. Also, a comfortable looking sofa. A comfortable looking sofa. A comfortable looking sofa. <gasps> a comfortable looking. So oh, there we go. You just investigate items like five times or so, and then you get to know about the shower. Also, I forgot to split. Oh god, why didn't I write down better notes? Oh god, back to not responding. Come on. By the way, we're currently being chased by the scissor walker. Yeah, definitely lazy programming to a degree. Wait, no, I went the wrong way. God damn it. That was bad. That was bad. Excuse me? E excuse me? Can I can I leave? I hope I don't die. I might die. I might die. Well, Rooney, you lived well. Luckily, this game has generous checkpoints. There we go. Thank you, Rooney. Um, other, other way, other way, other way. Thank you. No, 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 no. What was this way? And then Rooney just fucking died. Well, Rooney, it's okay. That was a kill. I don't know how I died that way, but that was awkward. I don't know why that door glitched, but we can redo it. It's not the end of the world. Uh, that, uh... Continue. There we go. Also, it's a big decision mapper for you. Okay, here we go. The checkpoints aren't too bad for this. Yeah, uh, that was a bit bad. Uh, I don't know why it did that, but I'm not going to judge the game. The game is funny sometimes. I don't know why the door bugged out on me like that, but it sort of did. Luckily, there's good checkpoints. Anyway, I can talk to this man twice. And we're out. Actually, I only need to do it once, I think about it. And just keep running away. Good. 
We have to do that all again with Jerome. Not the end of the world. It's not that long. Do I enjoy playing this game? Uh, kind of. I have trouble remembering the later parts about it because there's one puzzle that's entirely RNG. Well, there's like three different areas, but it's not that bad. No, this is a beanie, Kronos. This is a beanie. A bad haircut would be funny, though, but no, nah, I'm wearing a beanie right now. It's cozy. Here we go. Did Jerome die? I yeah, don't know. And he disappears in a moment. There he is, and then a comfortable looking sofa. Cozy sofa. You do this three times, and then one more time, and then you're good. I don't quite know. <laughs> I wish I knew right now, it would be funny, but obviously, yeah, this is just a beanie. Obviously, it's getting darker with the headphones, it's tougher to see. But yeah, it's a beanie. And just walk into it, Rooney. Just walk into it, please. Thank you. There we go. Because it's a cutscene, which is why I was like, wait, why didn't I get the door animation? No, down the stairs, down the stairs, down the stairs, Rooney. Down the stairs. Thank you. Way better. Yeah, I'm doing cozy. And then into the movie theater. I keep running. Hope to God I don't get chased. We're gonna book it. Sweet, got it. Are you saying her run's better, worse than Monica's, Mr. Bond Savage? Are you telling me this right now? Are you saying her run is worse than Monica's? Alright, let's gotta keep going. Rooney, why are you underneath the chair? What an awkward place to be, Rooney. What an awkward place to be. Oh, Monica was the uh, the other chick from earlier. There we go. She's the blonde chick. We'll meet her again, don't worry. But Monica's hilarious. I've never seen that happen before. I didn't know you could fall down like that. I mean, it returned me to my position, but I did not know that could actually happen. Anyway, the, the master hiding spot. The masterful hiding spot. Starkado, how's it going? I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong is the thing. There we go. Kelly's number, and... There we go. I don't exactly remember what I'm supposed to be doing right now, but I have a faint idea of it. Let's see. Let's go back. I think I gotta go to the, um... That one room. What's the room? Um, there's like a bomb shelter sort of room. I think I gotta go to that, if I'm remembering correctly, and that's on the first floor. A lot of the game right now is remembering Rooney's route, because I don't remember that one that well. I remember the later routes. Uh, certainly in the game, I remember Rooney's pretty well. It just it, Until then, it's a bit weird. Ah, oh, clearly. Clearly, Mr. Onside. Just put Endgame on the movie screen. I really should. I've heard good things about it. I like Jordan Peele. Okay. Also, let's look at all the blood right here. It's perfect. Yeah, Dark Navi, we're uh, near the end. Uh, well, we have one more game after this one, which it's one of the better games. But right now we're on Night Cry, which is the absolute greatest game to ever be released. It's the only game rivaled by the ring. Charismai with the host. Thank you. And how are you doing today, Charisma? I hope you're having a great day. Also, we need to call right outside of the thing. We need to call Kelly. And then the bomb shelter. There you go, we're allowed in when you call. Did I not get the thing? Hmm. I gotta find one more person. Hold on. 
Alright, that makes sense. Uh, who do I need to find? I don't remember. I don't go back. Oh my god, I remember what to do now. I think I do? I'm blanking on it. What do I do here? I have my notes, but I don't refer to those just yet. Oh, wait, I clicked outside of the game. <laughs> um, wasn't downstairs to do that later. It wasn't... I think what I need to do is go upstairs and then downstairs. If I remember correctly. This phone charger... Like, I go up here, and then back down. Yep, there it is. There we go. I forgot, you literally seen her up the stairs. There we go. I, it took me a bit. I don't know if count videos are as much torment as this game. And then, now I have the thing I need. You literally just run upstairs and you're good. You don't find anybody. You just run away and then you're fine. Aww. My cat sounds adorable. I would want a cat at some point, I think. Either a cat or a pig. A, pi a pet pig would be nice. I want a pet pig. Can you imagine the kind of power that comes with owning a micro pig? And now I can call Kelly. I fucked up on the timing. Rooney, stop running. You're too powerful. Thank you, Rooney. Aww, I'm sorry here. And then uh, we are calling Kelly. We're doing good. We're doing good. There you up. Uh, let me eat. There we go. Uh, we have to talk to, like, everybody twice, I think. Yeah, but, um, you need certain phone numbers to progress. Maria, you talk to, like, I don't even know how to talk to her, but Maria's a dick. There we go. Yeah, that's a, that's a point and click mouse game. There we go. We need that number, and then, we, this guy's a Kickstarter backer. We don't care about him. Then Vigo, take a while to guess who the vi big villain this game might be. There we go. You talk to everybody twice, and then we are out of here. Not bad, and now we can continue forward. At least I remember genuinely what I need to do. Yeah, it's a it's a rough game. It was a very rough game. Wait, George learned a pet pig? That's awesome. That sounds absolutely awesome. But pigs probably are a hassle. It was the vending machine. Ah, clearly, clearly. Uh, it probably was in all honesty. I, I would not put it past him. It was, it's been, it's like, it rarely goes on sale for some strange fucking reason. Uh, you think of all games, like, when this game is on sale, it's like twelve forty nine, which is the good price of this game. But it's pretty, pretty bad. The Kickstarter backer is the villain. Clearly, clearly the Kickstarter backer is the villain. Very clearly. The Cat Lady? Yeah, I have. Uh, I also played a bit of Downfall. Both are very good. I want to do Lorelei at some point, but I've no I watched a few people play it, but I'm able to actually finish it myself. I don't know why Rooney is the only person who does this with the doors. Like, she just has this weird spasm. Also, now going on to something earlier. Why do you need Jessica dead in order to get the proper game? Oh, come on. Let me, let me down, Rooney. Thank you. There we go, there's Jerome. Guys, look, it's Jerome! He got out safely! Jerome! Alright, Jerome, good job. You need Jerome's phone number for later, it's important. I suppose, you know, that makes sense. Hey, that's a good price, actually. That's way better than it used to be. We drop down. And now, okay, how do I explain this? So we run up here, some, somehow. We get a phone call from Jessica. Now, if you remember Jessica from earlier, Jessica died. We we're currently in the stage of the game. You get a call from Jessica, it's very panicked, and you, like, you need to pay attention to that. The reason why is because you're supposed to be aware that Jessica died at this point in the game. Like, the beginning takes place in the beginning, but then it's like, oh, everything starts to happen. 
Like, the entire game does actually... That you're back on the main timeline. But it is sort of strange like that. As well, we're gonna talk to this. In time for the most energetic fight ever made. Alright, hold on. Uh, there we go. The e most craziest cutscene ever. Why is it, like, skipped? That's weird. Wait, what the hell? Why was that, like, skipped? Normally, it's just be crawling away while the scissor walker turns on the machine, and then you have to run away from it while crawling. Also, that's the explosion. So, Leonard just got back to the boat. Go back? I can't. I physically can't go back. I'm not going to reload it. Alright, let's keep going. Gotta get the thing in here. Necklace. And there we go. No, Jessica's not. Uh, Jessica was the uh, the chick that we got killed when we played as the chicken blue. Uh, it was the chick in the locker that I talked about earlier. Anyway, um... go there we go and now we just fucking yeet this forklift into the trailer because Rooney is a fucking animal and but it opened and hey, look it's Monica she's back Monica are you alive Monica is alive but she's in a crate we're back at the main timeline now, so Leonard was uh, part of the explosion on the raft. Uh, Monica's here. Uh, she's just chilling. She's in the crate uh, as well. Hold on, I think I have to give her the um, smartphone. I think I get the necklace later. I don't quite remember exactly what I have to do. I think I, I think I get the necklace now. There we go. Yeah, I don't grab. Okay, we're good. That may have been all I needed to do. I could have sworn I needed to show her something, but ah, bye, we'll be fine. Monica's great. And... It's phone charger. No, not that one. How's it going, Ryan? Good to see you. A remote control. The crane remote. We need that. And now we're going to be doing something uh, a bit... We're going to start getting the actual speedrun tech of this game. So, this game does have speedrun tech... Really enough, it actually does, which we'll see in a moment. What? What? I excuse me? What the fuck was that? Huh. That. Why am I getting these bugs? What the fuck? Okay. Like, that. Yeah, the game was actively messing me. I don't know why either. It doesn't save time. There you go. Alright. Yeah, I'm not sure what's wrong with the game, but that's, uh, weirder than normal. Because Night Cry is a very strange game. Uh, we are doing pretty good, though. The next section will be where the major speedrun skips happen. By the way, remember when you asked, uh, what's Leonard not the king of? We're about to get to that section. It's got to give it a brief moment, though. Here we go. Also, the weirdest part of the game is going to be this. So, earlier in the game, you guys remember the guys from the raft. Uh, there's the dead guy right there. And then Eric, who... You'll see in a moment, Zanzuki. It's getting close. And then... Actually, I don't even know how to talk to Eric, but fuck it. I'm doing it anyway. Come on. And there we go. There we go up. And it is now time for Rooney's booty. We were just told to be careful of him, but it's really weird. Guys, look, it's Rooney's booty. Just the giant ass shot of Rooney. 
So, Leonard's not king of something, and you'll find out very shortly. Also, the answer is left. 13. And now comes the fun part. Come on, big speed run skip, big speed run skip. Someone uses his phone to skip a large section of the game, and we're going to bug out quite a lot here. One, I may skip a panic event. You cannot use that here. She stands up in the middle of the fucking vent, and then you continue forward. So I skipped a panic event there by abusing the item here. Whenever you use an item on something, it'll prioritize that. If you enter a cutscene with that, it says you can't use that here and bugs out whatever trigger you're normally passing. Normally I would die at that trigger, but since I had the item, I now am able to skip that. Now the fun part is Leonard is a uh, king of something here. And let's see how many times it takes me to get this skip, because we're doing it again, and this is the most important skip of the entire game. There we go, first try. And you cannot use that here. And I just skipped uh, all the major sections of the game. Also, time for Leonard again. You guys ready for Leonard? He's back. Except this time Leonard doesn't have skin. So Leonard is the king of not having skin. Or he's not the king of having skin, if you want to put it that way. Leonard no longer has skin. They took Leonard's skin from him. If you don't turn off the uh, life support on Leonard, by the way, what would happen is you get um, a cutscene where Leonard turns into a giant snake and tries to kill you. And it is not a good cutscene. What did that skip do? So, I skipped every single major requirement that the game has. Almost all. Almost all of them. I skipped having to take pills. I skipped Leonard's SNS. I skipped many things. It is a great cutscene with Leonard turning into a fucking snake, but it's not fast. Also, you guys want to watch another funny cutscene that doesn't actually impact anything in the game. He'll just get thrown off the fucking boat and you can stare at it. It doesn't do anything, but you can just do that. Why a snake? I have no fucking clue, actually. I wish I had answered that question. They just get tossed off. And now, let's see if I get another speedrun skip. Uh, that's gonna happen in here. Oh, I didn't get it. That sucks. It's not the end of the world, though. You can skip this little animation going up if you mash fast enough, but it's a bit of time. This is also the guy from earlier um, whose phone we stole as Monica. Worth the time loss? Oh, wait. Well, if you watch it, like, I've done it before, but for this video, no, we're not going to do it here. Alright, got to keep moving. We're almost there. I have everything I need. Everything I need. Doing good. As well, time for the coolest method of stopping the scissor man. Or the scissor walker, because this is a chick. I likely get into the fight as well, which we'll see. Oh my god, I actually won. What the hell? I never get away with that. That's actually really good. You literally just fucking electrocute the scissor walker. I don't... And then you go back into the water. Like, you electrocute her, and then you immediately decide, yeah, I'll go back into that water. That's probably a good idea. That's a smart plan, right? I would immediately go back into that water. Okay, I keep moving. And normally where you would die is in this elevator. If you, dis uh, if you did not disconnect Leonard's life support, he would turn into a snake, and then uh, it's really uh, perverted in the elevator. He wraps around you, and then you become one, according to him. There we go. She is a certified badass. Okay, now we're back up. Uh, I think it's this way. I don't remember. Yeah, it is. Okay, back over here, and we're going to be doing some stuff now. We had a few things to do, uh, and we'll see them in a moment. And we still get to watch some really stupid cutscenes, which is a good thing. Let's go. Where's skin is why is it not on Leonard? Good question. Um, so the cultists stole Leonard's skin and 
Well, that kind of gives you both reasons. I'm now going to get a little scissor walker cutscene. Um, we're going to have a couple of these, actually. And one of them happens right up here. Uh, right up here. There we go. But I'm going to run back downstairs. In time... Oh, yeah, Techie Gopher, of course. You're, you, you're all good, man. Te Techie, if you want to post any links, you're more than fine. I know you are. You're good. I was, I was really surprised that you had it. Speaking of wacky cutscenes, uh, before you watch that one, you might want to watch one more, because we're about to hit the coolest way of stopping the Scissor Walker, which happens right here. And the way you stop the Scissor Walker is by going in here, and then you get a waste bin, and I'll let the cutscene speak for itself. It's night cry, Dakaris. It's night cry. And then get dunked on. Yeah. Fucking trash and bash. And then he just fucking dies. Alright, go back in the room. Actually, there's the nine balls in here, I think. Alright, I think the Nightball might actually be on the... Uh, you know, I'll go for the other one. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, you just walk back in. You could. I don't think I had to because um, the nine ball answer is just to be able to guess, but we'll see. Alright, let's keep going. And we're going up now. You know we had to do it to him, Kitty Wolf. Now we need to go up. In theory, if you... Yeah, 9-ball. Well, it's a 9-ball puzzle that's really rough to do. I never remember the exact answer because it's RNG, but we'll see how it goes. Also, the best part, the absolute greatest part, you're going to see the greatest um, potential death... Um, potential death because I'm not going to kill myself here. But you can die from this, and this is an actual ant thing you have to avoid. If you die to this, you, you do die. It, the game will kill you. But, I mean... Someone thought, hey, how would be a good way to kill somebody? Hey, man. Just do this. Watch. Oh, here we go. He's dead. Someone decided to do this. There we go. And that's how the scissor walker kills her victims with fucking darts. You know what I do with a bar and suck it? Yeah, that's what the scissor walker does to kill victims. There we go. But this time I'm going inside here because it's going to be much safer. Wait, wrong room, wrong room, wrong room, wrong room. Hold on. Fine, I messed up a little bit here. Not the end of the world. A little bit. Okay, now I had to be careful, but this time will be better. I went to the wrong door. Not the end of the world. Uh, there's two doors, for some reason. The one I want to go to is right here. And back, and then we hide underneath the bed. There we go. And hiding, like, every hiding spot will work once and only once. If you do it more than once, you cannot hide. Like, she'll stab you. She'll try to kill you. Um, it's actually kind of a messed up scenario in this game because they did some weird, like, they cursed some poor woman to have that. It's pretty messed up. Like, the Scissor Walker's not bad in this game. It's, she's just more of like, um, like a minion. So you have to feel bad for the Scissor Walker. I don't, like, I don't feel like, oh, um... She did anything wrong, it's like, oh, that really sucks. I'm sorry to hear about that. And pool does not have anything. And this guy. Uh VIP card key. Alright, now we go to the end game. Almost done. I want giant checks. 
As well, I'm going to make a safety area because I'm going to go look at one of the nine balls because there's answers that you know based on nine balls. Now, ready to split? Nope. Nine ball is a very long section because it's a nine ball puzzle, which you'll see coming up. And it's actually the puzzle I'm most worried about because it's RNG. Um, I might need to look at the answer. I don't actually remember this one because it's random. And this is actually one of the puzzles we end up skipping. It's a very convoluted puzzle you need to skip. And it's like an additional side quest that you don't want to do because it takes longer to do it than just to brute force it. Anyway, though, speaking of brute forcing, luckily for me, there's a backup strat. And I'll know one of the numbers and I can just brute force it. Um, it's back here. On this table, I think. Where's the... Oh, there it is. Okay, we got... Yeah, that's an 8-ball, right? 7-ball. Okay, we got 7. Okay, so we got a 7-ball. I don't remember the exact answer. I really wish I had it because it would make it easier for me. But I don't mind brute forcing it. It'll take a bit, but we'll be fine. Also... Oh, no. Gold cut card. There we go. There's, like, certain answers that it can be, and I don't remember which ones. There we go. I have, like, the solutions written down. I just don't remember off the top of my head. Okay, and now we still have to do a few more things. Now we're in the VIP section, and this section we find out a lot about the truths of the game. And we're going to find the most amount over here. On the computer... On the computer. And then the book. And then the book. Time. One more time. I don't know if the book needs three or two. Yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. And then I think I leave the room, if I remember correctly. I think we just straight up leave it, unless I go to the library. No, not there. I, like, this section of the game is a bit fuzzy to me. Alright. And I need to make sure I have everything in this room. If I don't, I lose the entire run. So, forgive me for being a bit, uh... Checking. Okay, that should be good. This is the captain's room, by the way. Now comes a na another major skip. This one's much easier, though, because what you do is you get out your phone and you go here. This skips the section where you would need to get someone's wedding ring. And it's a nine ball puzzle. Okay, uh, was it... I want to say... Ah, oh, god damn it. Okay, um... Well, how is nine ball set up again? Uh, seven's here, so it has to be one of these ones. Okay. I think it's nine three seven, if I remember correctly. There we go. So one up. There we go. One, two, three. No, it's not nine three seven. God damn it. And um. No, I know it leads in. I know it's like all connected for these ones. Come on. God, this is the puzzle I was most worried about. I didn't grab the other nine ball, unfortunately. I could have brute forced it that way. Hold on. Do I have it written down? I have this written down, don't I? Um, I actually do. Oh, this is a different puzzle, though. God damn it. Yeah, there's multiple versions of this puzzle, and I hope to God I can brute force it, because this puzzle is fucking terrible. You know, that gives you how 9-ball looks. That gives you what the answer's supposed to, like, look like. Um, you need to know the actual 9-ball numbers, though. Uh, let me check again. Night Cry, Night Ball, or Night a 9-ball puzzle. Because this puzzle is always the worst one in the game, like, by far. This puzzle is the absolute worst one, because it's all RNG. Um... And there isn't really a concrete answer for it. Okay, anything about 9-ball? No. Uh, what the fuck was the answer, man? I don't remember it. Um... Let's see. 
There's another speedrun on comp. I know Palm messaged me at these one point or another. I don't need brute forcing these for a while if I don't remember it. Let me see. Because I only have the seven. I should have grabbed the other one. I know I was getting greedy. I should have grabbed the other one. Give me a moment. Forum. I need to write down the fucking nine ball puzzle next time. Because we're almost done with the game. No, it's a three combination. They're not, they're not always connected. Uh, I know it's this one, and... Um... <sighs> God, I see how's it going. I know Pa would know, but I don't remember. God damn it. There's so many combinations to do, though. Like, it is going to be almost impossible to brute force this. Nope. Uh, let's see. Maybe I can look on my old record of pause. Maybe one of us have it because it's all RNG. This puzzle's fucking terrible. Okay, what was it? Do I have it on mine? I don't remember. Wow, I actually did have it. What the fuck? Wow, my luck is immaculate. Wow, holy shit. Wait, what the hell? I can't believe I have the fucking answer in my old world record VOD. What the fuck was that? Thank you, past me. I gotta give myself a high five. Thank you, me. Very cool. Alright, I got the Chop of Hoge Rome. He knew. Alright, and I think I got everything. I could be wrong, though. I, I should have everything, I think. The safe. We get the glass eye. And I don't need anything. I needed that. I have the glass eye. I have the picture to roam. Is there anything else I need in here? I don't remember. But yeah, that skips a requirement you'd have to do earlier in the game. I think I have everything. Uh, almost done. Oh, fuck, I didn't write down the puzzle. Oh, God, what was it again? I have it written down in my own notes, but I didn't actually pay attention to it. Uh, A, P, M, F, T, E. Because they tell you about a bunch of different things that you're supposed to remember, and I didn't remember any of them. Uh, F, T, I just write them down because I'm not stupid. There we go. There we go. And that's the puzzle, unlocks the door, and now I can- Also, I forgot to split 9-ball. Oh, no, 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 do not split that. Okay, hopefully this worked. Uh, if I did everything right, we should have the best ending. If not, I cannot go back. So let's hope to God this works, and I remember last time I forgot how to do this. Uh, this time, I think I should be fine. We're almost done with the run. We're almost done. It has a few more things to go. Oh, it was Sanzuki. It's, uh, it's an absolute trip. And now we are good yeah we're good we did it here's the final cutscene by the way you need to watch all of it i'm surprised to think someone outside our brotherhood has made it this far i, I can't believe i did that previously though that's right i'm Vigo baratsov the owner of this ship we met in the cargo hold and no one was surprised. Greeting. Welcome to the Oceanus. I hope you enjoy your cruise with us to our eternal paradise. Yeah, well, Leonard's. Well, Monica's not strung up. The ending is called Two Survivors. Take a wild guess which two. No! 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 Don't struggle, Ray. Yo. Take us to eternity. Oh, you have to move the rope. Wait. You have to like move the actual rope, Mina. That voice. <sighs> and then Monica just beats the shit out of Jerome. You okay, Rooney? Monica's awesome. What are you doing here? I told you I would be right behind you. Uh, Jerome? There you go. Monica's actually great. It doesn't matter how much of a big shot celebrity he is if he's lost his mind. Well, I mean, it's a two-part mission. 
The scissor walker's chasing us. By the way, the most metal ending to any speedrun ever. Watch this. You know how everything has final splits? Like, oh, you must do the final action. You must do the final thing. And this game also ends on a final puzzle. And, um, watch. Just wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Yeah, you need the magazine. And time. So, here's what happens in Nightcry. Here's the best ending in the game, by the way. You gonna let them kill you? You still haven't let go of your death wish? I'll move it. The death wish diva. You're right. Sorry, Monica. Wait for it. Wait for it. Grace, how's it going? I'm gonna survive. No matter what it takes. Good for you, Rune. Good no for you, Rooney. Nice metal. Oh, it's absolutely metal here. This is the greatest ending of any of all the clock towers. Best ending by far. She rips out her own fucking eye to put in the glass eye. Oh, Picardo, don't you worry. We'll have more of that coming up. And then... Revenge is yours! Destroy the man who turned you into a monster! The Scissor Walker gets revenge! Because Vigo doesn't have the eye anymore, because he took it out. He has Wait. two glass eyes. Wait! This can't be! We stole Vigo's special eye, which lets us control the scissor walker. No, no, wait, 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 no, no, wait. And he just falls? <laughs> and he's still doing it! Oh, because the scissor walker's magic, it's occult magic. Wait, wait. That was the longest, like, he could have ran away. Just, no, wait, no, no, wait, wait. He <laughs> was, wait a minute, you need to do my direct deposit so I get paid on time. Wait, no, wait. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of puppets on strings. Oh, I forgot to remove the uh, the Gazm emote. I forgot about that this weekend. Let's just do that. That emote's you know, no longer going to be free. It's only going to be a paid emote. I'll do it tomorrow. This is Rescue 103. All right, now it's time for the actual ending. I'm going to go pee, enjoy it. Um, yeah, it should be good. Roger, See, there's my hair. It's back. My hair is nice in there. Be right back.
Sweet. That's a good head cannon. But yes, that was Nightcry. I enjoy Nightcry. I think it's a very fun game. I think a lot of people tend to enjoy it as well. And I can't remember. Do I can I watch the uh, any cutscenes or no? Oh yeah, I can. You guys want to watch the Do Space Snake? Because I can totally watch it. Here's all the. Uh, there's a bunch of other endings. Um, so going into it, uh, this happens if you do not pass case two. Uh, so just, for those of you who didn't watch the video uh, by Techie sent, here's Zeus by Snake. This occurs if you did not pull Leonard's life support. And it's really fucking creepy. Thanks, Bachman. Building up to it's also pretty fucking creepy. But they make Leonard into a fucking snake for some reason. Not to mention, that's like your granddad, uh, that's like your uncle or something. And it's just, it's just that. Just that. And then, are there any other funny endings I can... Sh any other funny game overs I can show? Uh, there's all the Leonard ones. There's a few other ones here. Oh, it only shows the... It doesn't show the entire thing. But yeah, you, can get, you can see all the deaths you missed if you didn't uh, do it right. There's a lot you can die by, by the way. Leonard dies a lot, as you can see. There's five different versions of Dying by the Faithful. You can die quite a lot, as you can see. Have I ever died as Rooney? I have. There's this one, and then this one. Really, I haven't died any more than that? Eh, weird. I thought I have. Okay. But that is Nightcry. So, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a fun game. It's definitely a fun game. Elder Grandma? Oh, uh, you can't watch the deaths. You can only have the actual, like, screenshot. Nothing happens. You, you just really just die. You can only watch the endings, unfortunately. Like, if you click on this one, I'll just show you the screenshot. I won't let you do anything. But you can watch the ending. Purgatory, you, um, everyone's just zombies. So there's a snake we saw. Trap party? What's that one again? I don't remember. This happens if you don't learn the truth about Jerome, but you know the truth about Vigo. It is about that time, Sora. One more. Hey, nice of you to join us again, Rooney. So you don't learn the truth about Jerome. This is what happens. We? We're in a hospital in Miami. We were rescued. It's all over now. I was saying, from the sixth game takes place around the U.S. Finally. We'll be just fine. You've got nothing to worry. His mouth about. isn't moving. Absolutely nothing to worry about. There you go. And if you're wondering what happens after that, um, this is what's supposed to happen after that. It's purgatory. Then this happens to everybody. We're doing it in a moment, Juo. Everyone just becomes zombies. Oh, look, there's Monica. Hi, Monica. Zombie Monica. But this happens if you didn't take the pills. We didn't, but we skipped that. I was waiting. You finally made it here, Rooney. This little girl hates you because... Now we can play together. Reasons? Forever. You accidentally killed her, but not really, because she was trying to push you off a boat, and you just didn't fall, and she fell into the rotor, and then she's pissed off at you because you didn't die. But that's it. And that was Nightcry. Now it is time for the most powerful—not the most powerful game, but the final game. I can actually change the title for this one: Remothered Tormented Fathers. The last one: Remothered Tormented Fathers. 
And the final one, I, I was thinking, of, wait, did you beat me to it? Summer, I'm changing the title, re. <laughs> Let's have to put the whole title in there. Re Mother Tormented Fathers. Troll Glancer, how's it going? Good to see you. Yeah, you're here for the final one. One more. I don't know if it went through. I'm wondering which one went through. I don't actually know. We'll see if it went through, because I put mine in, but I don't know if it actually went through. Let's see. Ah, eh, probably. I'll update it again. Sweet. Hey, I, wait, I broke 2,800 followers. What the fuck? When did that happen? When did that happen? Alright, perfect. That's good. Who broke it? Who? How did I? Oh, that's good. Uh, Remother Tormented Fathers. Last run. Apparently, when I wasn't looking. Thank you, guys. That is much appreciated. Hell, streams like this are good indicators for me getting partnership. Dude, I get my check mark. You know what the power of a check mark is? As long as I keep it up, I can get a check mark on Twitch. I want a check mark, man. It's raw power. It is absolute raw power having a check mark. Sora, I blame you. There we go. There's remothered, tormented fathers, because they release more remotheds. The free gin, exactly, the power of free gin. Oh god, I forgot, the first run of the day requires you to be slower. Eh, we'll be fine, we'll do it live. Yes, Techie! Yes! And that's for the whole goal, getting for TwitchCon, because then I get the raw power of free alcohol at the partner party, which is what I've been gunning for. I mean, I've been gunning for a good opportunity on Twitch, and I've been building it, fostering a very nice community of spooky people and fans, because I am a very big fan of being a Twitch streamer, Twitch staff. It's the free alcohol. All right, let's go. And go. And if Twitch staff acts, it's because we're trying to follow, uh, we're, kind of, we're trying to foster a community. When they hear my application, I'll hear about it in like four days and they'll reject me because they hate me. Like it's gonna rain again. All right, the last game, and this is the, actually it was supposed to start off as a spiritual uh, successor to Clock Tower directly, but now it's nice. I wish I could, but I can't. See, Teki has the right idea though, I gotta get partnered soon. If I don't get partnered soon, how is this gonna be, how is this supposed to enjoy the benefits of partnered by TwitchCon? How is this to get a free backpack, man? I want a free backpack. You know what kind of power that gives you? I can take my free backpack to fucking, I don't know. Uh, round one. And I can brag to all the people I play Groove Coaster with. There we go. But yeah, Remother's the final game and is the most recent installment that have a Clock Tower style game. This one is weird because it's a bit hard to actually count. I count it personally because it started as an actual, like, exact remake of the first Fear, the original Clock Tower game. However, through a lot of de uh, developments, it eventually turned into Remothered, which, um, before we begin, yes, she's carrying her purse, yes, she's running in heels, yes, her skirt's not cut, yes, it's awkward, but roll with it. There we go. Just accept fate. A micro pig in my backpack would be damn good, I'd be happy with that. She is very strong. Oh, there I am. And now we get to follow Gloria. When you mothered beans, oh yes. Dude, if I get partnered on Twitch, I can do all the cool partner fundraising stuff. I can have a bean boozle, guys. Don't you want to do marbles on stream? Don't you want to do bean marbles on stream? Marble boozle? you assist Mr. Felton all day? Oh, no. I don't know. I don't play. Like, it's okay. Then I, go back I don't home. plan on doing that. Is it even free viewers? I don't even know. I just see everyone doing it now. I'm like, well, I don't want to do that. It's a fun speedrun. And the story is fun. I've done an all cutscenes playthrough, Kitty Wolf. Like, if you just want to get the story wise of it with speedrun tech. But it's definitely a fun one. I mean, I'm all for playing marbles with friends. It's like, oh. Mar I'm not doing marbles on stream. I'll, I'll do marbles on stream after I eat a bean boozle, Juo. After I eat a bean boozle, I'll do marbles on stream. I don't own any bean boozles. 
All you're playing is remothered. I'll raise money for uh, more gin in exchange for Marvel's playthroughs. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure the St. Jude's thing's already passed. Maybe next year. Wait, for what? Horror game marbles. That'd be good. And... Good. We're doing good so far. The game really gets into it once we actually get introduced to the main villain. And again, the mechanics of all the Clock Tower games are going to be pretty much the same. You have a stalker, you have a mansion, you have some kind of building or area that you have to run through rooms. Except this game, I think, does it one of the best ways. One, we're introduced to like a new camera angle. So it's an active camera that will be following you. Nightcry tried doing this, but did not work out too well. This camera is amazingly well. Um, other games like Haunted Ground have the fixed cameras. This game does not, which is nice. And then... We're running over here. And we're going to be introduced to the big bad guy. Uh, the first one, anyway. We have one. Uh, we're about to get more. But the first one is going to be raw sex appeal of the guy. Oh, the music in this game has to be some of the best in the series. Like, by far. By the way, I'm happy that viewership was the highest in Nightcry so far. It makes me feel good to know you guys want to see a, a shit post of a game. <laughs> These are the things I offer. Nightcry. Are those moths? Yes, actually, they are. This is also a naked old man. You guys remember the old... I always bring this up, but you remember the old stereotype back in the 90s where you had the hot chick who was naked wearing just an apron? It's to be really hot. Imagine that, but you put your granddad in it instead. And that's uh, remothered, so we're going to see some old man ass and you're going to enjoy it. These are the things that get you partnered on Twitch. Old man ass. If you're wondering, how do I grow as a streamer? You need to stream old man ass and you need to enjoy it. I'm, Spaz, it's not about your thinking about it. It's more the fact that it's going to happen because this game has old man ass. And available, widely available old man ass. Oh, don't worry, he comes back. He'll come back. And now, let's see how I do. Hopefully I do well, we'll see. I'm a bit worried. Good RNG, bad RNG. But everyone wants hot butts, not old man ass. That would be me. Sorry, sir. I'm the one playing around your house. I'm also a tourist. You do, Jua. You do have world record in this game. I'm quaking. I'm clearly quaking. There you go. Oh, it's great, Mike Mattel. It's absolutely great. I'm a big fan of it. Come on. Where's your check mark? Oh, good question. We have to stream Nightcry, too. You have to do both of them. Like, watch. Techie streams Nightcry, and he has a check mark. If you do Nightcry, you get partnered. That's the rule. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Twitch does. I like how he's fired off like five things of dialogue in the span of running, by the way. Now, guys, you must understand that I enjoy snooping in people's houses. So, in this section, I am going to be doing uh, one of the coolest glitches in the entire series. Oh, hold up. Exactly. Techie is third in the world at Nightcry speedrunning. <laughs> Out of the large leaderboard. Bigger than SM64 in my imagination. Exactly, great sir. Also, here is going to be the glitch. So, I get to equip the rusty handle while Felton is chasing me, which is going to be a good thing for me. And then... There we go. He's gonna hit me again, and we're gonna do a skating thing. Uh, I got a bad door, that's fine. And we're gonna run away once again. Yeah, we slide! This is speedrun tech on this. It's nice. Juo, you just gotta run Nightcry. Trust me, the viewership will come if you run Nightcry. Uh, would I lie to you, Juo? Would I lie? Would I lie to any- I've never lied in my life. I'm not a lying man. Anyway, we're getting some film now. I- I've lied before. I can't say that one. I apologize. I have lied. But I wouldn't lie about Nightcry. You know, when, when I think, what got me part on Twitch? Nightcry, dude. Fucking Nightcry. Okay, so I'm double check. Hey, Felton. Better G. That is true. And ring around. 
Come on, Dead by Daylight. Thank you. And then, back around. Hey, Grand Quest going. Yeah, I'm doing very good right now. Trust me, we're doing very good. Get a skill rope. So all everything I needed here was very important. There's mods in quite a few of the Clock Tower games, yes. There we go, we wait. Blue HP? No, it's stamina. This game is stamina. By the way, Grindcore, hope you're having a great, door, uh, great day today. We're now going back up to the bathtub. The thing with Nightcry as well, or not Nightcry, the thing with Remothered as well is you want to make sure you're far enough away from him that he's not going to be after you. However, if he's right next to you, you can't do puzzles. So it's similar to Clock Tower 3, but not exactly the same because you still do need to worry about a lot of the time save you got. Which you'll see coming up. Hey, Kokobi, how's it going? Welcome to the stream as well. I missed a bit while I was focusing on the uh, Mr. Felton's ass. I'm sorry, but you know, when you see old man ass, you sometimes just gotta wonder... Yeah. Why? Why would they do this is the real question. Someone actively decided to program old man ass into this game. Someone looked at old men's asses and decided, Hey, this is what we must program into this. Old man ass. Anyway, enough about that one. We are going to be entering the next section, which is going to be the steel rope elevator. What, well, Mr. Ron you don't like me saying old man ass? Is this not what people want on Twitch? Speaking of old man ass, he's back. And we shove him out of the way. Hey, my God, I saw I saw him right there. He's going to say old Dr. Reed quite a lot. Our name is Dr. Rosemary Reed. Probably. Tell the homunculus is in Haunted Ground War. Thank you, Gugu, for the 50 bits. Old man unicorn. Old man unicorn. That's what it truly is. The old man unicorn. Why is she here? So you're trying to find a lost kid named Celeste Felton, and in order to find her, you try interrogating Mr. Felton. But soon you find out that there's a lot more going wrong than you really think. Also, we got that, so that's good. Dr. Reed, as in the first one. There we go. That's true. But uh, right now, he's trying to chase you because he's a stalker, and you must be careful. And shove. Dr. Reed. This is Dr. Reed. No, Dr. Richard Felton and Dr. Rosemary, or Rosemary Reed. Dr. Rosemary Reed. Both of them are doctors because they have their doctorates. As well, the story gets even better. My favorite dialogue is this is not a place for tourists. Why the fuck would I come here on my vacation? Felton, I guess, technically, in a loose definition, I personally am here on my vacation, but Rosemary Reed is not here on her vacation. Because, I mean, I took my day, I had my day off to do this, but still. Anyway, the elevator, and now we're good. Also, I have full health, which is nice. We'll see, Joe. It'll take some time, my man. RNG be damned. Let's see how this goes. This is a massive RNG section. Please work. Carpet. We Gucci. We made it. Alright, perfect RNG, by the way. That was extremely nice. Yeah, we're good. He's coming at me now, which is fine. But I'm able to book past him here, which is good. As well, running on carpet softens my footsteps so he can't hear me. But we don't have to worry about that too much. Very good. And how close is he going to be to me? I'm probably going to see him when he's coming down the little thing here. There. Yeah, there he is. I knew it. I'll make you swallow your own tongue. Oh, I forgot to yell at people in traffic. I said, if I ever got pissed off at someone in traffic, I'll start yelling at them. This I'll make you swallow your own tongue. Because that is the ultimate move of power. Telling someone, I'm going to make you swallow your own tongue. Ah. Eat glass! So glass is the all-powerful weapon because it'll make him stop. It's very good. Yeah, I got great RNG, dude. It was very nice. Very nice RNG. I get a good PV off this, maybe. Maybe I do. We'll see. Alright, and let's see how this goes. First one. Uh, pendulum clocky. Good! Very good, very good, very good. Crouch. If I get the battery, this is gonna be so fucking good. 
one more. One more. If I get, if I get this, if I fucking get this, got it. Shove them. Very nice. We got it. We got it. We good. What are you doing here? And I have a vase as well. Oh my god, you madman! Felton, you fucking madman! Why? Honey built in immunity to glass! Thank you! Okay. Uh, the room might be dead here, we'll see. See ya. Come on. There we go. Now, almost there, cut the corner. Fuck it, it worked! I'll take it, I'll take it, it worked! Fuck it, that worked. Coolest part of the game, by the way. Best song in the entire Clock Tower series, by the way. This song fucking slaps! Seriously, it's not just so fucking good. It's the red. It's tormented fathers is actually the name of it. It's real. It's just such a good song name. Okay, and I'm low on health. That's fine. I have one base, and time for the red nun. If we land the red nun glitch, I can PB. If I don't, we'll still be doing fine. Let's see. No, I barely missed it. That's fine. And thank you. Yeah, I, I missed the red nun glitch. It's fine. So what you can do there is body block Doctor Felton on on the red nun, which saves you a lot of time. However, I'm going to be saving plenty of time as well because I am going to save the game. I'm going to exit said game. Main menu. Yes. And continue. There we go. So what this does is I just skip the entire red nun. And I'm back on full health. I have no throwables, but that's fine. I should be able to get more later. But that saves a good chunk of time. Hey, wait. I did miss the red nun glitch. It's okay. But we can get it later, I suppose. Jennifer. There we go. The Red Nun's amazing. I do love the Red Nun. She is a very well-designed character. And now we get to run this way. Oh, I could have just turned left. It's in her. That's fine. You can move during those mini cutscenes as well, which is a cool thing. And now... Oh, what happened to the record? They took the body. They stole her body and locked the door behind me. They knew. They knew all along. This game gets really convoluted when you get into it, by the way. There we go. Yes. So, if she's running around with her arm on the thing, like, if she's running with her arm down, that's one more hit and you're going to be, like, in dying mode. Oh, it's great. Well, to be fair, it's not hard to hide from her. Like, normally it's not that hard to hide from her, but even then, you just have to be careful. Like, it doesn't take that long. Oh yeah, it absolutely is. Cool thing as well about the Red Nun. Uh, you can actually glitch the Red Nun. Uh, not glitch it, but manipulate the Red Nun. So, instead of going that way, I'm going to go this way. The reason being is because the Red Nun works differently from Felton. Felton will just chase after you. The Red Nun, however, will always find you. 
Fantasies of what? Yeah. Red Nun, what the fuck? You're ruining my. Wow. Well, that's a safe to say that never happens. She tracks you, yeah. Normally she's supposed to track you, but apparently I made too much noise or something. I don't quite know. There it is. And losing time on that, that's fine. Yeah, there's, a, there's a, two more enemies still in the game. True, but normally that doesn't happen. Normally it's manipulated so that doesn't happen. But, yeah, overall not the end of the world because we did make it up. It's pretty easy to go back and forth, like, the, the game is rather generous if you know where you're going. But if you don't, it's pretty rough. The skip also didn't take that much time for what I did earlier at the Red Nun uh, ca uh, save and quit. Because you just have to hide from her, which doesn't take that much longer. It just, you save stamina that way, which is going to be better. There you go. Really? Not know that one, Geo. But that immediately contradicted my words. And all the times I ever play this has never happened. Okay, and now time for the third enemy. This is Jennifer. Get it? Jennifer? Get it? You get it? It's Jennifer. There we go, and let's try the best here. Go over the safe strat here. Take the rope. The Jennifer? Yeah. That's and going for the risky strat, really risky strat. Jenner, yeah. Oh god, they're all chasing me! Help me! Oh, uh oh, do not kill me, please. Please do not kill me. But yeah, Jennifer in the first clock tower. It's a reference. Luckily, I have a I have a needle, but we have to be very careful. Uh, let's hope we got this works. That was risky. That was very risky, in fact. There are currently two killers after me, which is bad. And then... Right here. Batteries. And then... Well, not all three. But you can have two of them at once chasing you. And... Nice, got it. And the best part about this is after this, you get a cutscene, all the enemies revert back to their normal spawns, and I get full health. So, it's a lot of time save off this. Just because if you uh, if you go for bold, it's very nice. As well, I opened up a section for later in the game that will make me go back faster. It's pretty nice. Keep paying attention to the story of the game, and you'll learn why the stalkers are the way they are. And it's a bit tough to say, but you'll see. There we go. So I do need to be careful, the Red Nun is still around, and I do not- I'm not totally beat up, I can take one hit, but I have to be careful as well. Fuck. That's fine. Good thing I have the needle. We have the needle, so we're doing fine. Um, if you didn't have the needle, that would be much uh, more risky, but luckily I did have it, so we'll be okay. And keep running. That should also give me the stun I need. You know we had to do it to him. And we get a shovel now, which would be better. The most stupid thing, in my opinion, has to be the fact that, um... What's the word? <laughs> Sounds good, Picada. Sounds very good. You don't actually get to go into this. Like, you have to do it twice. Like, you do it once to break down the wall, and then the second time you have to actually re-enter it. You can get this choked, by the way, if the Red Nun's close enough. So you have to be very careful here. Have a good night, Picado. It's always good to see my man, and I do hope you take it easy. And... yeah, we're good. Also, you must investigate this thing. Yeah, stay tuned. You'll still learn more about the actual survivors. I don't want to spoil anything just yet, because there's a lot that's going on. But yeah, Jennifer's pretty stupid. You'll, uh, you'll know later. Right now, Jennifer's the one chasing us. Celeste is not in the mansion. A lot of you will say, oh, Celeste, or you're looking for Jen- No, you're looking for Celeste. Celeste and Jennifer are two different people. Remember that. Push the cart. What's my beanie doing on my ear? There we go. I like this look, by the way. I like the beanie. I think it was a good idea. Should I wear more beanies on stream? I know people wear, like, baseball hats all the time. I find wearing beanies. 
And we break the wall. Now this next room is a boss fight. She is. And there we go. And the fast way of doing it is you break everything early. Also, Hail Mary. Oh, I missed. That's fine. One, two, three. All right, good. And go for it again. Whoa, come on. Are you kidding me? Two, three. Any more cat ears? No. And one, two, three. Not bad. There we go. I forgot to do the oil, didn't I? There we go. It, it really is. The nerd, the god, the cowboy, the hipster. Which am I right now? Hipster? Wait, which one is the nerd? Come on. One, two, three. And now, time for the worst part of the game. The usual. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. The worst part of the game, this is entirely RNG. It's terrifying, but entirely RNG. Alright, that's good. Here's two. One. Ah, just missed it. Okay, here's three. Hey, she did count to three. We got, looks like, four. So this is entirely RNG on the first half. The second half's uh, scheduled, but the first half is all RNG. Four is decent. It could be worse, but it could definitely be better. Overall, not too shabby. That that would be good for a run. Um, you just, you see the panic event, you do panic event. That, that's it. It's very straightforward. If you see mouse button, you push mouse button. This is scripted. It's very tight, by the way. You need to be on the, like, you need to be on the money for this. And usually, a lot of people tend to mess up on the direction. If you die at once, you go all the way back to the start. I think there's a halfway point, though. But it's two it's two sections. The first and second. One more. There we go. Um, Sab, it pretty much is. And Joe would know more. No, it's left and right click. I would say maybe two seconds max. Maybe two to three. But I, it usually is about two max, I think. Go. Okay, now comes the greatest skip in the entire run. Also, here's the big twist. They can't be the same person. All right, here's the skip. All right, no psychopaths ever gonna chase us because I threw the brick down that hallway. I don't know why it works. Uh, Joe Gnome found this, and um, you we just skipped the entire boss of this level. Normally, you'd have to manipulate the boss to not kill you. Uh, I just get the entire thing. It's very quick. And there we go. Yeah, she's distracted by that brick and is very fascinated by it, so we don't ever have to worry about her. Jennifer's supposed to chase you down here with a nail gun, which is incredibly dangerous. Like, it's very deadly if you get hit by the nail gun. One shot, one kill. Like, you would actually just straight up die. No defense, by the way. Like, you can't fight back. If you get hit by the nail gun, you die. But the thing is, she's not coming anymore. Because I manipulated her, so she's gone. She comes back at the end because it's scripted, but yeah, this entire section has just been completed. You have to pull three vowels. Already did it. Didn't even see her once. Normally, you see her uh, before the first one. And now I'm doing uh, the fast version of this area. You can actually break the game by doing it like so. Watch. You do this one first, and the second one is going to be very quick. The reason being, 
Normally, she'll break into the room, killing you, but if you just run, you can push the bookshelf at the same time she enters the room. The thing that that does is she'll push the key off right when it finishes, and then I don't have to wait for her to shove the key off. Normally, you need to wait. It takes a lot of time. This way is much faster. But the problem is, obviously, it's risk-reward, because if you mess up even the slightest, you lose. It's over if you lose. There we go. And she is not happy with us. Either way, only a few sections left. We're almost done. And we are going to deal with the Red Nun, in fact. I'm getting a brick, and the way we're going to do this is the elevator is coming down as we speak. What I am going to do is run this way. Right about here. And... Brick. Thank you! You just fucking chuck a brick at her. He just made it. That's why. He just made the quote. But you know how to do it to him. Alright, now the elevator is going back down. She's gonna try killing us. We don't want that, so we're gonna stay trapped in the elevator. Go and there you go. We head back down, and this time, uh, you know the maid in the beginning of the game who chased us, Gloria, um, or she introduces the mansion. That's going to be who's coming in. Also, what the? Huh. That's cool. All right. I need the glass bottle out, and this way is going to be the routing I took. It's much faster. I go left instead of right. There we go. This way can be risky earlier, but now it's all free. It's free time save. And right here. Here we go, guys. Worst part of the game. The infirmary, because Gloria has actually been the red on this entire time. Thank God that worked. That doesn't always work. That worked perfectly. Thank God that worked. You can definitely choke pretty badly on that. And the main issue is that if you die, it's about 20 seconds time loss every time. It's very awkward to hit it, but I managed to hit it luckily enough. Also, about eight and a half hours, given the fact that I took a piss after every single run, I'm not feeling that bad. Like, this is really good time for a clock, all clock tower ending, all, all clock tower games. Eight and a half hours? Not too shabby. I mean, obviously it could be better, but I did pee quite a lot. Alright, so now Gloria is um, the Red Nun, if you're wondering. The, the maid in the beginning was the Red Nun. And, as well, that's not the only one with the secret. Uh, you know the girl chasing us, Jennifer? That's actually Old Man Booty. Because Felton is trans, uh, female to male, and it gets really fucked up in how the story works. Anyway, they ripped out his tongue, and now he's gonna light the building on fire. But, we don't care about him, so... Um, I'm just gonna say, you guys remember, remember that movie Haunting Ground? You guys remember Haunting Ground? You remember what happened at the end of Haunting Ground? Anyone remember that? Anyone here remember that? It happened a few couple hours ago. I'll give you a big hint what's about to happen. You remember that movie, Man on Fire? Well, I mean, Man on Fire. And now he's burned to a crisp and dead. Correct, but there are a total of four in the game, and they do have different, um, styles. Like, oh, I don't have a weapon. Oh, there's a weapon. Thank you. Nice. And then we go here. Well, I mean, it's accurate for what we're doing in this game. <laughs> I don't know about that either, I just know there's a movie called Man on Fire, and it makes me laugh for doing that reference every time. I like Felton's now dead. They they ripped out his tongue and you know he's on he, he burned to death. And now Glory is not done yet. Remember when I said Nightcry was metal? Um Nightcry isn't the only game that gets really metal. You just kind of shove syringes into her eyes. Go. Add one and go. 
go. A lot of the later Clock Tower games got a bit obsessive with eyes. Almost up. And pool. All right, here it comes. Oh wait, wrong way, that's fine. Sweet, I got that. Getting the fast move there is really nice because it helps you be faster. And it's pretty cool that you can move during these cutscenes. They are, it, it is Elthor, it is. Also, Pop. Both eyes. Well, no, I mean, Rosemary, like, um, burned down the comet last time, which I think she's actually referencing. Anyway, Brick. I will make you regret your oh, the fast strat's so fucking great. Why aren't I doing that more often? Yeah, the fast, why don't I do that more often? That's awesome. That's the fast strat, and it's great. I, uh, that's a good one. I like that. Okay. I didn't know how that worked. Now I do. I just went for it, by the way. I've never done that fast trap before. I, I could have very well died very easily. But since you can run during those little camera changes, you can just run down to the end. Uh, you throw a brick at her and then hope to God she doesn't kill you. Throwing the brick stuns her long enough for you to do it, but doing it that way. I do it once a week sometimes, Juo. It usually depends. I have a lot of games. I got 58 games, man, and it costs time. Yeah, if you die. Oh, you mean the brick? Yeah, the brick. There we go. You have to do that one though. You can't. You can't get away from that one. You you need to throw the wine bottle. Because audio, she's blind, meaning you do not want her to kill you. It's an instant death if she grabs you. And we do not want that. All right, one more throw, and we should have this done. Where am I at, by the way? What's my uh, right now? It's about thirty-five. Or, uh, what's my PB at, Joe? What's my PB at? Thirty-five something, right? Anyone tell me what my remothered PB is? I don't remember. And pop. Hey, nobody has it going. Good to see you. And let's keep going. Oh, right, it flies. 35-30? Uh, I'm actually about uh, a little behind pace. Like, this would have been 30 seconds down. Overall, not too bad. I mean, my loads are better in the early game. Probably would have been nice, but... Can't always get that. And then... Yeah, right now my run's like at 35-50. It's like about 36. Not a bad run for what I'm doing. Like, what I had to do. This was not a bad run. I mean, obviously it could have been better in some sections. I really messed up on uh, the Red Nun skip and all that involved. Like, that kind of got scuffed, but not bad. And we are at a 36-10. 36-10. Fuck yeah. Eight and a half hours of Clock Tower. Hey, we did it. I mean, Haunting Ground had a load, but I'm, I'm counting it. Sweet. And now the most metal ending of all of them. More metal than Nightcry, by the way. This is actually more metal, but we're not the hero, so less metal. Then we got ready for the sequels too. Oh god, that's like ten minutes of outro. That's right, ten minutes of outro, guys. Ooh. That's a good run. No, we're not doing more clock tower three yet. You're hiding. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I mean, I guess she's not ripping out her own eyes, but she is using glass to rip out her eyes. Again, multiple games that rip out eyes. Ah, uh, sisters. Well, Red Nun sisters. Whatever you count as Covenant sisters. Oh, 
Oh, how? It's because she has uh, senses. She uses her ears. She's totally blind right now. And she jumped out the window. And she is, um, well, you think she would be dead, but she has about 10 minutes of sp uh, speaking left. Nope, the, she just dies, but she, there's like 10 minutes of speaking left. So if you guys, uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to go for them while we wait. We have a long waiting section. <laughs> I'm checking my emails while I wait, my Twitter and all that. Yep, it, I'm playing this out, by the way, because I want it on my VOD, but, I mean... You're still here. Yeah. I can't be. I mean, her eyes are stabbed out, and the, the note we found says she'll die if she goes into the sun. Where's Celeste? We find out in the sequel, which is coming out at some point. And the sequel should be interesting. There you go. I should never have come here. It's all my fault. Ooh. It wouldn't happen anyway. Why is my Twitter not giving me notifications? They only used it. What the? How did I get 18 likes on my fucking tweet? I didn't get to see a single one of those. What the hell? Who liked my Twitter since when? How much they worth? They had noticed how most were acting on Felton after he. Good work, all me gorgeous. Oh no. Oh yeah, well, Illithor, she has, like, Wolverine regeneration, but the sunlight will kill her. So the sun's killing her. Just just think about that and hope to God it works. It won't. Hope to God it works, trust me. It's better if you don't think about it. There's a lot of dialogue right now, by the way. This would be a fuck ton of it. Just a vampire? Um, no, it's because of the cortisone in her eyes. Yes, just forget. Binoxal was created as an anti-psychotic drug for war veterans. It's not the worst Suffering ending I've ever seen. Traumatic stress disorder. I just think if they cut out all the phenoxal part of this, it would be great. And all honesty, that's my only opinion. Hey, I did this for eight and a half hours. You guys are watching the final cutscene of this. Just like all of us. I did this for eight and a half hours of Clock Tower. All the Clock Towers in a row with ending cutscenes and bathroom bricks, because I'm a dumbass and who need to drink too much water. But I'm a hydrated dumbass. I'm smart, but not for speedrunning. Well, now they're friends because you realize she's going to die. They were sisters and nuns, like in the nunnery. Memories. Bam. But we were only eight. A quick clock tower one run. I have been streaming for about nine hours. My max is normally is six. No, not just chatting. I'll let be funny. <laughs> yeah, empty mag. We just ended. Eight and a half hours. We'll do clock tower later. Probably next week. Because this week I'm doing Sonal 2. Wait, no, I'm doing Dead Rising 2 because I'm done that in a while. I'm doing Zombies of My Neighbors because I have to do that one. Well, maybe. I'm kind of wanting to do Clock Tower instead. But I should do Zombies of My Neighbors. Um, no, I only do that for money. And then, um... Sound Hole 1 on Thursday. Friday, I'm going to be in Texas because I'm flying for DreamHack. Saturday, I'll probably be around. And then on Sunday, I'll be doing Zombies of My Neighbors at DreamHack. So I'm excited. I mean, closing out the event, dude. I'm, I'm the closer. I'm the closer. That's what I'm pumped. I'm, I'm closing it. It's not too late. Thank you, Bachman. It's just not your... In and out, any percent would be good. Just down the whole fucking boiga. I'm gonna do that Friday. I'm gonna get boiga for lunch. Boiga, burger. And then I'm gonna go to Texas and get Whataburger and do the fucking comparison. Whataburger, in and out. Whataburger, in and out. Do it. Yeah, I saw her. They're in the same uh, sisterhood. The Red Nuns. Also, this part's actually good, so I'm gonna let it play out. You there could I. have been one of us. No, I couldn't have. Yes. Honestly, I'm kind of leaning to like it's solid. I don't know if it's better because I'm, Cal I'm from California. I know you're in California now too, but like, I've always been in California. And it's cheap, efficient, but. Dude, the burger is like, uh... What a burger, though? They put jalapenos on my shit. So I'm like... 
This yeah, I'll take jalapenos, though. I'll do it. Fries are better. Not from God. They put jalapenos in my burger. Fucking stupid science. And those two things have been well, like, been uh, what, you mean the clock tower all endings? <laughs> All canon endings clock tower series run? This is an entire scene. Don't even make a speedrun.com category for this. I don't know what to do. I can make one. I am the mod of the speedrunning of the clock tower subreddit. Or the clock tower, um, SR speedrun.com. I can't remember. How is that? I usually get the jalapeno burger. Anyway. I don't. It's over now. No. Oh, category extensions. That's smart. Rotting in hatred. I've hated all my life. That would be painful, Sanzuki. That would be painful. What we were, you are. Would you have become? Look at yourself. I'm nothing like this. This is all just farce. This can't store garbage. garbage. Joe, I've already done every single Clock Tower game. You know. This is the first ever that I know of. I would lie on the grass. Oh, I love doing this. I would stay for hours staring at the emptiness and seeing myself somewhere else where I could go far away. And now all these memories hurt. Oh, that hurt so much. Why can't we just... Smart, Dark and Russ. Why? 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 Why do we have to remember? <laughs> yes, Greaser. That is how we save our memories from oblivion. That fucking lion is cheesy, but I like Gloria here. You will find her. I know you will find her on top of the world. What? I hope he is made of this love. I hope you will both forgive me one day. I already have. Aww. It was good. It was a good marathon. Bad habit. Smoke. Uh, forgiveness. Me too, Joe. <laughs> I'll make this my video for getting a key for the next week, Mother. Hey, I'm a big clock tower nerd. Can I just, uh... I play all the games. Can I just have a key? <laughs> Please? I do love this part. Like, the forgiveness. It's nice. It's not over yet. There's still more. There's still more. The scene would be nicer if they cut it in half. That, that's all. Just remove all the farmer shit in the beginning. They're good. Like, them talking about their, them being friends and sisters? Great! I love that! Them talking about Big Pharma bad? No! There you go. Uh, 2020, apparently. Damn. What was in the bag? Sorry to hear, Empty Mag. What did she find? A goodbye. A goodbye that spoke of hope. Hope? Do you mean to say that she did everything? She was not resigned to the idea of finding her. No. Not at all. It's likely flat. We find out in 2020. 
I have that. No, enough of that. We're, we good. We good. We good. But yeah, that is Remothered. And that was all the Clock Tower games in a row. It took me eight and a half hours. Probably would have been faster if I didn't pee so much. Yes, THK, that's correct. That's what was in the bag. But hey, first person to ever do every Clock Tower game in a row. At once, in one sitting. Well, I guess, telling out one exact sitting, I, I did go to pee a lot. I did pee. I mean, I drink a lot of water, so it's good. My voice works. In theory, if I was to do muted, oh, fuck yeah, it's easy. I could not pee during that. Yeah, that was good. Very good, in fact. Uh, if I was going for, like, someone beat me. No, I drink a lot of 